Well, hello and welcome to the 2023 AWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships held on the beautiful Brisbane water at Gosford. Thank you very much to Mercury Marine and the Mercury dealers from around Australia. TR Marine, Race Marine, Bay City Marine, Brisbane Marine, Water Sports Marine and all the Mercury Marine dealers as well. Race Marine, all the Marines. G'day Mitch. Great to have you here in the commentary position today. G'day Troy, thanks for having me with you today mate. It is an enormously great day. There is All the fog's dropped, um, the sun's out, it's getting hot. Um, but we'll, we'll head over to you in the pits now. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're here at uh, beautiful Gosford and uh, we've got all these boats mustering around in the start area. Over here, we've got, you know, lucky they make uh, different colour gel coats so we can tell the difference between the blue boats and the yellow boats and, uh, yeah, and all the big numbers. They, they have to have big numbers on the side so all the judges can, uh, can mark their numbers off as they do laps. And then we head on over here and that's a start area. The two white buoys that are out there and the uh, barge that's out there, we've got the starters on it. So... Uh, then the skiers soon will be getting on their boats and heading towards the start area and when we get the official start we'll be counting you down so uh, it's 45 minutes plus one lap so uh, the big turn buoy the, the world uh, world turn boo buoy or boy is out there and then they'll go around that sweeping turn towards that uh, orangey red boat out there and around the orange boys but the chequered flag, the chequered uh, finish boy is the big yellow and black uh, boy out there doing, uh, you know, sitting there with the official judges that'll get the official times and everything else. So uh, we're getting close to the start. We've got a, uh, a helicopter in the air, so uh, people are getting excited. So uh, it's great to be here at Gosford. This Mercury Racing event, it's, uh, they're starting their engines. So... Uh, they're either getting nervous or they've been told to, it's not long to the start. To all our friends overseas and in Australia, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you would like to follow us on the live stream, go to ski racing. Australia.com.au. Ski racing.com.au. Ski which is the Ski Racing Australia website. There's a couple of people trying to scam us, trying to send you to the wrong, the wrong place. You don't have to sign up to anything. It is 100% free. All week, every live stream will be free. Just head to the Ski Racing Australia website. As the boats head over, they've just been obviously given their 15 minutes to start, and then at five minutes, the two flags will go up. In pole one, grid one, we've got boat number 40, Mojo 40, Daniel Steely, Noel Bishop, and Cheryl Rustin doing the skiing all the way from the United States. In pole... Grid one, pole two, we've got Coldies F1, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boylan, and Rachel Stapleton, no doubt one of the favourites, Mitch, to, uh, to go well out there today. And grid one, pole three, we've got the beautiful big yellow strike F1 boat, the McMillan's new boat, David Millen, Brett Armstrong, Nelly McMillan, also, also one of the favourites. And grid one, pole four, our, our rounding out grid, uh, grid one, showdown, Brent Wiseman or Daniel Cotton, Madison Boyer also also one of the favourites. So they're going for a sight lap, as you can see, Mitch. Uh, away they go. We've got the footage on the screen. It's absolutely, looking absolutely great. And obviously, uh, we'll, that's why it's 15 minutes, so we can wait for the, uh, the rough water to subside and they can get a good, clean start. A lot of these inboards have got a lot of heat that they need to maintain with their engines. They've been sitting there for a while now, so this lap will get the engines up to temp um, and then they'll be able to hold that temperature heading over to the start line. And we've got grid two, Pole 1, Supernova F1, Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, Emma Williams from Australia. Grid 2, Pole 2, Filthy F1, Jared Jarvis, Aaron Jemison and Riley Jarvis. Grid 2, Pole 3, we've got Brandon Cropper, Bailey Cropper, Samara Ross. And then we move into the Formula 2 boats, which will be starting in Grid 3. Grid 3, we've got Blackjack, Michael Foblitz, Benny Vanderen, Demi Foblitz all the way from Belgium. Grid 3, pole 2, hijack, Jake Hinterhosel, Sam Perry, Emma Barnes from Australia. Grid 3, pole 3, the prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith 
Emily Canning from Great Britain. Grid three, pole four. You've got Snappy three, seven, seven. Carl Johnson, Ken Kramer, Sophia Riviera, all the way from the US of A. Speed Lab, Grid 3, Pole 5, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Molly Polzer from Australia. Grid 3, Pole 6, 373, three, Steve Davis, Daniel Weatherford and Amy Threlfall from the USA. Grid 4, Pole 1, Trim Lab, Aaron Sheath, Troy Hood, Danielle Hood, all the way from Australia as well. Snappy 177, Kylie Lankong, Mike King, Julia Williams from the US of A. Grid 4, Pole 3, Meltdown F2, Anthony Savona, Jack Batty, Grace Savona from Victoria. Grid 4, Pole 4, Belligerent, Cole Hockley, Benjamin, Benjamin Gully, Amy Hockley, all the way from Queensland. And Grid 4, Pole 5, rounding out the field, 1648 F2, Cam Monaghan, Doug Perry, Emma Tudnam, which is a wild card. You can see the boats on the screen there, they're coming down. Looks like absolutely glorious conditions out on the water there today, Mitch. And... Um, we shouldn't be getting too far away from a start. No, these boats will do one or two laps. I don't think they want to do any more than that. These boats will do one or two laps. I don't think they want to do any more than that and then um, head over into the start line and we'll, we'll be on our way. We will, yeah, as you can see on the screen there. You've got the boats Prodigy 200. They're English there in the boat. It's a great looking boat, the Gen, Gen F2 Cyclone. Then you've got Showdown. You can see the official boat in the back there as well. Showdown, the beautiful atomic boat owned by the Cotton family. You've got Brent Wisemantle doing the driving. Boat number seven, you've got Matty Boyer doing the skiing, Daniel Cotton in the, uh, in the observer seat. Very, very experienced crew there. In the beautiful trim lab there. And you've also got the Bernico F2 Extreme, boat number 21, Blackjack. Some very, very nice looking boats out on the water today and just an absolutely sensational day here on the Brisbane waters at Gosford. So you can see the boats making their way to the start area there. Boat number 110, the big yellow strike boat. It's a F1 Force with the 1550 Mercury package. Boat number 377 there, the, the snappy boat, the uh, F the Cyclone Formula 2 boat, 20 foot Nordic, making its way, way around the corner. Thanks very much to Mercury again. This, this first race is 45 minutes plus one lap. It's open, open women's and for F2 women's at the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. A lot of these boats have their skiers sitting on the wharf there waiting. Um, that's where you can see them just heading around to the back now. It looks like that wharf out there is absolutely packed, Troy. It does. It's great to see the crowds. It's been great to see the crowds over the last day or so, Mitch. People from all over the world, all over Australia, coming out and supporting this great family sport of ours and, uh, and supporting our great sponsors, Mercury Marine, Gosford City Council, Drifters Wharf, JJ Robinson and Sons. And also, thanks very much to Ski Racing Australia, Ski Racing New South Wales, and also our, uh, our event organiser, Stuart Smith, who's, uh, and Bob Ed McMillan, as she walks past there, and um, who absolutely worked tirelessly to get this event on the water after we've had a uh, bit of a layoff for the World Championships over the last few years due to COVID and, and whatever other situations have arisen around the world. Mate, Stuart and Bob Ed, I'd hate to see how many steps these guys are going to do over the next week. They, they have not stopped. You'll notice that most, as, I, as we discussed, there are, there are a couple of the other outboards in, in the pit lane there that are, that are brandishing other brands, but we've got the, uh, most of them are, are the Mercury Marine racing packages. It is absolutely sensational. I'm just, whilst you guys on the, uh, on the live feed can't see it here, we can see it over at the pits. Unfortunately, it looks like Boat 711, the uh, filthy. filthy machine, the Hallett 210, has pulled back into the wharf, which is not good news for them and bad news for their skier, Riley Jarvis. So let's hope that they might be able to pull out another boat. We actually discussed this in our team meeting yesterday, Mitch, didn't we? Uh, that they do send some other boats out. Um, yeah, a lot of these teams might have boats bought or borrowed sitting there ready to go in case of things like this do happen. Um, we'll, hopefully they get back out there. They seem to be looking up and down at the engine at the moment. 
But back to our live feed here. For those all around the world watching us here today, that you are not currently looking at Drifters Wharf there in Gosford. Beautiful Gosford, the Brisbane waters in uh, just a little over an hour north of Sydney. An absolutely sensational place on the Central Coast. Yesterday we had the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony was a great event held down at Terrigal Surf Club. Thanks to those guys, it, it was an absolutely great cultural event and great to see all the athletes wearing their team uniforms very, very proudly. You'll notice the washers from the boats just starting to appease on, on the bank there, which is, uh, which is good, obviously, for the, for the first lap or two. We'd, uh, we'd like it smooth just so everyone can get away nicely. And then, uh, obviously, the water will start to rough up and it will turn into a ski race. As we mentioned earlier, about the 30-minute mark is where, where the, the skiers will start to tire and the water will become a lot rougher. And that's when the fitness and all the training starts to kick in. Okay, all the boats are mingling over in the marshalling area now, getting their skiers on board the decks of the boats, getting ready to face the starter. Just in the, in the shot there, you've got the beautiful, as we said, Brisbane water. But just behind you, you've got Central Coast Stadium there as well. For those of you from all over the world that are watching, welcome and Please enjoy our live feed. As we said, skiracing.com.au is where you go to find us. Plenty of people on the wharf there, as you can see. The start area is just, just to the left of the screen there. You can see the two boats with the blue canopies and the two white boys. That is the start line, and you can see the, uh, there would be an imaginary line in between those two white boys there that will, will be, consist of the start, the start line. The boats will tr try their absolute best to be right on that start line, but they certainly do not want to go past, because if they go past, they will receive a penalty, which could very well put them out, to the, out of contention for the rest of the week. Four grids, 30 seconds apart today, Troy. I believe we've got two F1, two grids of F1 women and two grids of F2 women. Yeah, we do, and there's, there's quite a lot of boats will be out in the course today. So the, uh, one, once we start getting right into the thick of the racing, there'll be a lot of boats, and you might see, then there'll be a little gap there, and then might see some more, because obviously all the boats will lap at varying speeds depending on skier ability, boat speed, how much ballast they can carry on board, all those sorts of things, and uh, it'll be going to be a very interesting race. Okay, looking over at the start boat, as I said, you can you can see in that shot there, the uh, the boat with the canopy. That that will be the start boat. It they don't have their flags up yet, so we're still still got more than five minutes to start. When they raise their flags, there'll be five minutes to start. They'll put two flags up, then obviously with 30 seconds to go, one flag will go down, and then the Australian flag will be dropped for the start of the start of the race. As we discussed, the uh, 45 minutes plus one lap, they'll go past the finish bo boat there and they will have 45 minutes plus one lap. When they get the, at the 45 minute mark, they'll get the blue flag and that will mean that the lead boat has one lap until they finish. Absolutely sensational scenes we're seeing here on the screen, Mitch. Glorious day here at Brisbane Waters Gosford. Thank you very much to Mercury Marine, the Mercury Marine dealers from all over Australia. 
TR Marine, Water Sports Marine, Bay City Marine, Brisbane Marine and Race Marine in Victoria for their sponsorship of this great event and also getting us on the water here this week. All the people, all the hire companies and what have you that have helped with the infrastructure that we've got here today, also thanks to them, thanks to Drifters Wharf for being a hospitality partner and, uh, and putting all our spectators up for the day. Looks like the start boat may be starting to move into position over there. That's a great look um, down at the course there, Troy. The total course length is five kilometres, so it's two and a half up, two and a half kilometres back. Um, it's, it's a fair way. The water does rough up. It's, it's going to get rough, without a doubt, over the 45 minutes. It certainly will. You've got seven, seven F1 boats out there. And then you've got the, uh, the big field of the Formula 2 boats. Twelve, another 12. So you'll have 19 boats out there on course at any given time. And when you're on a little sh short course of five kilometres, obviously, and some of those boats will be pushing over a tonne, tonne and a half. So obviously the water will rough up very, very quickly. We've got one more boat. Just, just getting put in the ramp, triple two. Triple two, that might be, we don't have that on here, that might be a swap for Filthy. It is perhaps. a swap. It is, we have got it. Filthy's had to pull out. They're using an outboard uh, boat, triple two. Yeah, kid stuff. The, uh, the Walsh family boat, it's an, uh, that's another different sort of boat that we haven't yet had a chance to mention, Mitch. Su super class, I believe. Yeah, 21 foot super class. It's got another one of the Mercury racing 300 Rs on the back of it. Very, very nice boat. They're going to ra rush their way over the start line. Maybe um, maybe that's what's been our little hold there, Mitch, is um, yep. waiting for these guys to get to the start line. I believe so, which is unfortunate for them. These guys are in F1 women. They're using an F2 boat. Um, you know, definitely the first couple of laps, and obviously you won't have as good as a wash um, behind the outboard, but at least they're out there. They still get to race, and they didn't have dramas during the race. You mentioned the F1 and the F2 boats there. For those watching all around the world that may not know about ski racing and also those local, the difference between the F1 and the F2 boats is the F2 boats are a single mono hull with the single outboard, which in these cases was mostly Mercury 300 XS or 300 Rs or, th or 300 Pro XSs. And the other boats that you see with a lot of the Mercury marine racing packages inside the boat with their Mercury number six drives off the back. They're the uh, inboard or what we, what we term F1 or open women's boats in this race. Riley Jarvis is out of grid two, pole two. So should be right in between Supernova F1 and 1350. Um, the outboard in the middle of the inboards will definitely be a challenge, won't it, Troy? It will be a challenge, but as we said, it's 45 minutes plus a lap. And also, we've got, they've got four events to go. So as long as she goes around today, get, get some good points, does her best, she'll still have a very, very good chance going forward. Um, as we said, you've got four races. You take your three best scores. If today happens to be the race where she accumulates the least amount of points, well, so be it. She can move forward and, uh, and still have a good week. Great to see our other media partners here. We've got Channel 7 Sport, Sports Entertainment Network. Great to see them coming along, supporting the event. Uh, thanks to those. The more recognition the sport can get, the better. It's a great family sport, Mitch. I know that you, you got into the sport quite some time ago, mate, um, and I believe you, you might be sitting quite near the bloke that you had your first ever race behind. Yes, Troy, you did actually get the pleasure of driving me in my, f my first race in a boat behind Move It. Um, Todd Gray, I seen him floating around here earlier this morning. He got the luxury of, of observing. That was, I believe, t 16, 17 years ago, something, something like that, somewhere around there. 
I, I still remember it vividly, Mitch. We were at the, on the banks of the Tookley Lake, yep, and uh, right. up, up came your uh, your grandma and said, "Excuse me, could you tow my grandson <laughs> in in this race?" Jacqueline, she's here today somewhere. Should be floating around. Yeah, and and we we talk about ski racing being a family sport. She's uh she's from a long list of uh, ski racing people as well, Mitch. Oh yep, she uh her. My, my grandfather, Wally Hackett, used to own a boat named Thunderbolt, which uh, his son Brad has actually r r uh, followed that name, uh, Thunderbolt. He's got his lab sport here today. He's running in the International Challenge later on, so we'll get to see Thunderbolt out there. Uh, my parents actually met, not through ski racing, but they met and they had both ski race separately as well. So the, f the, sport, the sport floats around, and it is, it is a very good family sport. Definitely, mate. You say that, well... Um your parents met through ski racing, well, as did my, my good wife and I, and um, and our the gentleman that was our best man, he's uh, he's out there racing today now with his daughter Dave McMillan, with his beautiful daughter Nelly. So um, they're from a, a very big long list of families, as are the Americans that are here, like Stevie Davis. We spoke about him before. He's he's going out there racing and driving. His father an absolute legend of the sport. He uh, he's towed Todd Haig for many many a year. And into world championships, Catalina Island races, just an absolute legend with the rest of the family. Here we have, we're talking about legends of sport just in front of the central commentary position. For those of you on television, you can't see, but those from overseas, you certainly would know the legendary Cliff, Cliff Priest. He's here supporting us. It's great to see Cliffy here. Um, again, from a uh, long legendary family. He's wearing a West Tigers hat, though I do feel for him. I go for Tigers as well, unfortunately. Oh, well, someone's got to go for the Tigers. <laughs> Not like the, what is it, the three-peat Panthers? That's right, the three-peat. We're going four in 24, don't worry. For those of you overseas that, that may not understand, the, uh, the rugby league here in, in Australia is very big and, uh, and the mighty Penrith Panthers have done three in a row. So Yeah, cheaters. <laughs> uh, we just got a very, very, very big nursery that we can breed from. <laughs> well said. Just waiting. As, as I said, I, we don't have any any official information, unfortunately, but we're assuming that the the hold is because um, unfortunate mechanical failure of um, the filthy machine. Let's hope it's only a little small thing. They can get the boat back on the water for Monday's race, and they have a good run in their outboard today. You can see the crowd brewing there for all those that are on the on the live feed. Absolutely sensational scenes here. Plenty of people. Great weather, great location, and a great event that's been put on by our organising committee, led by Stuart Smith and Bob McMillan, and the rest of their band of merry merry men and women that have put on an absolute awesome show so far. And it's only going to get better as the week goes on, I'm sure. As will we, we promised with our live feed here. <laughs> all amateurs but uh, like we say thank you very much to Mercury Marine J and J Robinson and Sons Drifters Wharf a beautiful wharf that you can see over there for the hospitality f for the event for the week um, obviously Blendline Blend TV as well which is our, our live media partner thanks to them and also the uh, the companies that have uh, helped with all the infrastructure, be it the, f the fencing, the speakers, everything, everything that we're doing. We've got a lot of cameras around here today, today Troy, from Blenline. A lot of, you'll see a couple of drone shots. Um, hopefully, we're hoping to get a couple of cameras in some boats later, hopefully. Yeah, there's just been so much infrastructure to put together. Obviously, um, it's all happening. But we've got great, great camera footage. I'm sure that you people that are watching over at Drifters Wharf there, overseas, in Europe, Great Britain, America, you can see the great shots, and it's uh, it's amazing what you can do with technology these days. When uh, when I got back in, got into the sport quite some time ago, it was um, all you would have been doing was listening to two clowns like us on the microphone. Great to see all the uh, merchandise getting around too. Mitch, the uh, you've got the uh, the ski ra the official ski racing IWWF merchandise tent down in the pit area. If you'd like to go down and have a look at that, then obviously a lot of the teams would be uh, selling and supplying different 
outfits to their supporters and uh, and crew, and obviously some of them. That's that's the way they can fund a very small part of uh, of coming here to Australia. There's a great range too, Troy. We've got shirts, singlets, hoodies, hats, a bit of everything. It's going to get a bit hot hotter later. I think the temperature is about 30. 32, 33 or something around there, today and tomorrow. Just whack on a singlet. Yeah, 32 for those of you over, overseas, 32 degrees Celsius is around, around about 100. It's hot. Fahrenheit, so yeah, quite hot. And uh, a little bit humid today too, Mitch, to start the day. Let's, uh, let's hope that it, we might get a little bit of breeze this afternoon. It might make everything cool down a little bit. Hopefully, Troy. There's no wind. It doesn't do, seem to be much wind at all, which means the conditions at the start will be a bit smoother. Um, I have been here before. I think I raced back at Gosford in 2007. And once this wind kicks up here, it comes down in that valley and just it, it blows the water up, which, um, which uh, we won't see today, I don't believe. No, uh, you... He's in the shot there, you, you know, that's the pit area for those of you overseas. Great shot from the pit area from our, our drone footage. You see the city of Gosford behind us there. Great city, as I said, about an hour and a half north of Sydney. Um, great location. We're currently on the Brisbane water at Gosford here right now. And, uh, but five, five to ten kilometres from the, the coastline of, of the central coast of New South Wales. Absolutely sensational place to come on holiday. And uh, it was actually interesting talking to some of the Americans and Belgians and what have you and saying how, uh, how lovely the beach was yesterday and, and, and what have you. So great location for, for holidaying. Thanks very much for the Central Coast Council for coming on board and supporting the event. And I hope that everyone enjoys the footage that we can supply you. There you've got the uh, New Zealand flag, the Belgian flag, the Great Britain flag, the American flag, all the countries that are represented here. It's great to see. We've also got the, obviously the Australian flags and, and everything else as well. So Interesting to note, there's obviously some, some sort of hold. I, I commented before, Mitch, so we've just gone to a 10 minutes to start. We've just, but I commented before to you, just, just whilst we're off air, um, I know for a fact from having towed some skiers previously in, in these events that they could be getting very anxious right now sitting in the boats in the sun. They are quite nervous, nervous energy. Obviously you, you use up nervous energy. You can use nervous energy to your advantage or your disadvantage. It would be very interesting to see, to know what, was going, what is going through these skiers' heads and we might try and get some of that for you after the race, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I do believe, Troy, the hardest part is, the most nerve-wracking part is sitting on the deck, looking at the course, thinking about everything, going through your, your thoughts, what could happen, what you've been, everything you've trained for to, to get to the, the top, the, the world title, is, is, it's, is the, as big as it gets. It's, it's the most nerve-wracking part. Um, once you get up, you know, that's when everything changes, I believe, for the skiers. Um, you've, done a, you've done a couple of world titles as a driving perspective, Troy. Yeah, yeah, I um, I have. I'd, uh, 05, 07, 09, had the fortunate enough to drive in the Formula Two, represent Australia. But yeah, I just know that like the sk the skiers warm themselves up before they get into the boats. They're now they're now been sitting in the boat for probably 40 plus minutes. So obviously the warm up that they did is now gone out the window, and uh, they just need to obviously tell themselves, think about it, think about it or try not to think about it and just deal with it and hopefully all my training will get me, get me through. Yeah. Yeah. Just waiting, as I said, we've gone to 10 minutes to start so we Shouldn't be far away till we get, get the two flags up for, for the five, five, and then uh, we'll have some action on the water for the 2020-23 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships, brought to you by Mercury Marine.
So as I mentioned, we're, we're in the 10 minutes st to start zone. All the boats have left the, left the dock now. All the skiers will be in the boats. Let's hope they're, uh, they're keeping their nerves under wraps and uh, we can get a, our race underway very, very shortly. Okay, we've, we're definitely in the five minutes to start. The two flags are up on the start boat there. The two flags are up on the start boat, so we've got five minutes to start. Because what you're saying is they, the live stream won't be on. I couldn't. I could. We've got the two flags up on, on the start boat there. Absolutely great footage we'll get. Okay, we've got the start boat. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Race one of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. You have open women and F2 women on the water, 45 minutes plus one lap. Kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine from Brisbane Waters, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Welcome to everybody around the world. And there we can see the boats running their race lines out now to the start boat there. As I said, you'll see the start boat there. He's got the blue blue canopy on board there, you can see in grid one. Hello Tim, what can you see over there on the wharf? First, first boats are away, first grid. We had Showdown on the far side, we had Strike Force, we had Cheryl Rustin skiing with Mojo on the inside. All got a great start and look at the Coldies boat go through the middle. So uh, yeah, a great start from grid one. So. Uh, that's good to see everyone's up and away. Now we've got grid two with Supernova on pole and uh, team, team 50, 1350 on the far side. And then we've got the substitute boat, boat 222 with Samara Ross, which is great to see at the last minute, um, helped out and uh, get the skier on the water. So uh, although it's an outboard, she is in F1. So uh, it's great to see. Now we've got the third grid ready to go. And on pole, we've got boat number 24, boat 79, and the boat we need to watch is that grey stealth looking boat over the far side. He's a, a competitor, very, very um, competitive, and away they go, and they're up and racing. And they're, all the skiers are coming out wrapped up, uh, so they've got a V in their harness, and, uh, and they have handles behind their back, and, and one hand out in front. Okay, we've got the third, fourth grid, with Trim Lab, boat number, also we've got boat number 177 all the way 
from America, Snappy, the Snappy boat. So uh, that's, uh, they've imported this boat just for this race, for the next four, uh, 10 days. So here we go, they're up and right. We've got Matty Boyer coming up to, uh, she's in first place at the top turn. They've just come around the top turn, heading back to finish up their first lap. Yeah, you see, you've got Matty Boyer there, you've got Nelly McMillan also, just on the inside, and then, then obviously Rachel Stapleton. They've all had three great starts. Very interesting to see Matty Boyer running very wide out there, almost on the very extreme outside of the course. But these three young ladies coming around, have a look at the footage on the screens there, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely smoking along the top of the water there. Matty Boyer setting an absolute cracking pace behind the showdown machine. The Atomic F1 boat there with the... Uh, 1350 Mercury package. You've got Nelly McMillan behind the F1 strike, for, strike boat and then you've got Rachel Stapleton on the inside. That's a great start for the three girls there. Absolutely sensational. Going through that start area there, so it gets a bit choppy. They've had to slow down just a touch there and um, very interesting that they uh, they got a little bit close there. I don't know whether um, those two white boys there on the right there to do with the start area may have cleaned them up a little bit. But that'll be interesting, interesting to hear what comes of that later today. And now here we have the uh, Cheryl Rustin from the US of A coming through to complete her first lap behind boat number 40 there, Mojo. Supernova here coming to finish the first lap way out ahead in the grid, way out ahead. Supernova, you've got Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson and Emma Williams from Australia. They're doing a great job. Then you've got the 1350 machine, Brandon Cropper, Bailey Cropper, Samara Ross in the wildcard event. And then coming there, Riley Jarvis, you can see the difference in the speeds there of the F1 and the F2 boats. The unfortunate boat swap, Filthy's had to pull out and swap over to boat triple two kid stuff. Yeah, it's a great start. Have a look at the race on the water here, Mitch, for the, uh, the Formula 2. So up the middle of the field there, that's interesting to see. You've got one of the American boats straight up the middle. 377 having a great start there boat 377 carl johnson ken kramer and sophie rivera all the way from the states and on the inside you've got the hijack machine jake in sam perry emma barnes doing the skiing from australia then on the outside you've got darren hitchcock gray machine and that they're very very close in the start absolutely cracking start for all those boats and uh Sorry, we were missing me there too. I, I didn't see the Bernico on the inside as well. So there was four coming through there all together. And Trim Lab, we've got there Denny Hood coming through to complete her first lap. And then here we have another one of the American boats, boat 177, the, uh, the 20 foot cyclone, Snappy One, Kyle Lancon, Mike King, Julia Williams, all the way from the United States. Then you've got the Meltdown Machine there. Meltdown F2, Anthony Savona, Grace Savona from Australia, Victoria, and Jack Beatty doing the observing. Troy, if we just have a look out in front of us, across where this start line is, it's getting very rough. Only just completing the first lap. Showdown coming to complete through the second lap. Still out in front, pole one, uh, Merck Force uh, with Rachel Stapleton and Nelly McMillan in pole three, having a great battle out there. That's right. So, yeah, you've got Matty Boyer, plenty of years of experience there. Also, her boat crew got plenty of years of experience years of experience they're doing a great job and then you've got <coughs> Jason Wormsley affectionately known as Zig and Kevin Boylan in second spot on the inside then you've got Nelly with David McMillan and um, Braden Jamison there doing a great job in third you've got the three three different boats there you've got the uh, the F1 the F1X and the Atomic all doing a great job with their 1350 Mercruiser and packages. That's about the only thing that's, that's the same with those three boats. They've all got the, uh, the same Mercury Marine racing product engines with the Mercury number six drives hanging off the transom. I'm just looking into the time, time here, Troy. We're about five and a half minutes in the race. The girls are lapping it around at about two and a half minutes per lap at the moment. And we've got Supernova coming through there. Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, Emma Williams from Victoria, Australia, and Cheryl Rustin. Sorry, that's not Cheryl. That's, um, no, that's, a, that's our English competitor. Our English competitor. Emily Canning. Emily Canning from Great Britain in boat number 200. Brad Cannings and Simon Smith. Well done to them. Here we have Riley Jarvis coming through to complete her second lap in the, uh, the kid stuff mach machine after had a little boat issue in the warm up. Then number, boat number 1350 there. 1350. We've got Brandon Cropper, Bailey Cropper, and Samara Ross doing the skiing. They're having a great, great start to the race. On the inside, 
You've got Hijack, Jay Kinehosel, Sam, Sam Perry and Emma Barnes. And you've got the, uh, the American boat squeezing up the middle there. It's very close racing, this Formula 2 class here so far. These Americans are having a good push. It's a great battle out there. And you, then you've got the Blackjack machine from Belgium in the middle. That's the white boat in the middle there, having a great job. Blackjack, Michael Fables, Benny Van Duren and Demi Fables. Being from Belgium, as the water gets rougher, they'll, they'll probably come in there into their own a little as well. But Danny Hood behind the trim lab, the GTR with Mercury, Mercury Racing 300R on the back there, boat number two. Then with, again, another one of the American boats there, you've got Snappy, that's the 177 machine, the Snappy 1, Kyle Lancon, Mike King, Julie Williams, all the way from the United States of America. Then we've got the Meltdown. Here we have uh, Matt, Matty Boyer again, absolutely smoking now. She's, uh, she's opened up a big lead. It's interesting now that they're, they're catching the Formula 2 boats, Mitch, the tactics. You've got Jason Warmsley going up the inside there, trying to save ground. He's absolutely pushing water. These grids are starting to split up as well. Nelly McMillan sticking out to the outside pole. Roughly, you know, what, are we, what are we in now? Seven and a half, eight minutes in. The, the outside run is generally the smoother one, but you do lose time going on the outside. Great footage here from our uh, Glen Live TV. Hope you guys over in the United States and uh, and Belgium, Europe, wherever you're watching, are enjoying this. We've got a little little bit of a uh, little bit of a break on live. Great look over the course. There you can see the top turn there. I believe that may be Supernova heading back there, way out in front. Uh, yeah, Supernova there just coming through to complete their third lap. They're having a good run there. Supernova with Scott Cleaver, Brad Roberts and Emma Williams representing Australia, having a nice clean run coming around to complete that lap, doing a great job. That's a great effort from Emma. She's, she's blitzing that grid. A big gaggle of boats coming, there, coming down the back straightaway now. Emily Canning sticking out to the outside there from Great Britain. Kid stuff just inside her. The American boat still up with um, with Emma Barnes from Pole One from Australia. America versus Australia there. And you've got the 1648 F2 boat there. Cam Monaghan, Doug Perry, Emma Tootenham. One of the wild cards from Australia. A beautiful V7 velocity. Absolutely good, great to see the, the varying boats out there. You've got the Bernie Coes, you've got the Velocities, you've got the Force boats, you've got the Lab boats, you've got the Superclass boat, you've got the Atomic. Absolutely amazing to see the difference in the boats and also the Nordics all the way from the States. The Bernie Coes from Belgium. Great racing, great to see this footage live as well. From this drone footage here, you can see a lot in the more in the middle where that maritime boat is. A lot of that water will start binding together, make it rough and rougher and rougher, and build up over these 45 minutes. Along the straights, it tends to get a bit better because the boats are running running parallel to each other. But the same thing at the top turn, um, you know, you'll start to see things things um, things bind up together and get really rough. Uh, Matty Boyer there coming around now again, representing Australia in the Formula One, just about to go past one of our American competitors in Cheryl Rustin and also our English competitor all the way from England, obviously, Emily Canning. And you've got Nelly McMillan there in second place now in the, uh, the Formula One. She's having a good dig. And then Rachel Stapleton on the inside there behind the, uh, <coughs> the Coldies F1 machine. Boat number 177 there, snapping one coming through from America. Well, Kyle Lancon, Mike King, Julia Williams. And then the Meltdown Machine, the beautiful Force 21 boat. That's the blue boat going through there. Oh, Troy, just out front here, we've had a boat pull in. I believe that might be Trim Lab. Just on the exit of the corner, I think we can see the scare there. The scare there. That's no, no good. That is Trim Lab, yeah. Troy. Danny Hood. Yeah. Orange oh. flags up. They'll head back and retrieve her if, if she's uh, good to go. Not exactly sure what's happened just yet, but they may get up and get going again. 
Not, not good for Danny there. Let's hope everything's OK with the boat and, uh, and her, her good self. As we just said, too, that exit on that corner is the one of the roughest points on the course. That's where most of your mishaps will happen. Supernova coming back through. Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, Emma Williams. Boat number 128 from Australia. Having a good clean run out by themselves. That's uh, getting around. As we said, long, long week. You've got four races, 45 minutes plus a lap. You certainly can't, uh, can't win a world championship in this race today, but you can, uh, you can certainly lose one, and let's hope that nobody, nobody does, it, does so today. You're right. Again, we've got five of the F2 boats coming through. You've got one of the F2 boats there, Kid Stuff, which is in the, actually F1. Then you've got hijacked in the middle, hijacked leading the F2 class, Jake Hinojosel's Sam Perry, Emma Barnes from Australia doing a great job leading the F2 class. Then you've got the Belgian, the Belgian girl, Demi Furbles, as, as second place. As you can see, we've got the scare pulling in the rope. Um, the, we're going to see they've got the deck mat on the front of the boat. These guys will put the ski back on and get going again. It's not over for them, it looks like, so far. Unfortunate, unfortunate for Danny Hood, but she is a trooper. And she has her husband observing for us. So I think he might get a couple of smacks when they get back to the, to the bank, Troy. Oh, well, you never know. And you've got the speed lap machine going through there. Just Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Molly Pauls up. Maddie Boyer out in front there in the F1 class. She's doing a great job, showing a clean set of hills at the moment. Then you've got Nellie McMillan following in a wash, probably about 300 metres behind, doing a, an absolutely sensational job. Nellie only 18, skiing up against the, the women. Big step up for her, having come from the junior class. And uh, then, she, then we've got just Troy, behind her, Rachel Stapleton doing a great job behind the big blue Coldies F1. Nellie McMillan has pulled about 15 seconds on that lap in front of Rachel Stapleton. They were in the same grid and she's, she's definitely pulled on that lap. Great start for all the girls in uh, F1 and F2 and great, great racing. Yep. That we got going, going through there. That was... Um, our American competitor Cheryl Rustin behind the boat number 40. We've got another one of the American girls, 177, Snappy One, Julia Williams doing the skiing, and you've got the uh, meltdown. meltdown. Grace Savona, GSAV, having a great battle out there with the Nordic. The Nordic uh, from America, they do have pole one, bit, bit of a better run at the moment. Belligerent coming through as well with Amy Hockley. And uh, Emily Canning just slowly behind her. I think um, I think Amy Hockley's made up a bit of a bit of pace on her at um, the last couple of laps. They're going quite well. Everyone, we've only had one tiny little mishap so far, which we, they're getting back up and going again. So that's good to see. Supernova in clear water coming through. Boat number seventy-five. They're having a good run. Scotty Cleaver, Brad Robinson, Emma Williams, doing a great job. there we've got Nellie McMillan just on the back there the yellow boat there she still pulled a bit more a bit more room on uh, on Rachel Stapleton we can't see Merkhorst in that shot yet so it means it, it, it she falling. there's Merkhorst there sitting in Nellie McMillan's wash is Nellie McMillan pulling away or is um, you know Rachel Stapleton could have a um, could have a, a game plan to sit in her wash wait for about that half an hour make and that, that half an hour mark and then make the charge looks to me like Nellie might be having a crack at um Maddie Boyer. Maddie Boyer here too. She certainly pulled some ground off her. So, whilst we're this is what we're seeing on the screens, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be able to see when they come back, come back around. And we, then we've got um, just coming past there, 1648 F2, Doug Perry, Emma Tudenham doing the uh, skiing, Cameron Monaghan driving. Here she is, Maddie Boyer, the race leader. Here's a great shot, Troy. We can see just how much these water these boats push. They'll be pumping the ballast. The observer's got his hand out. A lot of observers put their hand out in signal to let you know that I'm either giving you a down or I've got your your uh, your call that the skier has just made. A bit of communication goes a long way between the driver and observer. Definitely pulled back a little bit there. So, but obviously up the front, Cotto and Wisey in the big atomic machine will know showdown. They know what they're doing. 
and then you've got Zig and Kevin in the boat here. As we said, there's four races this week. Absolutely long, long way to go before we know who's going to be world champion at the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. Kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine. Thank you very much, Mercury. Thanks very much to our friends from Maritime too. You can see them just in front here. They, um, without them, we obviously wouldn't be able to put this race on, so thank you to them. Then we got boat 200 coming through there. Boat number 200, Emily Canning from Great Britain. Great to see out there, her out there having a ski. Brad Canning, Simon Smith, Emily Canning. Boat number, boat the prodigy, boat number 200. So we're probably 20 minutes into the race. 17 minutes into the race, so still a long, long way to go. Over half an hour to go. And um, here we have, coming through now, is this changed? One no, boat. same battle with uh, the Nordic on the inside from America and uh, Grace Savona behind Meltdown. Boat 177 there. Showdown, look at the water, they're pushing on there. Great run for Emily, uh, Emma Williams. Stuck in the middle there, I can't really see, but then you, you've got boat number 40 going through. Cheryl Rustin on the inside all the way from the United States. Then you've got belligerent Amy Hockley from Brisbane doing the skiing, ha having a good crack out there as well. And I'm sure just trying to put down a, a good run today to lead into the rest of the week. Amy Hockley's doing very well, very well to be out there. She went through our selection process with... Uh, Can I just butt in there, Mitch? We've got a battle going on here. You've got the young Belgian girl punching up the inside. They're your leaders of F2 currently coming through there. You've got Blackjack, Michael Fobles, Benny Van Duren and Demi Fobles coming through, sneaking up the inside of the boat hijacked. Jake Hinojosel, Sammy, Sam Perry and Emma Barnes. That's very, very interesting to see the young Belgian girl punching up. And I did mention before, they love the rough water, the Belgians. And you can see that they're stepping up there as it's getting rougher. Then we've got Matty Boyer. She's up. She's gone and uh, looked like she's pulled away on Nelly again a little bit there. We've got Matty Boyer coming through, leading the F1. So the F1 is just about to go past the uh, first grid of the F2. So that'll be interesting to see. Then going through there now on the inside. You've got 1648 F2, Emma Tudenham skiing. Then we've got Rachel Stapleton coming through as well in third place in the uh, in the Formula One Open Women's. Going out the back straight away there, you can see 373, Trim Lab still, they look like they're just about to jump back in the water, away she goes, yeah, Danny Hood back in the, the water. Boat. That's a great, great, for, great to see for her, back in the water, hopefully she'll get up and have a good clean run from here on in and get, get herself some points for the rest of the week. It's a good way to get a rest, Troy. We're just about to tick over 20 minutes into the 45 minute ra uh, race. Trim Lab running out the rope again. Um, they'll get going in a matter of minutes. Unfortunate, but at least she does get to finish. And as you said, Troy, she does get some points on the board for the day. Yeah, she will get some points. We've got the 1350 machine coming through there. Nice looking machine. Brandon Cropper doing a great job driving the boat. Bailey Cropper observing Samara Ross doing the skiing. As you said, Mitch, let's hope. The, uh, the, she's been able to have a good week after only being thrown in in three weeks ago. Plenty of boats coming down the back straight now. There's boat number 200 there as well. Emily Canning from Great Britain. The boat, the prodigy, Brad Canning and Simon Smith in the boat, doing a great job all the way from Great Britain. Great to see them here. I believe, Troy, we've got Meltdown here and the Nordic uh, from America has dropped back. <laughs> Grace Savona pulled a, pulled a bit on that lap on the outside pole. Snappy one. Kyle Lankin, Mike King, Julia Williams doing a great job all the way from uh, America. Supernova still punching around the outside. Boat 78. They're, they're keeping their race nice and clean. Nice out of everyone's way. Number 377, Carl Johnson, Ken Kramer, Sophia Rivera there, coming through all the way from the United States of America. They've still got a ding-dong battle going here, Mitch, in the F2. 
side by side again. The young Belgian, Belgian girl, Demi Fobles, and on the outside there from Victoria, Emma Barnes. They're having a great race and uh, 22 minutes or 21 and a half minutes into the race and they're still side by side. It's great to see. Boat number 40 there going through. Cheryl Rustin staying on top of the water, having a good, good clean run, getting around. Nellie McMillan still making a bit of pace on, uh, on Rachel Stapleton here. She's probably got, I'd say, roughly 10, 15 seconds on her. Um, a bit off the pace. Um, still got... And you've got Matty Boyer, obviously, about the same distance in front of Nellie. Yeah. Doing a great job out in front, Matty. Very seasoned campaigner, very professional. Um, she's been there, done that. And, uh, and she's doing a great job. Boat number 97 there coming through. Speed up. Alza. Sixteen forty-eight F two Cam Monningham, Doug Perry, Emma Tudenham doing the skiing, having a nice clean run as well. Good looking boat on the water. They're doing a great job and having a great start to their 2023 World Championships campaign. Twenty-two and a half minutes gone, so we're, we're dead on halfway through the uh, the first half of the race. Forty-five minutes plus one lap, so we're halfway through. As you can see, Meltdown, they've moved into pole one. Snappy 177 has moved out. They seem to be sitting in showdowns while Super now, Supernova's wash, I believe, trying to get a bit more of a run. What we're talking about before that outside pole, the outside run will get a bit better. The water's a bit better out there. As you can see, Nordic 177 on the far left of the screen has moved into showdowns wash. They'll try and get a bit better of a run. It's coming down past the finish line again. You've got the 1350 machine. And then Danny Hood behind Trim Lab, she's up and going again, circulating, that's great to see. Well done to Danny and Crew for getting back up on top of the water. Going around, getting some points for their first race today, and then uh, moving forward for the rest of the week. Meltdown, just coming across the, the line now, has pulled way ahead of Snappy 177. She's on her own now. Um, Supernova. Also lapping around in her own. She, she, you know, it's hard choice sometimes. It's good to be in the grid um, with the boats that you're battling to, uh, to understand where you're at. Um, it's a bit hard to gauge. Sometimes the observer will let the drivers know, hey, we need to make up some pace here. Let's see what we can do. Um, but it could also be good to lap around your own and on, get on out of your head. On the screen, you can see the boat 177 there from the States and then uh, 17377. Then you've also got... Matty Boyer punching through the middle. It's very interesting to see them go, go through the middle there. That's, that's unusual, but um, she's doing a great job, Matty Boyer, leading, leading your women's open. And then Nellie McMillan coming through. And then you've got Amy Hockley behind the belligerent boat there. And then another one of the American boats. Just off the iometer, Troy, I'd say we'd have Nellie McMillan first in, currently in first place in F1 women. Rachel second. Stapleton in second. Nellie's second. Oh, Maddie's first. Maddie's first. Maddie's Sorry. first. Maddie, Nellie, and then Rachel Stapleton. Yeah. Maddie's way out in the head, confusing me. And then in, uh, in the F2, whilst we're on that shot there, in the F2, we currently have Blackjack from Belgium, Michael Fobles, Benny Vander, and Demi Fobles doing a great job and racing side by side with Hijack, Jake Hinehosel, Sam Perry, and Emma Barnes from Victoria. Yeah. A great shot there from the footage. Coming down the outside, we've got Cheryl Rustin again in the, uh, the white force boat. You see the boats getting thrown around by the wash there, ladies and gentlemen. Mojo 40, quite a very nice boat, quite a big boat, and still getting thrown around by the wash. As we said, Mitch, it, it is slightly rough, but, but certainly not a, um, anywhere near what it can get. Oh, no. Cond conditions are pretty good, Troy. I expect it to be a bit worse. 1648 F2. Emma Tudenham doing the skiing there, coming through. She's doing a great job, staying on top of the water, having a good clean run for her first race of the campaign. And I'm sure they'd be very happy right at this point in time. As you can see, the boat's sort of now starting to 
sort themselves out and all getting all tangled up together, the F1s, the F2s. You can see I, that shot there, supernova on the outside, then you've got meltdown, and then on the inside it looks to me like the two leaders of the F2 class. You've got the Belgian boat and the Australian boat, blackjack and hijacked, just to make it easy, blackjack and hijacked, <laughs> make it easy for us. You've got Demi Fables and Emma Barnes doing the skiing on the inside there of the blue boat, which is meltdown. Grace Savannah. Grace Savannah doing a great job. And then you've got the 1350 in the supernova machine. And then just behind them, very interesting, our race leader in F1 coming up to lap some of the other girls from F1. She's doing an absolutely sensational job, Maddie Boyer. Big Brent Wiseman all doing the driving, boat number seven there. Daniel Cotton doing the observing. The Atomic Showdown Machine, absolutely meticulously prepared boat. Trim lap, Danny, Danny Hood coming through there, number two. Then we've got the uh, Gen F2 Cyclone coming through there on the inside. The white boat, the yellow boat, Nellie McMillan. Boat number 110, still in second place in, uh, in F1. She's having a good, good run there. You just see her pull back on a rope there as she comes through. She's obviously starting to tire a little. And then you've got the 173 boat there from the United States. Boat 65, Rachel Stapleton doing a good job. Boat 177, also from the States. And you've got Amy Hockley there. And then the boat 377, Snappy 3. Carl Johnson, Ken Kramer, Sophia Rivera. It's a great shot as you see them all go up the back straight away, or the front straight away, leaving uh, Drifters Wharf heading back towards the southern end of the course. Here we have Speed Lab coming through. So as we mentioned before, five kilometre course, all the boats heading up that front straight away now to the, uh, the turn boy, which is about two and a half k's up, up the other end, <clears throat> to head back towards Drifter's Wharf and the, uh, the Brisbane Waters Park here at, at Gosford. We're just shy of the half an hour mark, and Troy, and this is where we were talking about before, you may see a charge from um, some of the boats that are in each other's washes. I believe um, Rachel Stapleton followed, following Nellie McMillan. 15 minutes left, we might see her make a move if she's got it in her. Yeah, also, not necessarily do they have to make too big a move, Mitch, because we spoke about the thousand point system. If they can just take a little bit of time out of it and get as, as close, they may only end up 10 or 15 points behind. Um, so anything can happen for the rest of the week. You can see great shot from our footage there. We've got five or six boats just about to come down the back straight. One, two, three, four, five. Very interesting. You can see one of them moving to the outside. Obviously, it must be a fair bit smoother out there. I'm going to say that they're, they're the two boats that have been lapping together all day, the uh, blackjack and the hijacked boat, the blackjack boat on the inside and the hijacked boat on the outside, and then that would be Matty Boyer on, on the extreme outside in the, uh, the atomic boat. I'm t taking it as a guess. <laughs> but yeah, I was right there, the blackjack and the hijacked boat coming down. You've got one of the, uh, the Belgian girls, Danny, Demi Fobles, Emma Barnes, having a ding-dong battle there. Half a rope length between them, and I was right there, Maddie Boyer, on the outside, having a dig, and she's going very, very well in her first race for this 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championship. Seems like Maddie's still got a, a pedal to the metal, and uh, may have opened up a little bit of a gap on, on Nelly there, but there is still 15 minutes plus one lap to go, plenty of time to go for these girls to lay down their challenge for the first race of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships, kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine. We'd like to thank our Mercury Marine dealers from all over Australia, Bayside, Bayside Marine, Brisbane Marine, TR Marine, Water Sports Marine and Race Marine from Victoria. We've got another big gaggle of boats coming near now. Emily Canning with the Prodigy. Is that the Prodigy? 377. No, sorry. Steve, uh, Amy Thropole. 
Amy Threlfall 373. I've been calling that boat a little bit wrong. Sorry, Stevie, my good mate there. Um, in your Danny Hood trim lab. She's back into it. She's up with the pack. Boat 177. They're having a great dig out there. Um, Amy, Amy Hockley behind Belligerent. There's one, two, three, four, five, six boats all together there. This is what this F2 class racing is all about. And then coming through, you've got the uh, Speed Lab with Molly Paulser doing a good job as well. Formula 2 racing, the boats are all very similar. The hulls are different, but the motors are all basically the same. And you can see that that's where we're getting the close racing from. Okay, coming down the back straightaway there, we got triple two, the kid stuff. Riley Jarvis, wild card, with, uh, had to uh, substitute the boat just before the start. Let's hope their, their boat can get up and going for the Monday's racing. She's doing a good job on top of the water. Very, very good job. Sixteen forty-eight, just going through there. Emma Tootenham from Victoria doing the skiing. She's doing a great job. Had, had a clean run. Have a look at this. We've got hijacked on the outside. They're making their run now. Well done, Emma Barnes, having a having a dig. She's having a massive crack. You got the Bernie Cow on the inside. Have a look at the way these boats are performing on the water. Hijacked. They've pulled that rope length that they were behind. Now now they're in front. And then you've got Maddie Boyer coming through the. Uh, so you. Currently, ladies and gentlemen, right there, you've got first place, Formula 2, and second place, and then also first place, Formula 1, open women's, leading the charge, Maddie Boyer out in front, doing a great job, rounding up the F2 boats. You've got Nellie McMillan on the outside here of, in the strike machine, the yellow boat. Then you've got boat number 40 there in the middle there, Cheryl Rustin doing a good job, Supernova, and uh, the meltdown machine with Grace Savona. On the outside, you've got the Merck Force machine, Rachel Stapleton, Kevin Boylan doing the observing with Jason Wormsley, the big F1X, beautiful looking boat, doing a great job. Cruising around for third place there. It's easy for me to say cruising. I reckon if uh, Rachel heard me say cruising, she'd probably want to punch me in the mouth. So we 34 minutes, we've got a, roughly 11 minutes plus one lap to go. Been very, very good racing on the water so far. We've seen the uh, Matty Boyer at the moment having a great run in the F1, and then obviously Nellie McMillan just behind her. And but in the F2 so far, we've been side by side. We've got the 1350 machine on the screen there, the uh, big V7 velocity with the QC4N 1350 Mercruiser package by Mercury Marine. Amy Hockley on the inside there, but the uh, big 21 GTR lap boat with a, another one of those 300R Mercury racing engines. 373, you've got Amy Threlfall coming through, Stevie Davis and his beautiful prepared 20-foot Nordic. Then we've got another one of the GTR lap boats, Darren Hitchcock doing the driving for Molly Paulser. And then we've got another one, 177, Snappy One, Julia Williams from the States coming through there. And then we've got our English competitor, boat number 200, Emily Canning doing a great job staying on top of the water. Danny Hood all the way from, not all the way from the Hawkesbury, local girl from the Hawkesbury, doing a great job. She's uh, just having a little bit of a stand up there and stretching it back. As you can imagine, 35 minutes out there on the water is not a very easy task. So we're just getting through there now. We've got some more boats coming down the back straight away looks to me to be, again, the hijacked machine on the inside, I think. 1648 up in front there. The hijacked machine, boat 25, then you've got 1648, boat 10. So we've got our leader of F2 coming down the back straight away, just on the inside. Then you've got our leader of F1 coming through there, boat number seven, Matty Boyer, doing a great job. We're, remembering we are commentating from live and also the screen, so we're jumping around a little bit. Boat number 222 coming through, Riley Jarvis. And then we've got our second place competitor in Formula 2 there, boat number 21 there, the blackjack machine. 
with Demi Fables from the United States. And we got sec second place in, uh, in Open Women, Nelly McMillan, boat number 110, coming through the big yellow strike machine. If you could just see on the screen there, Troy, Emma, ba Emma Barnes has pulled away from Blackjack on those last couple of laps. Yes, yeah, she has. It just goes to show, as we said, we get to about that 35 minute mark, the, uh, the stamina starts to kick in, the training starts to kick in, and also the six inches between your ears starts to kick in and goes, I've got this, I'm, I'm going to go a bit harder and uh, see whether I can break their backs. Here we have um, Rachel Stapleton, another local Hawkesbury girl, boat number 65, the Coldy Machine, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boylan doing the driving and observing, they're doing a great job getting around for third place in the Open Women's at the moment. Meltdown, also doing a great job, having, having a good run. Rachel Stapleton, yes, yeah, she returned this year. She's, she, uh, she's had five years off since she won a uh, Junior World Championship and uh, she's back this year having a good, good go. That's a big feat to tackle, yep. to take on the world titles of five years off racing, Troy. Cheryl Rustin there, boat number 40 coming through, skiing for America, she's doing a great job as well. It's great to see Mitch so far. I hate to put the mockers on anyone that we've only really had one incident on the water today and, uh, and that was only a small one. So it's really, really good to see. That's good. It looks like all boats will finish as we can see out there, Troy. 45 minutes can have, a lot can happen in 45 minutes. That's sure. right. 377 going through there. Sophia Rivera from the United States. She's having a good run as well. You've got Amy Hockley on the inside there, the belligerent boat, and then obviously Molly Pauls are behind the uh, Darren Hitchcock's 1997 uh, boat at Speed Lab. Down from Molly Powell's are coming across the line there. Well, the, the fatigue would be starting to set in now. The fatigue would be starting to set in. We've got 13.50 coming through. 3.73, Amy Throwfall from the United States. Boat 177 on the inside there. Julia Williams, also from the United States. They're, lap they're circulating well, lapping well. Good luck to them. Maddie Boyer, ladies and gentlemen, coming through. She's, uh, she's absolutely smoking on the outside. The showdown machine, boat number seven, leading our open women's current first place getter, representing Australia. We've got seven, probably 10 minutes with racing left, and uh, she's showing a clean pair of heels, as is boat number 25 in the middle there, hijacked. Jake Hinholzel, Sam Perry, Emma Barnes, representing Australia as well, leading the two current leaders of F1 and F2 out there. And here comes Nellie McMillan at second place in open women's and also our second place currently on the water, Demi Fables from Belgium. Boat 222 coming through there. You've got the, um, the blue kid stuff boat, Riley Jarvis circulating nicely after a little mishap with their, their original boat in the warm-up and uh, let's hope that they can get back on the water for next week. As we, as we run away, you can see the boats running up towards the, the southern turn. Absolutely great shot, shots there. Coming around the home turn, you can see, we can see live, for those of you who aren't watching it live, on, on the live screen. We've got Rachel Stapleton coming through in third place in the Open Women's and Supernova just on the inside there, just um, circulating nicely. They've had a very good race at Supernova. We've got the Meltdown Machine with Grace Savannah coming through representing Australia as well. She's had, had a good clean race and uh, congratulations to everyone out on the water there so far. We're 40 minutes and 25 seconds into the race, ladies and gentlemen, of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships, kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine. Got another one of the American boats, the 20 foot, actually that's a 21 foot cyclone, that one there. That's, uh, that's one of the snappy boats, that's the 377 snappy boat. You've got Carl Johnson, Ken Kramer, Sophia Rivera, representing the USA, they've had a good clean run. They'll be hoping to get around a couple more laps and then uh, have a good rest and uh, rest up for Monday's racing. Three more boats coming down the straightaway here. Cheryl Rustin on the outside representing America. 
And on the inside there, you've got um, Amy Hockley, wild card for Australia, and going through there, you've got Molly Paulzer representing Australia in the uh, Speed Lab machine. Then we've got Amy Throffel on the inside there, Stevie Davis, 373 Immaculate Boat. And then another one of the American boats coming through, another 20-foot Nordic boat. 20-foot Nordic boat. Then you've got Matty Boyer coming through, the current leader of uh, Open Women's, ladies and gentlemen. Matty Boyer, Brent Wisemantle, Daniel Cotton, the beautiful showdown machine, the Atomic, with the 1350 Mercury Marine, Mercruiser package. Then we've got our leader of Formula 2, doing a great job, Emma Barnes representing Australia, and then Nellie McMillan in uh, Open Women's second place, currently on the water, boat number 110, the big yellow strike machine, with Nellie McMillan there, punching her way through, having a good run. Well done to everyone out on the water. They've had a great run. We're 42 minutes in. I would say we've probably got two laps to go as the, the, uh, the blue flag will go on Maddie Boyer, who, who's halfway down the back straight away now. She'll come back round once more, then get another another lap. I would suggest 45 minutes is the, the time that we get the blue flag to go out. And uh, if she comes here before 45, she's got to do another two laps. If she comes after, she's got to do one only. And we've got the 1648 machine F2, Cameron Monaghan, Doug Perry, Emma Tudenham, another wild card entry from Australia, doing a great job there. Yeah, we just, it looks to me that's uh, Emily Canning, I believe, maybe. Or Cheryl yeah, Rustin. Yeah, Emily Canning or Cheryl Rustin. It looks, oh, it's not the hijack machine, is it? Or the blackjack. We've got triple two coming through there. That's a dodgy, yeah, dodgy spot, that corner there, Troy. That's the second, yeah. second skier, same spot. Rachel Stapleton coming through, third place in open women's. Yeah, it's the blackjack machine, 21, that's no good for them, the Belgian skier. She was coming in second place in the, in the Formula 2, so that's, that's a real bummer. She was having an absolutely cracking race until, until just now. Let's hope that everything's OK. She can get back out there and finish and still get some good, good points on the board for the rest of the week. As you can see there too, Troy, her ski is off. That's a much more timely exercise, getting back on the water. They seem to be getting moving. The ski's in the water, pulling the ski in the water now. She's swimming around, I believe she will finish to get those points on the board like we were speaking about before. We're 44 minutes in. Going through there, we've got one of the uh, snappy, snappy machines. Julia Williams or Sophia Rivera there representing America. Boat number 97, Speed Lab. Molly Paulder representing Australia, doing a good job. Yeah, 44, they're going to come, th come through, 44, 44, 20, 44, 22. Matty Boyer, ladies and gentlemen, leading your race, coming down the outside there. She's had an absolutely clean race. Brent, Brent Wise medal, Daniel Cotton, doing a great job. Now, two laps to go, I would suggest, as it's 44, 35 seconds. They'll have two laps to go until they take out first place and the gold medal for the first race of 2023 IWWF World Championships. You've got boat 177 there going through, Kyle Len Kylie Lankin, Julia Williams, and Nellie McMillan coming through in second place, 110. Then our leader of Formula 2 on the inside there, boat number 25, Emma Barnes. She's doing a great job behind the hijacked machine. And 13.50, boat number 6 coming through there as well. As the boats head up down the back course, we've been clocking for 45 minutes, 45 and a half minutes now. They've done a great job. Everyone on the water there out there today, 45 and a half minutes, only two little hiccups, but it's long and tiring out there. Let me tell you, not that I've ever been out there at school, it's long and, long and tiring out there just being a boat driver. And coming down, back down the back straight away now, just coming past the finish boat, we've got two, Two of the white boats. It looks as though the Belgian Belgian girl over on the far side, Demi, Demi Fobbles, is uh, is getting up. So that's good good on her. 
You've got 1648 on the inside there. Boat number 200, Emily Canning from the United, uh, sorry, from America. Boat number 1648 F2, Emma Tudenham, one of the wild cards from Australia. Then you've got the Supernova machine. There we go. She's up and going. Well done to Emmy Fobles, representing Belgium. She's up and going again. She'll be able to get some good points on the board. Well done to her. Coming down the back straight away. You can see on the extreme outside there, here's Merck Force coming through third place in, uh, in Open Women's. Coming down the back straight away now, you can see on the extreme outside, that's our current leader of Open Women's. Then you've got the F2 boat just in front there, Meltdown, with Grace Savona doing the skiing there. See the boat getting thrown around by the washers. Then you've got Nellie McMillan coming down behind um, behind Matty Boy, and it looks like she may have, may have caught up somewhat. A little bit. I believe so, Troy. She's not too far behind from compared to the last laps. There, no, that's right. Remembering um, you don't you don't necessarily it would be great to get the gold medal, but obviously if you uh Troy, we've got last lap flag for the boat showdown. One lap to go for the uh, for open women's, one lap to go for open women's boat showdown, boat number seven leading leading the way. Great job, Matty Boyer, Brett Wisemantle, Daniel Cotton team of showdown representing Australia. Then you've got Nellie McMillan coming through in second place, also in the open women's class. David McMillan, Braden Jamison, Nellie McMillan doing the skiing, the big yellow boat. On the inside there we've got the 373 Amy Threlfall representing Australia. And we've got the current leader of the Formula 2 coming through to get their last lap flag. Great job by them as well. Emma Barnes doing an absolutely sensational job, as is her crew. Jake Hinehosel and Sam Perry, the big 21-foot velocity, V7 velocity. You've got boat 177 representing America on the inside there. Kyle, Kyle Lankin, Mike King, Julia Williams, they're doing a great job as well. Had a good clean run. Everybody now on the course, one lap to go. Oh, everybody going down the back straight away, one lap to go anyway. And as they come round the big, the big white finish boat, everyone will get their one lap to go flag until the lead boats come through again and we will be able to know who our winners of the Open Women's and F2 Women's are for the first race of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. I've got to get... Okay, coming down the straightaway here, we have Demi Fables from Belgium on the inside. Great job, she's back up and going, that's great to see. Good job to her, she's going to get some good points. Boat number 1648 F2, boat number 10, Doug Perry, Ammon Tudenham, a wildcard entry from Australia. Then coming down the back straightaway, you've got Supernova, Kid Stuff, Supernova, Emma Williams doing the skiing. She's doing a great job. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just cast your eye to the uh, finish boat there and the finish straight away on, on the live feed. All these boats there now getting their last lap flag. And then very shortly you will see there's Rachel Stapleton coming through in third place in the open women's. But on the extreme outside, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together on the extreme outside for... Maddie Boyer from Victoria representing Australia. Maddie Boyer, Team Showdown. Maddie Boyer representing Australia. First place, ladies and gentlemen, in the Open Women's class. Great job to them. Big jump off the watch there. Brent Wisemantle, Daniel Cotton, Maddie Boyer doing the skiing. Very, very good job to them. First place representing Australia. Well done. And then you've got Nellie McMillan coming past to complete her race in second spot. That's a great effort by young Nellie. Dave McMillan. Braden Jamison doing the skiing. Boat number 110, they've, they've had a great run as well. Well done to those girls, guys and girls. Second place to Nellie, first place to Maddie. Very, very good job by them. On the inside there, you've got Amy Hockley going through to complete her last lap. 
boat number 17. On the inside, please get up as well. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Australia, Team Hijack, Jake Hinhosel, Sam Perry, Emma Barnes, going through to take out the win in the Formula 2 class. Congratulations to them. Great job. Then you've got Amy Threlfall, just, uh, just one, one lap down there, it's boat number 373. Good job by Stevie Davis and his crew. Well done to them. And you've got another one of the American boats coming through there. Snappy three. Snappy one, sorry. Kylie Lankin, Mike King, Julie Williams. Danny Hood completing her race as well. Well done to them. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So far, first place in... Uh, Open women's first place. You have Maddie Boyer representing Australia. Second place, Nellie McMillan representing Australia. And uh, we're, we're waiting to see who comes through in third place in the open women's. In second place, definitely second, sorry, first place, definitely in the Formula Two. We had Team Hijacked, Jake Hinners, Hosel, Sam Perry, Emma Barnes. And uh, unfortunately, Unable to pick up who came through in second. That could well have been. There we got Blackjack coming through there. Demi Fables from Belgium. She had a great run. Boat 1648 as well. Boat number 40, Team Mojo. Cheryl Rustin from the United States. Coming through to finish, Supernova, Team Speed Lab, both representing Australia. Supernova, good run by them. Scott Cleaver, Brad Roberts, and Emma Williams. Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, and Molly Pauls are there. Then we've got on the outside there, Emily Canning from the United States, Riley Jarvis up the middle. Boat number 377, Snappy 3, Sophia Rivera doing the skiing. We've got Rachel Stapleton coming through to take third place in the Open Women's. Great job to them. Then we've got uh, Meltdown F2, Anthony Savona, Jack Batty, Grace Savona. They're finishing off their race and they've had a good clean run. Well done to those guys and Grace as well. And then coming down to complete their last lap for the uh, first round of the 2W20, 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. Kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine. That's Amy Hockley from Brisbane, representing Australia in the wild card. got one of the uh, one of the boats on the extreme outside there obviously cho choosing that as the smoothest line that's Amy Threlfall there ladies and gentlemen all the way from the United States Stevie Davis Daryl Weatherford they've, they've had a good clean run boat 373 all the way from the United States, all good. So it looks to me, ladies and gentlemen, to be I think we may still have one skier out on the course. But there we have it, the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. First round for the women's, open women's and F2 women's. 45 minutes plus a lap has been run and won. In the open women's, Maddie Boyer, first place representing Australia. Nellie McMillan, second place representing Australia. Third place, Rachel Stapleton representing Australia. Good job by all those girls. And also in first place, you've got Team Hijacked. Team Hijacked. 
Jake Hinojosel, Sam Perry, Emma Barnes, first place in the F2. And I'm just waiting to hear from the, uh, from the judges for sec the second and third. Okay, coming back to the bank now, all the boats coming back to the bank, the white flag is up, everyone's done and dusted. First place in the Open Women's, Maddie Boyer, congratulations to her and her crew. And first place in F2 hijacked with Emma Barnes, congratulations to her and her crew, both representing Australia. That's a good start for everybody in the uh, Open, women's F Open Women's and F2 Women's, great job to them. No real hiccups on the day, a couple of little tiny falls, but everyone finished the race, which is great, and we can uh, move on forward, looking forward to Monday. I will remind everybody, please, in respect of <coughs> Remembrance Day, today being the 11th of November at 11am, we will have a minute's silence to respect those uh, fallen soldiers that have fought for our great country over the time. Well done to all the overseas competitors too. Congratulations to all of them. They've, they've had a great race. It's not easy to come from the other side of the world, bring your boat from the other side of the world, come around, ski for 45 minutes plus a lap and, uh, and, and get out there and finish and then um, and ha and have good results. They've, they've represented their country. They're representing their country very proud. Well done to them. Um, with a win and we've got a few more to go. So how did the team go? Awesome. What a team. <laughs> and beautiful boat, showdown. Amazing boat. Very lucky and privileged to be skiing behind this one. And it's got a Mercury 1350 in it. Is that right? I don't know. Ask them. <laughs> what do you do? Just hang on? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they run the race. Great to uh, have your first win and uh, yep, yep. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Ta. Okay, do you want to hit on Daniel? Hey Daniel, how was it out there, mate? Good, Tim. Thanks, mate. Yeah, no, it was pretty good conditions. I mean, it still got still got sloppy, but um, definitely not rough. If the wind gets up the Sava, it might get a lot rougher, but for us, it wasn't too bad. And uh, what sort of rope length were you running today? Uh, 247 feet or 75 metres. That's, that's the maximum you can have in World Championship racing. So I'm not exactly sure what we had on, but it would have been close to that. So that's a fairly long rope. And what, what sort of speed did you hit down the first straight? We actually just hit under a mile an hour, or maybe just over. So that, uh, that's 160 k's an hour. But yeah, down the first straight. Then after that, you, you're circulating at 75 miles an hour, which is you know 100 and, 120 to 140, I suppose. And uh, you were facing backwards, so uh, you had a good ride? Yeah, it was good. I'm, I'm normally skiing, Tim, as you know, so it's, uh, it's a little bit different to be in the observer seat, but I'm enjoying it. 
And how'd the driver go? How'd we go out there? Yeah, mate, it was uh, challenging water there in some parts, but um, we got off to a really good start, which always helps. And um, then we just had to nurse our little gap there towards the end because we knew strike was going to come at us. But um, yeah, Matt's dug deep and it's race one, mate. Still three to go. So that's a thousand points in your team? Yeah, mate, it's a thousand points, yep. That's right. So uh, congratulations on the whole team and uh, it's, it's great to have everybody here racing from all around the world. Yeah, mate, there's no other better racing. Thanks so much. Sorry to bombard you guys when you get back. Second place was this boat here. Strike. Hi, I'm standing here with Nellie McMillan, uh, second place in the uh, F1. How'd you go out there, Nellie? Ah, uh, yeah, really well. I think we actually really blended together really well as a team. I had heaps of fun. So, yeah. so you, it's a first time uh, you skied behind that boat. Um, second time. I've done 20 minutes behind it before, so that was the first time jumping off the deck and first time skiing behind it with that prop and that rope length. So it was a good learning experience. It was really good. So you settled in after the race got going. Yeah, definitely. I felt so comfortable the whole time. Um, got a little bit tired towards the end. I think it might have given Brett a fright on the last straight because I relaxed. But other than that, it was an awesome race. So who was in the boat uh, driving and observing? So my dad, David McMillan, he always drives for me. And um, Brett Armstrong was observing for me. The both two already world champions. So lots of experience. <laughs> so your dad's won a world championship before? Dad's won many before. but. I think his favourite one so far was with me in 2019, Last Worlds in Junior Girls. So you won the Junior Girls, now you stepped up into the uh, F1 class? Yeah, definitely. Massive jump because I'm, I'm only 19, so it comes straight from juniors, but I'm glad I'm getting to do it on my home turf. So. And uh, what sort of rope length were you using today? Uh, I think I was around the 240 mark, roundabout, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. What about the conditions? Which end of the course? It looked pretty good down this end for uh, after the uh, you know, 40 minute mark and all the boats were running around. How was it down the other end? Um, it was a little bit the same, a bit smoother down the other end. I think this is probably on the smoother side of what this course can get, but it was pretty good. It was fast. So you enjoyed it? I won't hold you up anymore because you're about to go jump in a... Ice bath, yep. Why, why are you getting in the ice bath? Um, for recovery, get rid of lactic acid on my legs just so I can be fresh for the next couple of races. Thanks, Nellie. Nellie McMillan, second place. Hi, I'm standing here with Rachel Stapleton. Uh, Rachel, what was the conditions like out there? 
They were good. It was bumpy. It got bumpy around a lot of boat wash and ducking and weaving through in and out of other boats, but it was so good. So uh, you enjoyed it? Yeah, I did. It was good. Yeah, it's always good here at Gosford. And this this is your boat here, this beautiful blue boat called Coldies? Yeah, that's the one. Coldies G1 this time. <laughs> what about your driver? So Jason Wormsley is driving for me, I'm a long time family friend and Boilo who's observed for me in the junior world, it's Kevin Boylan is observing for me this time around. It's great to, they're all uh, world champions in that boat and yourself. Yeah, we've all kind of been pulled out of retirement I guess and coming back this year and yeah, it's been good. So uh, congratulations on your third place. Thank you. Rachel. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next is Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Call the For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll 
choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Hi, I'm standing here with Emma Barnes. Um, Emma, tell us about your race. Um, the race was really good. It got off to a pretty quick start. I was like, oh my God. And then probably halfway through, we all sort of just settled in. Yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> so you knew where you were all the time in the, uh, during the race? Yeah, I had all the girls alongside me. So I knew um, where everybody was at the time, yeah. So uh, first place, who's, uh, who's your driver? Uh, my driver's Jake Hinehosel and my observer is Sam Perry. A great team. So, uh, and congratulations on your first place. 1,000 points yeah. in the bucket, ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are you going to do after this? Um, I'm probably going to jump in the ice bath for a couple of minutes. And then later on tonight, I'll go for a swim and then a bit of a sauna. So why get in an ice bath when you've been in the cold water out there? Um, just helps with a bit of recovery for muscles. And then, yeah, once I get out of the ice bath, I'll get moving and then it'll just, yeah. Recovery. I can see that you're holding your rope here. It's, um, you know, how long's your rope? My uh, rope is 190 foot. Don't tell the opposition that, will you? No, <laughs> keep that one to yourself. <laughs> okay, now also on the ground here is some markings and a tape measure. And uh, one of the guys is just rolling up the rope there from a previous check. And we've got an official here ticking everybody off. So uh, how did you go? Did yours pass? Yeah, mine was all good, yep. <laughs> Thanks so much, Emma. Go get in the bath. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen on uh, live, if we can just have everybody's attention please, today is Remembrance Day, being the 11th day of the 11th month. We would like to uh, thank and welcome on board our official charity partner, Legacy, the Brisbane Water Chapter. Thank you very much to them. Thank you very much to Peter Lawley for his support, who is also head of the uh, Central Coast Gosford branch of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so I will just be reading out a short phrase in remembrance of those fallen to honour them on Remembrance Day at 11 o'clock at 11 a.m. So I will do this and then we'll reach into one minute silence. So at 11 a.m. on November 11, 1918, the guns on the Western Front fell silent after more than four years of continuous warf warfare in World War I. The Germans called for an armistice in order to secure a peace settlement. They accept accepted the Allied terms of unconditional surrender. The conflict had mobilised over 70 million people, left between 9 and 13 million people dead 
and as many as one third of these with no grave. The eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month we use to honour the memory of those who died in not only in World War I, but indeed the loss of Australian lives from all wars and conflict. We will remember them lest we forget. We'll have a minute's silence, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, lest we forget.
Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next one, she's out. Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Off the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She's 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
We're here today with uh, Patrick Valancourt competing in junior boys, who uh, he's also had his trainer show up, Steve Commando Willis. Um, we, we've seen him before on TV many times from The Biggest Loser. Um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's, how he's been helping uh, Pat with his training. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Pat's been training with me for, uh, what, just over a year now? Yeah, a year and a bit. And, um, you know, he's young. He's only 15. So, you know, there's there's all of that, you know, being a teenager and growing up, growing into, you know, he's almost, what, he's six foot now, just over, um, and finding his feet in that manner. You know, he's been skiing for a long time, but just working on that base, that general physical, you know, fitness, that capacity to be able to just, you know, handle those time domains, you know, the endurance. and. For anyone that really doesn't understand it, it's it's like doing a static hold for for a long period of yeah. time, and you know the the power these boats can um, produce and the wake and all that other type of stuff, trying to combat that and trying to stay centered. So you know, the focus really, the training really uh, revolves around that. Sure, sure. And uh, how long have you been? You said you've been training for roughly a year or so. You said before. Yeah, yeah. How how has he progressed through that year from where he started up until you know around about now? Yeah, well, it's really learning the, the ropes and just understanding, you know, the basics, you know, in the gym and the understanding of that and how that complements what he does, you know, out on the water. Um, at the start, it was, you know, just just understanding that. And um, but he's a quick learner, you know, he picks things up. And I think to his credit, he's quite centered and um, and focused and doesn't get too concerned about what other people are doing, which, um, you know, at his age, is, is really good because that's what's needed really. Physic, physicality obviously matters a lot from what you're saying, you know, there's a, a mentality to it as well. Um, the half an hour race that he's doing can take a lot out of you. Mm. What would you see him doing after, you know, re recovery? Well, the recovery side of things, you know, being at the uh, the end of that rope for a long period of time in that position, he needs to just flush that body out. So, you know, go for a bit of a light jog, which, you know, he loves running, so why not? And then um, do some contrasting some hot and cold or cold and hot, so in and out of the ice bath, you know, just kind of get that pump, you know, flush out that lactic acid and just help that body recover for uh, his following races. Good to know. Paddy, I've had a quick look around. I can't see a better trainer here. <laughs> well, what's What's been your favourite part working with Steve? Uh, you know, just like his knowledge and everything. He knows what, what I'm doing wrong and how to fix it, how to perfect everything. So it's good, yeah.
Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next one, she's out. Look at me, where she's gonna be. Call me Vicky T. Call the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She's 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next question is, Look at me, where she's gonna be. Call me Vicky T. Call the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Oh, the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla baby, I'll choke you but I ain't no killer baby. She 28 telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is... The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Mitch, here we are looking for the juniors race, first race of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. Welcome back to the CCP. Um, so we have some unofficial results for the women's race before we get into the juniors race. In the, the women's, in women's Open, we had first place Madison Boyer behind Showdown, 1,000 points representing Australia. Congratulations to Madison and her team of Brent Wiseman and Daniel Cotton in the boat showdown. In second place, we had Nellie McMillan with Strike F1 with uh, her team showdown also representing... Sorry, her team Strike F1, I did say that, um, also representing Australia. So she 994 points, so the 1,000 points and 994 points, very, very close. And then we have, obviously, Maddie... Uh, sorry, Rachel Stapleton in third place, Number 65, Coldy's F1, Jason Wormsley and Kevin Boylan in the boat, 937 points. The one that we didn't know because there was a bit going on in the f Formula 2, well, we now have hijacked Emma Barnes representing Australia. Congratulations to her and her team. Well done. 1,000 points. In second place, Molly Polzo was going around behind Speed Lab. Great effort. 
Molly Pauls are also representing Australia in uh, in second place, 958 points. And in third place, she was circulating very, very well. Had a really good, clean race. Sophia Rivera, all the way from the US of A. So that's great for her coming from the US of A. 953 points. Very, very close racing. And in fourth place, Demi Foblitz, all the way from Belgium, 916 points after coming for second for most of the race. So there, there's the unofficial results for the women's first, second and third. Congratulations to all. They had some really good races and um, we're now moving towards the juniors race. We're waiting on the 15-minute warning that we will get, but congratulations to all and everybody else that, that's just arrived here at beautiful Goston on the central coast of New South Wales, Brisbane Waters. Welcome to Australia and welcome to everybody that's viewing our live feed through the world. <clears throat> Let's just talk a little bit about Junior's Troy. Troy, uh, Junior's is up to 18 years old. There's a couple of, there's a bit of a, I think it's a buffer between June to July. There's a, a deadline you have to meet with your with your birthday. The youngest I've got on my stats is Patrick Valancourt, only 15 years old. So if, if Worlds comes in, um, you know, in the next two or three years, it usually happens every two years, he might get one more stab at, at Junior's as well. He should just be shy of 18 years old. <coughs> um... A lot of these, a lot of these kids are running around on the Maha Gen Twos, like um, just like they did in in the women's races. Um, there's a mixture of DC boots and wedges boots. Um, we've got a lot of these kids in this in these races. They've they've got more than five years racing under their belt already. For, you know, for how young they are, it's pretty incredible. Um, we've got Charlie Walsh, 11 years um, he's been racing for, and he's only 16 years old. Yeah, he's been around for a long time. What's interesting, we should note too, Mitch, in, uh, the, a few years ago, the, the world body decided that in the junior racing, they would use only the Formula 2 boats. So it, it's very interesting to see here, and it, it will basically come down to uh, the, the ability of the skiers, as the boats are all very, very similar. We saw it in the Formula 2 race in the women's. Um, they're all outboards. They're all 21 foot or thereabouts, 20, 21 maybe 22 feet. Um, they all run outboard motors. That It's going to be very, very, very close. You've got a mixture. You've got Meltdown out F2 with Frank Meersman, Nico de Stupin, Elias Meersman, all the way from Belgium, which is a, uh, a force boat with a Mercury 300 uh, racing package. You've got Epic, Boat 77 with David, M David McMillan, Daniel Graziano, Zach Armstrong, again, representing Australia, it's another force boat. Excalibur, number 11, Scott Osmond, Darren Linsell, Dylan Osmond. That's one of those F, uh, sorry, the GTR Lab Sport, the big green one. It's a beautiful boat, that one. And then you've got Predator, the big orange Bernico, Greg Dutton, Jordan Smith and Amos Rituki. Predator, New Zealand. Predator there, Troy. I watched Amos Rituki. Um, he competed in the New Zealand Bridge to Bridge only a number of weeks ago. I think he's going to be one to watch in this race. You know, that's that's very interesting, and like, like I say, it's it's very good to see. Like we've got Belgium, Australia, New Zealand, USA, and Great Britain all represented here in this junior junior boys race. There's 11 boats in the junior boys and six in the junior girls, so 17 boats going around together. It's going to keep us very busy. Uh, we're learning on the run, and uh, everything's going quite well here at Gosford for everybody. Um, and then we've got Snappy One all the way from the states with Kyle Lancon. Mike King and Gage Goldsmith. Gage Goldsmith being the uh, the son of and grandson of a very legendary family in the Goldsmith family. Uh, they've been around ski racing for a long, long time. Carl Goldsmith used to ski back in the 2000s and was very, very competitive at the world level. We're just going to throw over to Connor with Samara Ross from the Women's F1 Scheme by Hi, guys. We're in the pits here today. Um, Connor Lindsell here. Um, and I found Samara Ross. <laughs> How's Samara? How are you doing? I'm good. Samara just competed in the um, F1 Women's class today. But you didn't actually do your selection races with the F1 um, division. No, I did my selection race behind an F2 boat, behind my dad's boat, so very last minute choice. <laughs> yes, so we had Holly behind Mirror Image um, pull out. I don't actually know the reason, but um, it's all good because we've got Samara 
as our ring-in. But that was only three weeks of notice that you had. How did that um, affect your training? Were you fit to, going into it? Were you still training after your selection um, or were you having some time off? Sort of, are we coming off the couch here or we, were we ready? We were hoping for that, that call up. We were literally coming straight off the couch. There was not a lot of training involved, but as soon as I yeah, got that call up, I yeah, got onto the water as soon as I could and tried to train as hard as I could in that three weeks notice. And yeah, I was lucky to have Jack behind an F1 boat as well, really helping me throughout that. So Jack Coldy, your boyfriend, is in the F1 men's division, that's right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so how did um, how was his help beneficial in your, your rush um, to the Worlds? Very grateful, like he's helping me, he would always drive the boat for me, so whenever we could get out on the water, straight away he yeah, got me straight on the water training. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So um, I, I believe you're very heavily into CrossFit. How does that training in CrossFit um, transfer over into your skiing skills? So it obviously helps with that strength side of skiing, ploughing through those waves. So yeah, that I was still doing CrossFit after selections, but not a lot of on-water training. So yeah, that CrossFit has helped a lot. Yeah, there's a little bit, there's as well as strength, a bit of endurance in there yeah. too. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so what boat were you behind today? I was behind 1350, so. Brand new purchase? Yes, very fresh. <laughs> How was that to run behind today? I know you spend most of your time running behind F2 boats. Yeah. How was the step up to a big 1350? I was a little bit scared, but it was like a magic carpet ride. I love it and don't think I want to go back to an F2 boat. <laughs> I've got to say you did very well out today, especially on three weeks notice. I believe your shirts only got made last night or was it two days ago? Literally last night, design was two days ago and then last night all the shirts were made and at home on the lounge. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll head back to you guys now. Thank you. Yeah, g'day guys. Here we have the uh, polls for the upcoming juniors race. In grid one, pole one, we have Predator representing New Zealand, Greg Dutton, Jordan Smith, Amos Rituki. It's one of those beautiful big Bernicos, big orange boat. Snappy 177 is grid one, pole two, all the way from America, 177. Kylie, Kyle Lankin, Mike King, Gage Goldsmith. <coughs> pole one, grid, grid one, pole three, the Prodigy. Damien Hopkins, Simon Smith, Sam Hopkins, all the way from Great Britain. Welcome to those guys and good luck. Meltdown, grid one, pole four. <coughs> Meltdown F2, Frank Mearsman, Nico de Stoop, Elias Mearsman from Belgium. Very interesting to note there in the first grid, Mitch, that every single person in the, in the first grid is a, is a foreigner. Uh, other, sorry, other than Kobe Cartledge in, uh, in uh, grid one, pole five. Sorry, my bad. Uh, Darren Hitchcock, Jason Cartledge and Cody, Cody Cartledge. Jason Cartledge also a very, very accomplished skier back in the day. So as we keep saying, very, very family sport. And you've got Snappy 377, Carl Johnson, Pat Frasca, and Ryder Tovert from the US of A as well. Then we move into grid two, pole one, enough said. Darren, Kirk, enough said, Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, Cody Kirkland all the way from Great Britain. Um, Epic, t Grid 1, Pole 2, Epic. Dave McMillan, Daniel Graziano, Zach Armstrong. Grid 2, Pole 3, Trim Lab, Aaron Sheath, Troy Hood, Charlie Walsh from Australia. Grid 2, Pole 4, Excalibur. Scott Osmond, Darren Linsell, Dylan Osmond. Grid 2, Pole 5, Team 26, Brandon Cropper, Danny Cropper, Patrick Valencourt in the wild card. Grid 2, Pole 6, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey, Jack, Jock Casey, Wild card there. Then we've got grid three, Bernico Racing. Gene Hollands, Jeff Week, Ellison Hollands, all the way from New Zealand. Grid three, pole two, Grow Up F2, Alex Hanley, Ryan Widgeway, Leilani Cartledge. Grid three, pole four, Kid Stuff, Jason Walsh, Ben Rogers, Kiana Walsh. Grid three, pole five, Alan Ross, Josh Moxon, Charlotte Neal. And to round out the field, grid three, pole six, Temper F2, Dave Coldrake, 
Nathan Goodall and Demi Simmons also racing for the wild card. So we're still waiting. Boats are mingling around in the start area. We're still waiting for the... Okay, we can throw... The, that's fine. We've, uh, we've just got Connor down on the wharf. We'll, we'll go ahead over to you, Connor. What can you see out there, mate? PG, it's all right. Maybe MMA. <laughs> Not long now, the boats are starting to mill out the front. You can see there, Troy. Um, half an hour uh, half an hour plus a lap for these guys, 15 minutes shorter than the last race. It's a bit more of a sprint. It is, it is a bit. <laughs> okay, we'll just cross to Connor over on the wharf and get some information on what's going on down, down in the start line. Hi guys, Colin back here. We're on the near the start area on the rock wall with all the audience here. Say hello, guys. All right, we're just going to go through a start breakdown while we can see some of our um, junior boys and girls out there on the on the course there in the start area. So what happens with our starts? For those who don't know, we have two flags go down. We have a um, boxing kangaroo, which is the first flag that goes down. That signals the skiers to jump in the water, and then they run out. The boats will run out the rope, get the um. They'll line up, line up the first straight there. We're, we generally have about, in this race, we have five boats wide. We could have a little bit more in other races, depending on where we are. But they'll line up and they wait for the um, Australian flag to drop. And then it's we're off to the races there. From there, they'll head down the um, two kilometre straight, I believe. And they'll go around and do um, 30 minutes for the day. Uh, out there, we've got a good couple competitors there. Um, some strong um, junior boys with... Uh, Top competitor was uh, Cody Cartledge out there with Speed Lab. Definitely the hot favourite for today. But we've also got some internationals, you know, um, hitting the mix with the Australian boys there. But it'll be awesome to see. These boats will be tapped out pretty much from start to finish. Um, we have pretty calm conditions on the water here today. So nothing too much to slow them down. Um, but it will be interesting to see how they deal with the boat chop there. So um, as we look on, we can see a couple boats yeah, out I've there. Yeah, I've been hot spotting. Um, We've got Excalibur, that's our green lab. Our labs have sort of been dominating the field currently today. The labs are, they've recently come out with their new V-bottom um, v hulls. They're, those boats are going in excess of 85 mile an hour but, or 150 kilometres an hour. But uh, that's here from the start area, guys. Back to you. Okay, we're just uh, just waiting to hear about the 15 minutes to start. Okay, guys, we've just got uh, Brad Dutton, New Zealand team captain, come into this central commentary position. Welcome, mate. And uh, I'll ask you just a couple of questions about your New Zealand representatives you've got in this juniors race. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the welcome, Troy, and uh, good to be here. Um, yeah, we've got two young kids in this, uh, in this race. Um, Amos Ratuki, um, both Amos and Alison Hollands, our junior girls, uh, competed at both actually... Uh, extremely young uh, juniors, they're only 13 years old, so uh, um, yeah, their first time and they actually both can go to another couple of worlds after this, so mainly an experience thing for them, but um, both of them have been going really good at home and uh, yeah, it be interesting to see how they, uh, how they go out there today. And how do you think the conditions differ to here, in, uh, here at Gosford to what you're used to racing in New Zealand? Yeah, we, we mainly do a lot of lake racing in, in New Zealand. Uh, we a couple of times a year go into the ocean. So, um, yeah, this obviously we had the Worlds of a couple of years, or back in 2015 in Wellington, which is the main saltwater venue we go to. And, um, yeah, that race day there was a couple of, or those, that week long we had a fair bit of rough water. Um, 
But uh, yeah, we, we do get the odd day like this, but uh, yeah, we, I guess our guys have definitely been training thinking it was probably going to be a bit, little bit rougher than what we've got today, but we also know once those F1 boats go around for a few laps, uh, you know, that changes the game as far as uh, how rough it gets and how, how much harder it is for those skiers. Doesn't it? What? And uh, we, we keep, keep coming back to this point, but it's a very major point about ski racing being, being a family sport, mate. Here you are part, sitting with me being the team captain for New Zealand and um, your old man's out there driving the boat for yeah, yes. one of the junior boys. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So um, first time for me being team captain because the old man's been, uh, been doing it for the last 20 years. Um, his first Worlds that he went to uh, was the Sydney Worlds in 97 as a competitor and I skied in 2003 and, uh, and, then, uh, and he was team captain from that year to, to this. So um, yeah, bit of a role reversal this weekend. I'm not on the boat and he's, uh, he's driving. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to Tao and Amos. They've been doing a whole lot of training before this uh, event in the lead up. And um, yeah, just interested to see how we go. We came over to the selection race here at Gosford and um, that was you know, Amos's first international experience. So yeah, good to get him out and about and uh, yeah, I'm sure it will go well. Very good, mate. You, you go back to your dad in 97 in Australia here and then um, a new in, in 2003. I, uh, I wouldn't have guessed that it was 20 years that we knew each other, but um, yeah, obviously yeah. That's, that's when we met in, in, uh, in 2003 in Long Beach and then you go to 97 and you'll go back to, uh, I guess, we we'll talk about family and uh, my wife actually won yeah, a, absolutely. a junior girl with her, with her father observing yep. and another legendary ski racing family, the Campbells, had their boat there. That, that year for Anders Skivlein, so it's uh, for those people all around the world and watching today, it is a very, very big family sport and, uh, and quite a good sport to get into. Absolutely, my uh, yeah, dad went over in 97, told my cousin Jared, uh, he got uh, managed to get a third in one of the juniors races, obviously back those days it was um, Robbie Penny and Luke Wakem with the junior boys and yeah, Anne, Anne and um, and then obviously Wayne Moyer, that was pretty famous worlds obviously with Wayne Moyer just dominating in the, in the men's F1. Um, obviously back in the days prior to uh, Formula 2 even coming about, you know, so. And then yeah, those 03 worlds in Long Beach, that was the first, first uh, time we saw the Formula 2 category and, and it's just grown and grown since then and obviously now even our juniors are running, uh, running behind those F2 boats. Uh, so back in the day it used to be um, the open boats that used to tow the juniors. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and whilst you touch on that, let's talk a little bit about that with you being very, very knowledgeable as far as the technical side of it. We've got minute 55 to start. We said we've got the two flags up and over the boat, so we've got a minute 55. So I'll, I'll, we'll get into that whilst we're, whilst we're talking about the race, Brad. But how, how do you see this race panning out? Yeah, obviously, um, you're, from what I saw of the selection results and stuff, the, the um, junior boys, although Cody Cartledge dominated uh, most of the races, they were pretty closely packed together. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm expecting some of those boys from the second grid. Um, uh, main, you know, obviously, mainly the first grid is all the international competitors, and then there are a lot of the Australians on that second grid of boys. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, we'll have to keep an eye on the 30-second thing between the two, uh, you know, with the two grids. And then obviously onto the junior girls, the one grid of junior girls, the five Australians and then Alison Hollands from New Zealand. Um, both the Kiwis are in pole one, which um, I was pretty stoked as my first team captain to get two poles for this race. Um, so uh, yeah, I th I'm sure those Aussies will be uh, all of them, all, f all six boys and, uh, and the five girls out there. They were all um, pretty competitive with each other. Um, obviously in the girls, it was Leilani Cartledge who dominated the um, the juniors, junior girls section, um, but there was, you know, some competition from those uh, other other girls. Um, we got uh, Charlotte Neal and Kiana Walsh, um, Demi Simmons. So we're now uh, within 30 seconds to the start. 30 seconds to the start. The, the boats would be running their ropes out now. If you look over there, there you can see them coming around the point. You see the blue boat with the two flag, one flag in the air now, and they're just waiting to start. Very good, uh, very good push up there by Speed Lab. It looks, and it, oh no, it doesn't look like there's been a good thing for the New Zealand boat there, Brad. Yeah, he's they're, they're turning sideways. around slightly. I oh, know they're straightening up now, so. And away they go. Good, good clean start for everybody. Let's go, Team New Zealand, Predator. Good clean start from that, the one down the outside. 
Look at these shots here, Troy. The uh, five boats away, um, all off to, you know, the boats are trimmed up and out of the blocks hard right from the start. Unfortunately, you're back. Boys from New Zealand, they look like your dad's turning around there, mate. That, that's no good. And here we have the second grid away there up and racing. Off they go. Another good clean start as well. Great job by all the kids to get up and up and about. Away they go. And an epic F2. Great start. And I can't see the other one over across beside it because it's in, in his rooster tail. And you got Excalibur there. And then the big, big Atomic. Yeah, so that's uh, the Atomic, which is towing the um, the British boy there. Uh, uh, where am I looking? Team 26. Two, yeah. Um, I'm looking at the wrong list here. Okay. Well, then we got the girls up and away, up and about. All the girls are up and about. So yeah, looks like uh, Leilani Cartledge, uh, Kiana Walsh there behind Kid Stuff. Sure. New Zealand. Yeah, so all six boats away, and the girls there, Alison Holland's there on the inside behind Bernico Racing. She's uh, managed to get away. So we see uh, the boats coming down that first uh, first straight to complete the first lap. Got uh, three wide by the looks, four wide. Okay, we'll just go to Connell Insel on the bank there. Got some information for us. Hi, guys, we're on the the, um, the end of the first lap here on the bottom turn. We will have all our f first of our junior boys coming in just past uh, the finished boat here and they'll come into this corner absolutely screaming, screaming into their second lap, all right? Bit, a bit hairy this corner can be. We've got the start rollers. They roll through into this corner so boats have to be, the drivers have to be wary not to go too fast through these first rollers but we'll cut straight over here here comes Cody Cartledge absolutely screaming through his first lap speed lap right there followed closely by can't name the name 17 boat 177 also the sister boat 170 377 here comes kid stuff or oh, actually sorry meltdown f2 coming in the first lap here along with prodigy 200 yeah, so Cody, Cody. As you can see, some of the boats they're having to slow down a lot for those start rollers. It's, it gets real rough and real dicey before the waves get to set, settle in. All right, so I'll throw back back to the commentary bus. Here we got the second second grid of F2. So you got uh, Epic Racing on the inside, and that's the uh, uh, Armstrong Zach Armstrong uh, Excalibur there, Team 26. So all the Australian uh, skiers, Dragon and Trim Lab. So. All the Australian boys, uh, bar Cody Cartledge. So we see a big lift off in the inside lane there of hitting those rollers coming out of the corner. Uh, and then we've got the uh, Atomic there coming through uh, with Tim, Team Great Britain. You've got Jock Casey there with the Dragon coming through, Sam, Sam Hopkins. And these girls are hot on the, hot on the case of uh, the back of the uh, second boys grid. So this is Grow Up with Leilani Cartledge from Australia. Uh, Cosmos there and Kid Stuff, so they're sort of three wide going into this bottom turn, uh, followed by the Temper, uh, that's Demi Simmons, and then back on the inside it's the uh, Flamin' F2. Uh, Flamin' F2, Alan Ross, Josh Moxon and Charlotte Neal. Charlotte Neal doing a great job, everyone up and about. Your man from New Zealand, he's up at about two now, Brad. Yeah, Amos will be really upset with that start, but it'll probably uh, give him a lot of uh, a lot of aggression in the back of his mind. He's caught up to uh, Ali Simmons, uh, sorry, Ali Allison Hollins, um, and uh, he's got round here, and they'll be uh, on the hard charge to try and make up plenty of ground. Yeah, so we we're, were about to touch on it before. Let's just go talk about the, the F2 boats and uh, and the difference, and also obviously I think since the addition of the F2 boats to the World Championships has enabled you guys from New Zealand because you've got more outboards over there than you do have, have the inboard boats. Yeah, absolutely. In New Zealand we don't have a heap of open boats, uh, so um, it's definitely more st our style of racing and what our skiers are competitive is competitive with. Um, since F2's come about, we, yeah, we've had a lot more skiers at the, at the World Champs as we see the lead two boats and junior boys come through. So it's basically them side by side. We've got uh, on the inside Gage Goldsmith. Uh, Gage Goldsmith from USA and on the outside behind the Speed Lab machine Johnny is, is uh, Cody Cartledge, isn't it? Cody Cartledge. 
Oh, sorry, Trim yeah. Lab. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Oh, Trim Lab or Speed Lab? Labs. Speed Lab. So yeah, Speed Lab. So that's Cody Cartledge. Cartledge leading the charge. So he's he's your number one so far with uh, USA in second, and USA also sitting in third with Ryder Tovat. A good effort for them guys coming all, all the way from overseas. Uh, next boat there coming through is the uh, the 200 there, the Prodigy. So that's um, uh, young Sam Hopkins. From the, from the Great Britain, great to see them there. Also Team Meltdown there, the Belgian skier Elias Meersman. And uh, they're already getting caught by uh, the hard charges on that second grid, which is Excalibur uh, with Dylan Osman from Australia. Uh, and the Team 26 there, Patrick Valencourt. And also Zach Armstrong sneaking up the inside. If I know David Millen, he'll be sneaking up the inside all day. Totally different tactics to when he used, used the, out, the inboard in the uh, women's open race. But um, using the inside, if your ski is up to it, it's, it's the shortest way home, especially when your boats are all very similar in speed, Brad. Absolutely, a different, huge, huge. If, whoa, we've got a big lift time lift off by uh, there, Jason Walsh and the kid stuff there, hitting a bit of a, a rogue wake, um, jumping the boat out of the water as they turn, coming to this bottom turn. Uh, it was the. Um, Leilani Cartledge coming through there behind Grow Up, driven by Alex Hanley. Um, so they're the leaders in your girls' division. Um, but closely, we, there's another couple of boats there hot on their heels. So Australia 1, 2 and 3 at the moment in the junior girls. Um, and the junior boys is led by Australia with USA in second and third. Yeah, at the, at the moment, and then we'll, uh, we'll see how it pans out. As, as we say, we're, we're, it's only seven minutes in the race. It's 30 minutes plus one lap, so probably 30 between 33 and 35 minutes. I can do. I can do. Yeah. I'll, I'll need a bail out as soon as it's done. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, Next boat coming across the line is uh, young Ali Hollands from Team New Zealand behind Bernard K. Racing, driven by her dad, Gene Hollands, and uh, Jeff Week in the observer seat. Great job by Ali coming around there to complete another lap. And we've got our uh, lead boats coming down once again. It looks as though um, we've got Team 26 there doing a great job, and Excalibur. Have we lost the, uh, have we lost the Epic? And Epic, our Epic's right there, Epic is there, and then Team 26, and then the Excalibur. These guys are having a great battle between the three of them, so uh, they're the hard chargers on that second grid, trying to make up ground on uh, Cody Cartledge and the two Americans on the first grid. Yeah, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to keep an eye on that 30 seconds there, Brad. Yeah, Obviously, absolutely. you got Zach Armstrong doing a great job there, and then um, Excalibur. So there's the trim lab going through. With uh, On the outside, we've got uh, the for Team Great Britain, and then the Belgian skier, um, Elias Meersman, uh, driven by his dad, Frank, and then the Dragon on the inside. So that second grid of, has basically eaten up all the uh, all the boats on the first grid bar Cody Cartledge, our race leader. Coming through now with the girls' lead boat, and the girls is Leilani Cartledge for Team Australia. So Leilani showing the... Uh, Girls, what the pace is, but she's only a rope length in front of the team of uh, Cosmos, which is uh, Tiana Lailua. Sorry, how do you say that? So Tiana Layla. Layla, sorry. With Braden Jamison observing, Cameron McKenzie doing the driving. They're having a great race there. Well, Braden's uh, on a busy schedule, just jumped out of the boat with Natalie McMillan, our uh, second place getter this morning, and uh, back out doing double duty as we see the temper coming through, driven by Dave Coldrake. Nathan Goodall in the observer seat, Demi Simmons uh, skiing. I actually gave you some false info there, Brad. Uh, sorry, was that my fault this morning. It wasn't Braden in the boat with Nelly, it was actually Brett Armstrong. Oh, was it? Okay. No worries. Here we've we got the uh, speed lab again, still in front, out of the uh, the first grid there. He's uh, not, not got it all on his own, though, so that inside boat is the second place, and the American uh, Gage Goldsmith is really taking it to Cody Carledge. Yeah, he certainly is, and, uh, and the boat's going good. There's your 
New Zealand boy going along there. Yeah, so Predator there with Amos Ratuki. So he's he's come he's been down a lap unfortunately, but uh, he'll be wanting to try and stick with the pace of these lead boats. So we then see the uh, three seven three is it? Yeah, right right at Tovet from the USA doing a great job, starting to uh, back off a little bit. But as it, as we get into the race, the water gets rougher. 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big effort out there for these young kids. He's probably still uh, third boat on course, uh, or sorry, in the race, but uh, the epic coming down here with Zach Armstrong is that lead boat from the second grid. So we need to start watching uh, the gap closing between young Zach Armstrong and uh, in the third place boat there, the American Ryder Tovat. Uh, then we've got this gaggle of boats here, uh, the Excalibur. So, so that's uh, Osman Team 26, uh, which is Valencourt for Australia, and then the Trim Lab there with uh, uh, Trim Lab is uh, Jarley Walsh. So those boys are um, they're definitely on for a podium spot because they're starting to close down the the uh, second and third boats on that uh, on that first grid. The Dragon coming through now. That's young uh, Jock Casey, wildcard for Team Australia. And then again, our uh, formula, uh, sorry, our boat 200, which is the prodigy, with uh, young Sam Hopkins from Great Britain. And then team meltdown coming out down here from uh, Belgium, Frank Meersman, Nico de Stoop, Elias Meersman, doing a great job. Um, we discussed the water conditions here, very smooth. The Belgians um, are used to it a lot rougher. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Canal, races. canal racing and vessel and, uh, you know, all, all over Europe, really, most of their racing is concrete walls and the water slapping back into the uh, paths uh, of, uh, of these boats. So uh, the, the Belgians definitely would be looking for it to be the rougher, the better, really, as we see... Uh, on the screen here, we've got the Speed Lab on the outside still, still leading the race, and it, it looks as though... We may have uh, lost his little mate on the inside, Gage Goldsmith. I can't see him there, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah it looks like we've got a uh, change. Well, yeah, change at the front there. It definitely looks like it's roughed up in that last lap. The boats aren't coming down this straight with as much trim. So that is the uh, the speed lab there going through with uh, Cody, Cartledge. Cody Cartledge, Darren Hitchcock driving, and uh, Cody's dad, um, Jason, observing. Yeah, we've we've, uh, we've definitely lost Gage Goldsmith, which is no good. Let's hope everything's A-OK -OK down there. And we've got the Flamin' F2 coming through. So in the boys, that'll put uh, young uh, Ryder Tovat from the US. He'll jump up into second spot, and then we'll be looking for these uh, first few boats in the, um, in the second grid, uh, the likes of Zach Armstrong and, and Dylan Osmond, Patrick Valencourt to uh, come through. I've got a clock here on the iometer. So it looks as though right at this point in time to Zach Armstrong to be about 20 seconds down on Cody Cartledge at this point in time. So between the first and second grid, so he's 50 seconds behind there for about 20 seconds down. So let's, let's hope that, and then we've got the team of Excalibur jumping in and out of the water there, doing a great job. That I, I reckon they'd be coming probably third or fourth in yeah, the race I'd say the stage. Yeah, sitting in fourth probably. Zach Armstrong uh, jumped up into third now. Um, Dylan Armstrong into fourth, and then this is the battle for fifth here between the uh, the Trim Lab, driven by Aaron Sheath, uh, with Charlie Welsh on the inside, and then on the outside you got Patrick Valencourt with the the uh, Cropper boys in the boat for uh, the big Danny in the observer seat, and Brandon peddling his heart out that Team 26. We know uh, he loves a lot of lot of trim, especially down the river races. He's probably running a little bit less today and probably chucking on some ballast about this time on the race as well. Yeah, well, back in the day, you would have said both Brandon and, and Danny were walk-on ballast, but they have, <laughs> both have lost a fair bit of weight over that, the last couple of years. That is true. Not that Lucky I can... you and I aren't out there, Brandon. No, yeah, exactly. Not that we can probably say too much coming from the commentary box, but uh, uh, as we see, Ali Hollins there going through for another lap. That's... Uh, Allison is uh, sitting, I think, in probably sixth spot in the uh, junior girls. Uh, the team Prodigy there coming through. Team GBR, Great Britain, driven by. Uh, um, it's got. Where am I? D uh, Damien Hopkins driving. Uh, Simon Smith observing, and his son uh, Sam Hopkins is uh, doing the skiing. The Meltdown team coming through, so that's Elias Mearsman. Uh, and then Cosmos on the inside. We've now just got to that 15 minute mark, Troy, so half race distance. 
And here we have our current race leader, Speed Lab, out in front. Cody Cartley's doing a great job. Darren Hitchcock doing the driving. His dad, Jason, doing the observing. They're, they're, they're doing great there and uh, they're cruising around. They look like they've, uh, they've pulled a bit more of a gap as well. We haven't, uh, we, unfortunately, I don't think we haven't seen uh, the other snappy boat either come back, I don't think so. Yeah, so that was the, um, Both, that like was Gage that was uh, sitting or fighting for the lead in those first couple laps. Uh, is that them back up oh, and that, about there? Snappy three, uh, snappy three there. I wish they weren't called the same and no, had similar right. numbers, yeah. eh? That would be a whole lot easier for yeah. the commentators, but anyway. Carl Johnson, Pat Fraskin, right atop it. Uh, so that's uh, the Flamin' coming through there now, is it? Flamin', yeah, Flamin F2. F2, so that's Junior Girls Alan competitor. Ross, Josh Box and Charlotte Neal, well done to them representing Australia. Uh, then we've got the... Uh, Zach Armstrong. Yeah, so that's Zach yeah, Armstrong. Yeah, so machine. Epic yeah. coming through, so that leader of our second grid, uh, followed by uh, young, young Kirkland there from uh, Great Britain as well. Um, <coughs> Then we've got the uh, Excalibur coming through there, Dylan Osmond, uh, and that battle between the Trim Lab and the Team 26. Those three boats have been at it the whole race long so far, so uh, great to see that uh, junior boys battle between the uh, three Australians off that second grid. Um, they're fighting their way up this field and, and probably getting up, up towards those podium spots. So some great footage there on the screen we've got here in front of us, Brad. Let's just talk about the venue, the great venue that we're here. In, uh, in Brisbane Waters, Gosford. Thank you very much for Mercury Marine for bring, bringing this event to Australia. Great, uh, great location, the Central Coast, Brad, and I'm sure you've been enjoying it whilst you've been here from NZ. Yeah, first time, well, I've been to Sydney before, but first time to Gosford for me, and uh, yeah, the, obviously the, the weather's been great since we've been here, apart from the, uh, that hour where there was a whole lot of rain and lightning and everything earlier in the week, but uh, it's definitely pretty hot, probably too hot for, for my liking, but um, yeah, great weather and great conditions out there today. We're getting a, obviously a bit of mix of the flat water as well as uh, once these boats start circulating for a while, as you can see, these, quite a lot of them are actually heading towards the outside lanes of this course to, uh, to stay in as flat a water as possible. For We've got Grab F2 there going through first, first in the girls, Leilani Cartledge, closely followed by Cosmos, Cameron McKenzie, Braden Jamison, Tiana Layla. Leilani doing a great job. So right at the moment, the Cartley's family are very, very happy. First place in junior girls and first place in junior boys. So well done. There's uh, speak of the devil. There's Cody Cartley's lapping again. Yeah, about eight, eight seconds difference between first and second in that uh, junior girls. All this uh, unofficially is just off my watch there. But as we see, uh, Elias Meersman again coming through for Team Belgium. He must be doing all right in the top sort of five or six boys uh we've got the three three seven seven, seven th boat, snappy three three seven seven um so that's Ryder tovat he's still circulating well demi simmons there coming through uh for team australia uh um, as you can see yeah, they're coming down the straight a lot of the boats heading almost to the yellow boys on the outside to um I guess try and get that flatter water. Um, it's probably quite choppy now in that lane one and two positions as we see Epic Racing coming through. Zach Armstrong, pretty sure he's sitting in second spot now behind uh, behind the uh, Cody Cartledge of, of Team Australia. We've got Gage Goldsmith, he's back up and, and about, so that's good to see that he's back on top of the water and, uh, and still able to go around and get us get some points valuable points for the rest of the week right yeah absolutely this is not you know this is a four round campaign and, and it's a long week for these skiers especially these juniors only you know 13 14 15 16 years old um, some of them so uh, you know they've got to they've got to back up it's not you know not winning one race is definitely not job done at all you've got to uh, it's it's the best of three races um, well there's four races during the week but your best three count so uh, you got to make sure that you have the fitness to um, to last the distance of the week um, yeah it's very important to, to to make sure you survive the whole week obviously ideally without any issues without any falls but uh, that remains to be seen as we uh, have a little bit of break and the boats coming down around this bottom turn yeah, and we just saw going through the team of Excalibur which I think Running in third, Scott Osmond, Darren Linsell, Dylan Osmond, the big green Labsport GTR boat, doing a great job out there. So very close. We've got 
basically Cody Golds, Co Cody Cart Cartledge, Cubby Cartledge, cleaned out, and then um, very very close you got Zach Armstrong, and then then the uh, the two other boats just not far behind him. So it was a very exciting race out on the water with the boats all being similar speeds, all being similar, all different makes, but all all very similar. So junior girls lead boat there coming through. Uh, Leilani Cartledge for Team Australia, but only uh, a rope length back to uh, to Cosmos, so it's definitely not done in this junior girls race as we see our race leader there, Cody Cartledge, wrapping down another lap, 21, just under 21 minutes into this, so nine minutes plus a lap for these guys to go. There's the uh, kid stuff there, third place boat in um, that junior girls category, so that's uh, Kiana Walsh. Well all these positions obviously are just what we're uh, we're coming up with not necessarily official um as as we do lose boats on course and what have you sometimes there's boat 177 from the states going through there kyle lenkong is your driver mike king observing and gauge goldsmith yeah, there that was actually the 377 377 377 177 373 it's very confusing for us in the commentary box is the uh the meltdown machine comes through, uh, and also temper, driven by Dave Coldrake, uh, Nathan Goodall observing, Demi Simmons, Australian wildcard, and then on the outside there's Epic, with uh, with Zach Armstrong, driven by um, by Dave McMillan. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Daniel Graziano in the boat. One of our uh, our guys will be skiing later on today in the in the. Over men's class. Yeah, big effort from Daniel. Not, it's pretty physical um, observing in these smaller boats, or these F2 boats, and then obviously jumping straight out and going to ski an hour plus lap. I don't uh, envy his body at the end of the day, for sure. He'll be, uh, he'll be wanting to be in an ice bath as we see uh, Team 26 come through. Uh, also, is that the Dragon on the inside? Dragon on the inside, Flamin F2 on the outside there. And then another one of the uh, American boats there, so that's the 177. So that's, uh, that's Gage Goldsmith. So we believe he had a, had a stop early on in the race, but uh, he's still skiing strong. Good luck to him. Big effort for those guys to come all the way from the United States. Yeah, with quite a few boats as well, Troy. They haven't just uh, turned up with um, you know one or two and borrowed the rest. They've uh, brought a few boats over, especially the Nordic boats. I think they've actually purchased one or two since they've been here as well. So uh, great to see the Team USA represented well. Fairly young team and some new skiers to Worlds Racing and um, competing this week. We don't have the likes of um, Todd Haig and Marty Wells that we've come to expect over the, you know, the last uh, probably 20 years of yeah. ski racing. As we see uh, Predator come through, boat number nine. So that's Team New Zealand's entrant, Amos Ratuki, uh, driven by Greg Dutton, uh, observer Jordan Smith. So great to see Amos still up and about in this one. Grab F2 and uh, Cosmos have pulled to the outside. I know oh, that's speed lab on the outside. Yeah, Sorry, so the, my bad. Yeah, so the two, uh, two cartilage two kids, two race leaders in the same family, two Victorians. Um, so Team Victoria doing pretty well so far this, uh, this first round, obviously with Matty Boyer and uh, Emma Barnes this morning. And, um, and then obviously the cartilage, two kids, they're doing extremely well in this junior girls and boys race. Yeah, and then you've got Tiana Layla going through there behind Cosmos. She's still having a red hot crack too. So that's great to see for her first ever at World Championships as well. And uh, going through there, 177, Kyle. 377, sorry, Carl Johnson, Pat Frasca, right right atop it. And on the inside, that was our, our good friends from Belgium, I think, the Neersman family with Nico de, de Stoop doing the, uh, the observing. Zach Armstrong coming through in uh, what we say second place in the Formula 2 at the present. Sorry, J junior, junior boys. Junior boys, Formula 2 boats. So five and a half minutes now to go in this one. So I'd say these... Uh, these kids or these young young skiers' legs will be starting to hurt. Hands, um, arms, legs, everything will be uh, starting to um, really be working hard. And as conditions probably start to rough up even more, um, the concentration is the big thing that's going to get them through. As we see this real big pack of boats going around this bottom corner, uh, the Excalibur there, the lime green boat, 
um, with Dylan Osman still on the hard charge. They've managed to uh, shake off uh, Patrick Valencourt there behind the Team 26. He's dropped back a little bit, but still circulating at a, at a really good pace. He'll be up inside the uh, top five there. Then there's the Dragon. That's with uh, Jock Casey. They've, um, oh no. Oh, we've lost, uh, looks like, yeah, Ali, Alison Hollands there's had a fall just uh, in front of the checkered boy. So, uh, Gene Hollands, her driver there, her dad, will be circulating back to uh, to grab her with Jeff Week pulling in the rope there for Team New Zealand. Unfortunately, she, Alison's had a, had a spill there late in this race, but I'm sure she'll get back up and about and, uh, and um, back fit to finish. We've got Cage Goldsmith coming through there. <clears throat> on the 177 snappy one still still putting in a great effort circulating at a good pace let's uh, let's let's hope young ellie's okay in the water there <clears throat> she can get back up and finish and get some points for the rest of the week as well yeah she's a she's a pretty tough kid she um she's uh barefooter and slalomer and you know she's one of these uh you know triple threat skiers i guess that can do sort of everything as we see uh next boat coming through there that's the uh that's the atomic uh, for Team Great Britain, so and uh, young young Kirkland, uh, there Leilani Cartledge has gone to the inside. These two Cartledge kids are having a good battle. Leilani, I feel, has uh, really picked up the pace. Which uh, when they came to New Zealand earlier the year for our Trans Tasman, um, she didn't want her little brother beating her, and, and it looks like that she's not going to let him uh, let him lap her today either. She's really putting up the uh, hard charge. She's actually pulled away. I've got another boat down on this this front straight here, so a bit of carnage in these later minutes in this junior boys and junior girls race. If I can uh, if I can see that correctly, that looks grey. No, uh, well, Cody's just went around the corner, so I don't think it's the speed lab. No, it's Cos it must be Cosmos. Oh, OK. Oh, no. So that's our, our second, second place gear. So that might have bumped the kids' stuff up into second spot, maybe, in this junior girls. Uh, and there's the epic on the inside. Dave McMillan going right to the inside of the course. Um, and, yeah, look, quite tight corner there for the, um, for the epic there. What's going on here? Oh, we've got a scare off on this bottom corner as well. Oh, no. There's carnage there on this next corner. There's boats trying to avoid oh, that's, that's, uh... each other. So, here's carnage in late minutes. There's only uh, three minutes to go in this junior boys and junior girls, and it's all going on. That was Zach Armstrong in the, uh, in the junior boys there too, so that, he was coming in second place. That's, that's not good at all. So we've got, that's uh, going to really uh, throw the cat amongst the pigeons for the, uh, for what we're, our podium spots in this race. So we see Temper coming through, Team 26. Um, they'll be pretty happy to see uh, a couple of these boats in the water and jump them up a few spots. Elias Meersman there coming through for Team uh, Belgium, solo uh, Belgian competitor in this race. The Dragon there with Jock Casey. Where's Excalibur gone too? Yeah, I think I can't see the green boat at all. So we've probably got about four or five boats down on course right at the moment. So it uh, be interesting to see what happened um, on that this bottom turn. It seemed like the two um, ropes crossed over each other and I saw one skier let go. And yeah, there was definitely a whole lot going on in that bottom corner. Um, so really unfortunate there. Looks like it's two Australian team members, one one of the boys and one of the girls so uh, and they were running up the front so really unfortunate to see but it's going to happen in in these kind of races high pressure situation so we now go to 29 minutes in this one so we're not far off seeing uh, the blue flag for the boys and the pink and green for the girls for one lap to go uh, as we see the american team there coming through with the uh, the 177 there so that's um that's gage goldsmith um mike king observing for him Lead boat coming through there, Speed Lab, Cody, Cody Cartledge. Driven by Darren Hitchcock, uh, Russell Hitchcock in the, uh, sorry, no, Darren, Jason Cartledge in the observer seat, Cody's dad, so that's our lead boat. So 29 and a half minutes is gone, so they'll get the blue next time round, as will the uh, grow up F2 of Leilani Cartledge. She's, uh, she's leading the girls, so uh, the two Cartledge kids doing a great job for Team Australia lead boats. And for all those out there listening, we know that who's in front in both classes, but after all that carnage in the last <laughs> two laps, 
your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, coming we're second we're not we're four. not so sure. We're not in the timekeepers. Uh, Department, so uh, we'll leave that to see what the results pan out. It might, might uh, play into the hands of some of the people that have had trouble uh, early on in the race, um, sh you know, shifting them up. As we see, looks like both these boats on this bottom turn are, um, are back up and going, and it looks like we're about to see uh, young Ali Hollands there, the ropes sort of looking like they're about tight, ready to go. Um, as we see the trim lad coming through. These guys, I don't think, have had any issues, so they'll be they'll be up there. Um, so that's uh, young uh, Jarley Welsh. So we've got actually two sets of um, brother-sister combos out there. So Jarley and Kiana, Kiana is um, the Welshes, and they're actually twins um, from from Sydney here, yeah, and uh, yeah, Central Coast, uh, Central Coast, and uh, and then the Cartledge kids from uh, Echuca and Victoria. Uh, as we see Alison Hollands get up and about, Team 124, so great to see her back up and skiing and be able to complete another couple of laps to get this race done. Uh, the orange boat there, the... Team 26, they could well be the beneficiary of some of that carnage there. They, they, they could well be in second place, Brandon Cropper, Danny, Danny Cropper and Patrick Valenker, and yeah, he's, he's a wild card. So we, haven't, we haven't seen the uh, Excalibur no. come around for a long time. We know the Epics had issues. Um, yeah, so I'd say Patrick Valencourt would be right up there, if not second or third. Um, also with uh, maybe one of the American boys as well. So we'll wait and see what the results come. You'll have to come to Drifters Wharf tonight to, um, to see the uh, podium presentations for all the classes today as we see the, uh, the meltdown machine coming through there. Beautifully presented um, force with the 300, um, 300R Merc on the back. Oh, big set of rollers there for the skier behind that, but he managed to deal with them just fine. Kid stuff coming through and flaming F2. F2. So the two girls there, uh, Kiana Walsh and Charlotte Neal for Team Australia. With the lead boat in the, in the boys, junior One boys man. coming down here. You got Darren, Darren Hitchcock driving, Jason Cartledge, Cody Cartledge. One lap to go, speed lap. Absolutely sensational race they've put on out there. They've led, led from the start and uh, and right at this point in time, not looking back, yet there is still one lap to go and you never know what might happen. Yeah, absolutely. They're, um, they've done a great job all race. I think a well, well run race. They've probably, you know, gone hard when they needed to and, and you know, pegged it back a, a bit when they've had to as well to uh, maintain a good gap on the rest of the competitors. Uh, as we see coming through now, that's the... Um, I think it's Epic on the inside, grow up the yeah, grow up. of the girls there, and Cosmos. Yeah, so they're definitely circulating a lot slower after their, uh, their stop. Yeah. So, as we said, your guess is as good as ours. For uh, So both lead boats got their uh, last lap flag, so one lap to go for everybody that's now passing the big white finish boat out there. So good effort by all the kids. They're all going to finish, which is great. Uh, hopefully, actually, because we haven't seen one boat come back down for a little while, so I don't know whether it was a boat issue or, or what's going on with the, the big green, beautiful Excalibur machine. Yeah, there's a lot, lot, uh, lot to go, obviously, right and wrong in these races. Obviously, uh, you've got to have a good driver, skier, and observer combination that knows each other well. You've, um, you've got to obviously have the fitness and, and mental ability to uh, hang on to the rope for uh, the time to concentrate on these races, especially for these young kids. Of, um, for 35 minutes on, on a race course um, with everything being thrown at you. Obviously the pressure of the fact it's a world champs, it's, uh, it's a huge ask and these kids have all done extremely well and great to see um, some you know, fantastic racing throughout this one. Yeah, as we said, it's going to be interesting. There's the 26 machine coming down. Brandon Cropper, Danny Cropper, Patrick Valencourt. As we said, your guess is as good as ours. We think that they may be in second place on the water, but um, who knows? And then they're followed by the uh, Team New Zealand boat there, the Predator. So that's uh, Amos Ratuki circulating, still doing a great job for Team New Zealand. Greg Dutton driving, Jordan Smith observing. Still going at a pretty reasonable pace late in this race. We've now ticked over 34 minutes. So uh, yeah, everyone's going to do a, a, a solid workout, nearly 40 minutes for some of these kids will be on the water. So we see the 200 come through, so that's the uh, Great Britain team, Sam Hopkins. Uh, and then we must be close to having our lead boats come through. They're, getting the, they're preparing the chequered flag for uh, Cody Cartledge and Leilani Cartledge as we see, uh, what's that, the temper coming through now. So that's um, 
Demi Simmons, closely followed by the kid stuff there with uh, Kiana Walsh. And just inside there, it's Charlotte Neal with the Flamin' F2s, driven by Alan Ross and Josh Moxon in the boat. Stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a round of applause. Cody Cartley's behind Team Speed Lab. Absolute amazing effort. Showed a pitch. Clean pair of heels. Jason Cartley's doing the observing. Coming across the line there Danny also. Driving. Also, we've got the, uh, the American boat there of uh, 177. Kyle Lankin, Mike King. And, sorry, 377. Carl um, Johnson, Pat Frasca, right? Right atop it. And looks like the uh, Excalibur has actually made it down, down there. So it may kind of looks, well, maybe whether the boat issues they're going a little bit slower, but obviously decided that they need to collect the points. So we also see Alison Hollands from Team New Zealand finishing this first race. Uh, the 177 there, Snappy Racing, with uh, uh, Gage, Gage Goldsmith. Goldsmith coming through. We had Zach Armstrong go through there as well. Finish the race after a little mishap on the corner here. If, uh, and here we have our winner, ladies and gentlemen, of the girls. Team grow up. Yeah, Leilani Cartledge, put your hands together for uh, Leilani. Great ski by her. Uh, Alex Hanley driving. Ryan Ridgeway, Ridgeway observing. Ridgeway in the observer's seat. So a uh, great job for them. They've uh, definitely uh, yeah, smoked the field in that junior girls uh, category. And they'll have some you know, good, good points advantage over the other skiers. Uh, in that one, so we see the dragon come through there with Jock Casey, Cosmos getting it done there, also, um, and our yeah, last few finishes coming out of that uh, bottom turn there. Everyone will be hanging out to see that checkered flag. We're now just under 37 minutes into this race, and and uh, it's been a great effort from all these uh, junior boys and girls. Yeah, so team 26 coming down to greet the checkered flag. You've got. Brandon Cropper, Danny Cropper and Patrick Valancourt. Great effort by them. They've circulated all day. Um, Haven't had any issues that we know of, yeah, but uh, remains to be seen when we see a, a result sheet later on uh, this afternoon. Obviously, um, the podium presentations at Drifters Wharf will be, um, all will be revealed. Obviously, there could be protests or penalties from the judges um, after uh, the, you know, obviously the results on course aren't necessarily final. So. We'll be uh, interested to see how this one pans out. And obviously, we've got four more races for the, or sorry, three more races for these guys and girls um, before the end of the week. So it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be a, a great week of racing as we see the uh, 200 come through for Team Great Britain. And also on the inside there, the Orange Boat Predator for Team New Zealand. So that's Amos Ratuki, driven by Greg Dutton, Jordan Smith. They'll be pretty happy to get home in this one and uh, get the job done. Last three boats, I think they're coming through. I oh, know it looks like we've still got one down the bottom end as well. So that's the uh, temper with Demi Simmons, uh, the kid stuff there with Kiana Walsh, and then the Flamin' F2 there with Charlotte Neal. But I think we do have, yeah, one more boat. So they must have had a spill maybe on that last lap. Yeah, well, as we say, the kids have now been out there for 38 minutes, so it's a big effort for them. Plenty going on in that one for uh, for the for us to try and keep track of. So uh, I'm sure the the men's will probably be no different. Uh, Troy this afternoon, really looking forward to uh, seeing that men's open and men's F2 battle. Um, obviously, the uh, Australians have got a super strong team, um, but there's obviously the Americans. Uh, uh, the, um, the Belgian boys are here with a couple of big boats and, and open with Stephen Van Gaveren and uh, Tim Leesons. Um, obviously the Kiwis in the Formula 2, there's three, uh, three of our stronger boys out there. And, um, and then obviously a couple of uh, uh, other Belgian skiers and, um, and British skiers as well in, in the uh, F2 class. So really looking forward to that one. 26 starters I think we've got for an hour plus a lap, so it'll be absolutely on this afternoon for the men's Open and Formula 2 race. So what about that? That was proudly brought to you by Mercury Marine. Thank you very much. The junior boys and junior girls, one of the most exciting races today. And uh, there could be some excitement down to the pits if I know some of the drivers that were involved in yeah, things out there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There might be a few stories uh, told. Maybe uh, the protest form might even come out. You never know. But uh, I might duck off and do my uh, team captain duty and come back to see you this afternoon, Troy, for the men's race, if, uh, if that's all right. No worries, Brad. We'll see you then. Thanks for helping out, mate. And good luck for the rest of the week. Cheers.
that'd be great. I was just about to suggest something like that. Here with, I'm just here with Danny uh, Hood. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes ski racing doesn't always go the way that you want to go. She did have a fall today. Um, it was roughly about five minutes in or so. Danny, how, how did it happen? So we had a really great start. I feel we had a really great start and we were um, catching the grid in front of us and then um, just coming around the bottom turn here near Drifters. I just don't know exactly what happened, but I obviously went in. My um, ski came off, my broke my goggles. Um, the boys came back to me really quick. We, um, yeah, then we had to get reset to start again. I really wanted to finish, and I think it's important to finish for your mental everything, so yeah. Yeah, it is very important. Points on the board. Um, are you injured? What, what's sore? Uh, I have a little bit of a sore back, so um, it, it's a little bit sore, but I went and got um, a massage straight away. Um, but yeah, no, out of, uh, yeah, when you compare it to other people's falls, I'm, I'm super lucky, so we were very lucky. And the observer plays a very crucial part um, in the team. Is there any relation between you and the observer? So the observer is actually my husband, Troy, and um, yeah, we um, yeah it went well. <laughs> so does does Troy cop any punishment, or does he get off scathe? You know, is he free? <laughs> Um, I think he thinks he's going to cop a little bit of punishment, but um, the boys looked after me and it was no one's fault. These things just happen. It's just all a part of racing. Yep. You, you, it's very true. And you got points on the board. There's yep. three races to go. You know, What are you going to do? Does this change your game plan leading into race two? I think I'll be a little bit slower, if I'm honest, in the next three races. Obviously a little bit scared and hesitant to um, fall again. But yeah, we're just going to keep going round and round, do the best we can possibly do. That sounds awesome, Danny. Um, good luck and well done. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See the boats all coming in now. We'll have some good luck stories, some some hard luck stories. We'll be interested to see what what happened out on the course there. Um, who went in for a little swim for what reason or what have you? Um, I'm sure the boys down in the pits will update you very shortly on what goes on. Have a look at these beautiful boats coming in. As we said, looking forward to the open men's this afternoon and men's F2. But 27 boats or something will be out on course. Be very, very busy out there this afternoon as well. So thank you again to Mercury Marine for the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. Brought to you all the way from sunny Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... Mercury power up with a portable sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
didn't go real good. Although Mab will be filthy. Okay, we're waiting on some uh, some results, but as we said, very. Uh, Okay, so congratulations to the Cartledge family taking out both junior boys and junior girls. Cody Cartledge behind Speedlow with Darren Hitchcock and his dad Jason Cartledge in the boat. And then also Leilani Cartledge with Alex Hanley grow up F2 with Ryan Ridgeway observing. Congratulations to those two guys, those two crews representing Australia and Victoria. Well done to them. And as I said, there was a fair bit of carnage in the, in the lower placing, so I'm not not willing to uh, make a prediction on who came second or third in those two at this point in time.
number one. We're here with the winner of Junior Boys, who was not struggling out there, but he's struggling a little bit now. How do you feel, Codes? Cold. <laughs> Any other words? Cold. Cold. All right, so he set a good pace. Um, he's been ahead of the field throughout selections and that as well. Um, yeah, how'd you feel out there, Cody? Pretty good. Um, had a good first race with Gage. Um, and then just when he fell off, just maintained and went around and around. Wait till I finish. All right, I won't torture him anymore. But his sister is also the winner of Junior Girls. Lele, how'd you, how'd, you, how'd you feel out there? Yeah, pretty good. It was a tough race, but it was all right. <laughs> Who are, uh, you know, how, how far ahead a second do you know, do you how far how far ahead you were? Uh, she was pushing up my butt the whole time just until she fell off, so all the other races are going to be tough. Yeah, that's good. A thousand points for both of these guys on the board for race one. Back to you guys. All right, congratulations to those guys, the uh, Carly family. Actually, congratulations to all the juniors out there. They were on the water for quite some time. Um, it was a really, really good effort by everybody. And um, it's great to see them out there and competing, representing countries from all over the world. Like, like we say, we've got Belgium, Australia, obviously, New Zealand, USA, Great Britain. Really, really good to see. And such a big, strong field and a good, great field of boats out there as well. Unfortunately, right at this point in time, I need to make an official announcement. Unfortunately, over near the sailing club, there are four vehicles that we need moved, please. Uh, a white Hyundai SUV JS1506, a grey Ford, it looks like either an Everest or a Ranger, EVT15P, a grey Honda CYY26D over near the sailing club. If you could, if you could remove those vehicles, please. We are, we need access to that area, and also a red SV6 Commodore CO19SU. If we could get those vehicles moved, please, that would help out greatly. Thank you. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla baby, I'll choke you but I ain't no killer baby. She 28 telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is... Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next Look at me, what she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Off the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is... Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
not long now until men starts everyone you can see everyone heading over to the start area um, if you want to come to the foreshore this is where all the action will happen Hello and welcome to the Open Men's Race, first, the third race of the day, first race of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. We've got Open Men's and Formula 2 Men's, just about to go out on the water, They're just doing their formation lap, warm up lap. The field will be as is. Strike Force, with Jerry Gully driving, boat grid one, pole one, Boat number 37, Mike King and skier Mason Goldsmith representing the US of A. Grid one, pole two, team 50 F1, boat number 50. Brent Wisemantle, Evan Woolwich, Carter Robertson representing Australia. Grid one, pole three, Axion. Bart Smets doing the driving, David Dryson doing the observing, Tim Lysons all the way from Belgium doing the skiing. Grid one, pole four, snappy one, seven, seven. Carl Johnson, Daniel Norman, Normandon and Rayson Normandon re representing the US of A. Grid one, pole five, representing Australia, Sapphire, boat number one, Tim Pickford, Brian Griffin, Lachlan Nix from Victoria, Australia. Grid two, pole one, we've got Diamond Bulls, lovely looking boat, Frank Mearsman, Nico de Stoop, Stephen Van Gaveren representing Belgium. Grid two, pole two, Supernova F1, boat number one, two, eight, Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, Cooper Robertson doing the skiing, representing Australia. Grid two, pole three, Superman Racing, Darren Maguire, Stephen Robinson, Stephen Bub Robinson, and Daniel Graziano doing the skiing, representing Australia. Grid two, pole four, Coldies F1, Jason Warmsley driving, Kevin Boyle and observing, Jack Coldrake, the wild card for Australia. And grid at two, pole five, strike F1. David McMillan, Braden Jemison, Brock McMillan, wild card. So we've got 10 boats in the uh, men's open, and then we've got men's Formula Two. Grid three, pole one, Lucifer. Stacey Mello, driving boat number 22. Paul Skipper, Max Duckworth, representing New Zealand, doing the skiing. Grid three, pole two, Ice Ice Baby, Guido De Vos, Crystal Spiesens, Mike Moshunt, representing Belgium. Grid three, pole three, Grow Up F2, Alex Handley, Jason Cartledge, Cameron Nix, representing Australia. Grid three, pole four, The Prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith, Nick Butler, representing Great Britain. Grid three, pole five, Boat 73, 7-3, Steve Davis, Daryl Weatherford and Ty Cheshire representing USA. That's the beautiful red boat that you see out in the, fr out in the water in the front here for those that are alive. Grid three, pole six, cause and glamour, Wayne T Taylor, Shane Anderson, Kyle Taylor, representing New Zealand. Grid four, pole one, one Revenge F2, Dylan Cuff, Jack Batty, Aiden Cuff, representing Australia. 
Grid 4, pole 2, enough said. Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, Rory Kirkland representing Great Britain. Grid 4, pole 3, Snappy 377. Kyle Lancon, Todd Kelm, Jason Davison representing the US of A. Grid 4, pole 4, Bernico Racing. Anthony McAnally, Gene Hollands, Mitchell Horan representing New Zealand. Grid 4, pole 5, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey and Brendan Tidswell representing Australia. Grid 5, pole 1, 373, Mike Hedges, Jeff Barris, Sean Davidson representing the US of A. Grid 5, pole 2, Speed Lab, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie representing Australia. Grid 5, pole 3, F2 Wild, Leonardo Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs, and Levi Frederick from USA. Grid 5, pole 4, Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Joshua Reed, Jake Clancy, Wildcard. And Grid 5, pole 5, 16, 48, F2. Cameron Monaghan, Brett Williamson, Liam Ford, another wildcard for Australia. That rounds out the field. They're all heading over to the start line. And uh, we'll, we'll let, let you know when we've been notified when we're heading towards the 15 minutes to start. Just had it on pretty good authority. Most uh, most of the skiers out there ski what we call wrapped up here in Australia, but I've uh, got Levi Frederick representing the US of A. Skis his hands out in front, so he'll be skiing for an hour plus one lap. Could well be 66 minutes. He'll be skiing with his arms out in front. I wouldn't like to be arm wrestling that young man. I wouldn't want to be the chiropractor sorting him out after, Troy. Boats milling in the start area. Welcome to everyone abroad joining in on our live telecast. Whether you be in America, Europe, England, or just local here in Australia somewhere and you couldn't make it to Gosford. Probably there's a good mixture of um, all the countries across, the, across this field. We've got... Uh, Three or four, four, four Americans, I think. Two Belgium, two Great Britain, two New Zealand as well. Bit boat. Yeah, there's plenty of plenty of the countries represented. It's it's good to see that all the guys that have come from far and wide representing their countries. Belgium, New Zealand, USA, Australia, Great Britain. Good to see that they didn't just come with one skier. They've, they've uh, actually um, bought quite a big field. Like the Americans have got five boats here. I think the Belgians have got three or four or five. Um, the Belgians have definitely got the biggest boats out there, don't they? Yeah, most definitely. You can see over the back there, Diamond Bulls, that's one of them. The big Aren't Axiom. Yep, the big orange thing sitting there. It's actually had to have the nose cut off of it so it can meet the criteria for the world so to meet the size. Yeah, they they uh, they came out came out a little while ago back in Belgium and uh, there was a little bit of controversy around them. They, um, I think the rule at the time read about 23 or 24 feet, whatever that might have been in centimeters and meters, but um, I think they made them 26 or seven. I was telling a story where I saw the, one of the first ones in Belgium in 09, the big black one. It, uh, it had its swimming platform at the back holds a thousand litres of water. It couldn't, a, couldn't actually get on the plane when it was full of, full of water. It was, it was quite a sight to see, with a boat with over 1,100 horsepower not being able to get on the plane.
Maritime heading out, just up the, uh, the back straightaway.
can see the crowd building, the expectation building, the boats now starting to mingle around. Looks as though most of the skiers are on the decks of the boats. Only one I can see there is one of the strike boats putting their skier on the deck. Must be getting very, very close to a start, or very close to a 15 to start anyway. I'd say we're probably even in the 15, Troy. Quite possibly, but uh, one wouldn't know. <laughs> Tell you what, the conditions have remained calm, Mitch. It's going to be on going down that first straight. They'll be reaching, uh, reaching very near the uh, over 100 mile an hour there. Which, yep. um, it's going to be a wild first lap, that's for sure. Around 12 minutes to start. <laughs> those on the banks here and those on the live stream, if you can see the, uh, the two blue bo boats with the blue canopies over there, that's the start line. That's where the flags will go up with five minutes to go. You'll get the boxing kangaroo and the Australian flag. When the boxing kangaroo comes down, as Cotton said earlier today, it'll be 30 seconds to start. The first grid will run their ropes out. And now away we go. As we, we will. 10 minutes to start now. So we're on the 10 minutes to start. Now let's run through these grids again. Grid one, pole one, you've got Strike Force, Jerry Gully, Mike King, Mason Goldsmith representing the United States of America. Grid one, pole two, Team 50 F1, Brent Wiseman, Evan Woolridge, Carter Robertson from that famous Robertson family. <coughs> Grid one, pole three, Axion, all the way from Belgium, Bart Smets, David Dryson, Tim Lysons representing Belgium. Grid one, pole four, Snappy 177, Carl Johnson, Daniel Normandon, Rayson Normandon, representing the United States of America. Grid one, pole five, Sapphire, Tim Pickford, boat number one. Brian Griffin, Lachlan Nix, representing Australia. Grid two, pole one, Diamond Balls, Frank Mearsman, Nico de Stoop, Stephen Van Gabberen, represent, representing Belgium. Grid two, pole two, Supernova F1, Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, Cooper Robertson, representing Australia. Brad, grid two, pole three, Superman Racing, Darren Maguire, Shet, Stephen Robinson, Daniel Graziano representing Australia. Grid two, pole four, Coldies F1, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boylan, Jack Coldrake, wildcard for Australia. Grid two, pole five, Strike F1, David McMillan, Braden Jemison, Brock McMillan doing the skiing, wildcard for Australia. Grid three, pole one, in for, for Formula Two, first grid, Lucifer, Stacey Mello, Paul Skipper, Max Dutworth rec representing New Zealand. Grid three, pole two, Ice Ice Baby, Guido De Vos, Crystal Splissons, Mike Moishunt representing Belgium. Grid three, pole three, Grow Up F2, Alex Hanley, Jason Cartledge, Cameron Nix representing Australia. Grid three, pole four, The Prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith, Nick Butler representing Great Britain. Grid three, pole five, boat 73, Stevie Davis, Daniel Weatherford, Ty Cheshire representing the US of A. Both, grid three, pole six, Cause and Glamour, Wayne Taylor, Shane Henderson, Kyle Taylor representing New Zealand. Grid four, pole one, Re Revenge F2, Dylan Cuff, Jake Batty, Aiden Cuff representing Australia. Grid four, pole two, enough said. Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, Rory Kirkland, representing Great Britain. Grid four, pole three, Snappy 377, Kyle Lankin, Todd K K Kelm, Jason D Davison, representing US of A. Grid four, pole five, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey, Brendan Tidswell, representing Australia. Grid five, pole one, three, seven, three, Mike Hedges, Jeff Barris, Sean Davis representing USA. 
Grid 5, Pole 2, Speed Lab, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie representing Australia. Grid 5, Pole 3, F2 Wild, Leonard Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs and Levi Frederick skiing with arms out in front from the US of A. Grid 5, Pole 4, Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Josh Reed, Jake Clancy, a wild card for Australia. And Grid 5, Pole 5, 1648 F2, Cameron Monaghan, Brett Williamson, Liam Ford representing a wild card for Australia. Good luck to all those concerned. Good luck to all the families on the banks and the connections for the men's first race of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships brought to you by Mercury Marine Australia. Thanks very much to those Mercury dealers, Race Marine, Bay City Marine, Brisbane Marine, TR Marine and Water Sports Marine. Thank you very much to those guys and uh, Mercury Marine and all our other sponsors as well for putting, helping us be able to put this wonderful, wonderful event on and take it to the rest of the world both live and also via stream. Troy, we've got 26 boats out there in this field. The, the, the conditions look all right now. I'd say pretty quickly this is going to rough up. Very quickly, I would say, Mitch, with those big uh, big F1 boats going out there, you've got the, all the big F1 force boats, you've got the massive Bernicos, and you've got the, uh, the Nordic Brent Wise medals, beautiful boat. Uh, most of them running the 1350 or 1550 Mer Mercury packages. We're just about to go to five minutes to start, ladies and gentlemen. If you look over to your right, you'll see the, the boat with the blue, uh, blue tarp there. The flags go up, the Australian flag and the bo boxing kangaroo. We've got five minutes to start. And away we go. Four and a half minutes, they'll drop the boxing kangaroo flag. We'll have the, you'll see the boats pop around the little corner there. Run their ropes out. Off they will go up that front straight away at speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour, 160 kilometres an hour. And uh, let me tell you, trying to hang on at that speed is no mean feat. Absolutely glorious day here. There's a great Brandon Cropper. How are you, champion? I was driving back there, mate. Bit loose across the line a couple of times, but... They haven't got enough, as much ballast as they're used to in the boat anymore. He's a bit short, that one. Oh, his cushion might have fallen out from under his seat as well. As you can see there, everyone looks set and ready. Skiers are on the deck. Skis on. So grid one, pole one, Jerry Gully, Mike King, Mason Goldsmith. Grid one, pole two, Brent Wisemanel, Evan Woolridge, Carter Robertson. Grid one, pole three, Bart Smets, David Dryson, Tim Lysons. Grid one, pole four, Snappy 177, Carl Johnson, Daniel Normandon, Race and Normandon. They're gonna have their work cut out in, in amongst all the big boats. The, uh, the little, <coughs> little um, Nordic 21 footer with the 300 Mercury. All the other guys have got up to uh, 1250 or maybe even 1350 horsepower more than them. So they, uh, and then um, we've got Sapphire with Tim Pickford, Brian Griffin and Lachlan Nix, who likes to go very fast down the first shoot as well. It will be game on, Mitch. That is going to be a wild first grid, that's for sure. Second grid, oh, probably just as wild, I think. Yeah, the sec second grid, as we said before, we've got um, Diamond Bulls, Frank Mearsman, Nico De Stoop, Stephen Van Gaveren. Supernova F1, Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson, C Cooper Robertson. Two brothers skiing against each other in this open men's race. S Superman Racing, Darren Maguire, Stephen Robertson, D Daniel Graziano. Yes, he is their uncle. Stephen is Cooper and... Uh, cousin. Cousin? Uncle? Family. Yeah, family. <laughs> Two slash four, Coldy's F1, Jason Wormsley. No, cousin. Kevin Boylan, <laughs> Jack Coldrake. David Millen, Strike F1, Braden Jemison, Brock McMillan doing the scheme. Two minutes to start. 
Two minutes to start, so we've got about a minute and a half till you see the boxing kangaroo flag drop. And away we will go. You'll see everyone now start to mill around and get into formation for the first grid. Thirty seconds till they run their ropes out. In these conditions, they'd be on the full length, two hundred and forty-seven foot of rope, I would imagine. Yeah, actually, I think uh, well spotted. Mitch has just seen off the live stream. It looks like we're on a on a hold for some reason. Both flags are both back, up, both up. I oh, know. There we go. Flag down. Bad sighting, Mitch. <laughs> and as good as eyes you could got. I'll cop that one. Um, running the ropes out now, as we said, they'll be running 247 feet, so we'll see them pop around the corner there in a minute. So we've got Jerry Gully on the inside in the strike boat. Here we go. Brent Wise medal. Belgian boat up, up and away. Axiom gets the lead, first out of the hole. Brent Wiseman all there, good start by Carter Robinson. And down the outside, you've got Lockie Nix absolutely flying down the outside with Sapphire F1. Lockie Nix pushing up the outside in first. Team 50 in a second, pushing through as well. And you've got Strike Force there. Second grid, flag down. Supernova gets the Hulk shot. Cooper Robertson, great start there by Cooper. Bit of air from the skiers at the start there. Sapphire well ahead, almost at the top turn. Axion in second, Team 50 third. Strike Force followed uh, in fourth, followed not far behind by Snappy 377. Great start. Very shortly, we'll see the uh, F2 boats about to start to leave. Good start there. Great start by Team Grow Up. Cameron Nix. Cameron Nix. On the Full rope length ahead already. That's all about prop and setup, and also the fact that he probably weighs about 60 kilos. <laughs> Sapphire come into the top turn in first. Equal second for Team 50 and Axioms. Followed a bit far behind by Strike Force, and then also same distance behind for Snappy 377. Second group, we've got a fight between Diamond Balls and Supernova. Coldy's F1 in third. This pack's following close together. Superman and then Strike F1. Let me tell you, it doesn't. It, it's, they haven't really cleared out by what I can see coming down this straight. The, um, the Sapphire boat. <sighs> Team 50 moving to the outside pole. It just, just slightly ahead of Sapphire as you see him coming down this straight. Axiom in third has jumped in Team 50's wash. Big effort by Carter Robertson. He's obviously here to race today and here to say, if you're going to beat me this week, Lockie, you're going to have to have a red hot crack. Two boats going around the corner there. Go for Lockie. They're going to match the uh, meet the last grid of F2 here. That's how fast they are. Clock the lap at about top two, two minutes, five seconds. Copping some traffic there, unfortunately. Team Sapphire, same as uh, Team 50. Up the inside, You've got the strike force, Team Axion there. As we said, the Belgium skiers, they're, they're not used to these very high speeds, 100 mile an hour. Then we've got Cooper Robertson out in front, in, out of group, grid two. At Superman, I believe. Oh, sorry. Superman, Daniel Graziano, Coldy's F1, he's in third place, Snappy 377 in second, and Strike F1 followed not far behind. Rock and Willem, good start for them as well. Coldy. Yeah. Looks like we may have lost Supernova. Supernova, we cannot see. 
That's no good. Diamond Bulls and Supernova apparently dropped their ski right down the bottom end, which is no good for both of those. As we said once before today, you, uh, you may not win a world championship in the first race, but you can certainly do yourself a, a mischief. I've Team got the... Grow up there coming through, the leading, leading F2 with the, the Lucifer on the inside as well. The... I've got Diamond Bulls here in Supernova, just shy of the top turn, both sitting up together. Not sure what's happened up there. So Lucifer with Max Duckworth representing New Zealand out in front of F2 with Team Grow Up quite quite close in third, then Kyle Taylor in sorry in third, Team Grow Up in second. Ty Cheshire for US in fifth, and then our our British combatant there in fourth. Aiden Cufflet in the second grid. Brendan Tidswell very close and then we've got the 177 boat from America, 124 and then the, uh, the green machine from Belgium. Look at this, this is a good battle. They're catching up to the F2 boats already. These guys were first and, sele first and second in our selections as well so it's good to see them battling it out together. Carter Robinson out the front, Lachlan Nick's going around the outside. Speed Lab coming through the middle there. Three seven three representing America. Brock McMillan, I oh know, sorry. That's um Red flag. That's no good. Red flag. That can't be good. Okay, we have a red flag, ladies and gentlemen, which means race stops. Race stops. We might um, we might time out here because we don't want to add any uh, anything in that might get anyone in trouble. So red okay. flag. Boat's got to stop on course, and we'll be back to you shortly. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next one. Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Call the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. I'm vanilla baby, I'll choke you but I ain't no killer baby. She 28 telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is... The 
Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next question is, Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T, pull the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one. You, but I ain't no killer, baby She 28, telling me I'm still a baby I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby And the thing about your boy is Mercury power up with a portable sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees and the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. 
It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one, bang. Choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller, baby. And the thing about your boy is. With a portable sale, power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Okay, I'm down in the pits here with Sophie, Sophia Rivera from the US of A. Third place today in women's F2. Great job. Congratulations. Did you have a good race? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I'm happy with the results. Yeah, it's good. What did you think of the water here in Gosford? Um, it's, it's good. I like it. It's not too rough. Straights are pretty smooth. Um, turns, this turns a little, this close turns a little bumpy, but this one's good. How does it compare with the water you race on back home? Well, we usually do the Catalina race, so it's open ocean, uh, 62 miles and back. It's pretty rough, open ocean, so this is pretty similar. Pretty similar. And what about, um, do you have any idols here at the moment from America or, or Australia? Or why did you get into ski racing? Um, just my stepdad had the right friends and they forced me to do it. So here I am. And years later, I'm, I'm liking it now. That's good. And you're, you're smiling, which is good to see. What, what are your plans for the rest of the week? Obviously, just improve a little? Uh, yeah, pretty much. See where I fit in. Um, hopefully get first or second course. And which boat are you skiing behind? Uh, boat 377, 21 foot Nordic. You did a great job out there and who's your boat crew driving observer? Uh, Carl Johnson's driving and Ken Kramer is observing for me. Ken Kramer's quite experienced, he's been around for a long time? Yes, both of them actually, both really good. They do a lot. Anyone you'd like to thank for enabling you to get here to, to Australia? My parents, mom and Abe. Thank you guys for everything. No worries. Well, good luck for the rest of the week. Hopefully you get one of those uh, silver medals or gold medals even by the end of the week. And uh, do you know what points you got today? Not sure. Third place. Whatever third place gets. Whatever third place gets. Very good. Well done. Congratulations. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Hey guys, I'm in the pits here with, uh, I've got the girls here, Charlotte Neal, Kenna Walsh and Tiana Laylor. How are we feeling today girls? How, tell me about, I'll go from one side to the other, how the race was today. Can you tell me a little bit about the conditions and how you felt out there? Um, it was pretty smooth first few laps and then it roughed up. It was pretty tough, 
very eventful. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. I was going good, and then there was a bit of an incident. Like, yeah, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it did well. It was a bit rough. Not bad though. I like the chop. And um, the last like five minutes came off, but nothing like you can drop a race. Next three races. That's all right. As for the people who don't know, we there's a total of four races, but they only take the points from the first, oh, from the their best three races. So, girls, tell me, how does the racing in Gosford compare to some of the other racing that you do all around the country? I think it's pretty similar to Region Five at Tookley. Rough corners, rough straights, just rough everywhere. Yeah, I agree. Like fast laps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fast, same course from Tukli and a lot of other races that are circuit races. Yeah. So Tukli is our Region Five race here in um, up in the Central Coast as well, but that's in Tukli, which is a little bit further north. I'm if I'm correct. Uh, that that also follows a circuit race, which is a sausage dog course, and um, it get, does get pretty choppy there. It's big open water, so the wind gets to blow through. Not. We've really got to play our cards right for the wind to blow through here at Gosford. However, because it's a little bit congested, the, the boat wash is just unreal sometimes. How do you find um, skiing with that little bit of sloppiness, a little bit of boat wash, a bit of cross wash? How do you find that different to, say, um, oncoming wind sort of rough water? Oh, it makes you feel a bit unco because you never know where the waves are coming. You just bend your knees and hope for the best. Yeah, I agree. Um... It's like, like it's waves are just coming from everywhere and just hitting you everywhere. Yeah, definitely weird going over the rough when it's coming you fr coming from the side. But I definitely prefer front on like wash. But I can deal with it. Just bend your legs, hopefully best as well. Well, look, if you go, if we ski as good as the three of you, it's not that big of a worry. If you ski like me, big worry, big big worry. Um, but while we're here, how's this? How's the lead up? to the world's been for you guys? Has the training, have you been feeling confident leading up to this? How was your selection run? And what has, what, what's really, just tell me what is the lead up to this big event? Um, for selections, it was kind of up and down with all of us. And then after I was just training gym during the week and then down at Brooklyn. Yeah, it was, selection races were tight between all three of us. And um, yeah, but definitely nervous coming into Worlds, but f like excited. Yeah, the selection races are a lot different than what we are used to. We do usually have tight races at Bukley, so we're pretty used to it with the competitiveness. And <laughs> with training, just gym during the week and going to Brooklyn on the weekend, trying to get as much in as you can. That's awesome. Um, well, it was really good to see you out there today. You guys skied awesome. I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the week, and um, we'll see you later. Back to you. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one.
The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after that little stoppage, um, just been informed by the officials that the race will go ahead and uh, we'll be racing for 50 minutes plus one lap shortly. Okay, welcome back to the live feed. Proudly brought to you by Mercury Marine, Open Men's and F2 Men's, the first race for the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. Now 50 minutes plus one lap on the beautiful waters here at Gosford. The reason for that 50 minutes is a, a couple of boats did, I think, two, three laps or so, so they're a bit down on fuel. We don't have time to refuel, so we're just going to get things going again.
about to watch about this one. Those in the live feed, just bear with us. We're obviously just getting everyone organised, um, finding what's, what's going on. We certainly do need to get moving. Still a couple of boats over there at the ramp. Troy, they'll probably just be refeeding their hole shots, getting things ready to reset. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next is Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. Off the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one. Bang. I'm vanilla baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skilla baby. And the thing about your boy is. Exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Okay. <clears throat> so, the rerun of the open men's will be 50 metres, 50 minutes plus one lap. We'll have grid one, pole one, strike force with Gerald Gully, Mike King and Mason Goldsmith. We'll have grid one, pole two, team 50 F1 with Brent Wisemantle, Evan Woolridge and Carter Robertson. Grid one, pole three, Axion, Bart Smets, David Dryce and Tim Lysons. Grid one, pole four, Snappy, Carl Johnson, David Normandon, Race at Normandon. Grid one, pole five, Sapphire, Tim Pickford, Nico de Stoop and Stephen Van Gaveren all, all the way from Belgium. <coughs> Grid two, pole three, pole three, pole one, closest to the start boat will be Darren Maguire, Superman, Stephen Robinson and Daniel Graziano representing Australia. Grid 2, Pole 4, Coldies F1, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boylan and Jack Coldrake rep representing Australia with Wildcard. And Grid 2, Pole 5, Strike F1, Dave McMillan, Braden Jemison, Brock McMillan representing Australia with a wild, in the Wildcard. Then we've got Men's Formula 2. Grid 3, Pole 1, Lucifer, Staley, Stacey Mello, Paul Skipper, Max Duckworth representing New Zealand. Grid three, pole two, Ice Ice Baby, Guido De Vos, Crystal Speesons, Mike Myshunt. Grid three, pole three, Grow Up F2, Alex Handley, Jason Cartledge, Cameron Nix representing Australia. Grid three, grid three, pole four, The Prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith, Nick Butler representing Great Britain. Grid three, pole five, boat number 73, Steve Davis, Daniel Weatherford and Ty Cheshire representing USA. Grid three, pole six, Wayne Taylor driving cause and glamour, Shane Henderson doing the observing, Kyle Taylor doing the skiing representing New Zealand. <coughs> Grid four, sorry, my bad. Grid four, pole one, Rev Revenge F2, Dylan Cuff, Jack Batty, Aidan Cuff representing Australia. Enough said, grid four, pole two, Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, Rory Kirkland representing Great Britain. Grid four, pole three, Snappy, 377 representing America, Kyle Lenkin, Todd Kelm and Jason Davison. Grid four, pole four, Bernico Racing, Anthony McAnally, Gene Hollands and Mitchell Horan representing New Zealand. Grid four, pole five, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey, and Brendan Tidswell representing Australia. Grid five, pole one, three, seven, three, Mike Hedges, Jeff Barris, Sean Davison representing the United States of America. Grid five, pole two, Speed Lab, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie representing Australia. Grid five, pole three, F2 Wild, Leonard Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs, Lewis Frederick representing the US of A. Grid five, pole four, Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Josh Reed, Jake Clancy, wildcard for Australia. Grid five, pole five, 16, 88, F2. Cameron Monaghan, Brett Williamson and Liam Ford representing Australia in the wildcard. As you can see now on the screen there, we've got the last couple of boats that were at the ramp starting to head out to the start line. Um, we've got Ice Ice Baby just sorting out their rope. So 50 minutes plus one lap for the Open Men's and Men's Formula 2 World Championship IWF 2023 first race.
boats making their way to the start area, Mitch. Let's yeah, hope mate. we can get around nice and safely. Can see them all milling around there at the moment. I'm sure by the uh, fourth start of the day that we've had, you, you can now realise where the start area is over the white line between the two white boys there. We had Ice Ice Baby over from Belgium making its way across to the start line. We still have uh, boat number 33 over. That, that may be just a boat in the Grow up F2 going across there. One of the favourites for the uh, F2 class. Cameron Nix, boat number 101. Beautifully prepared Bernico F2 Extreme with the 300 uh, racing package Mercury. Served them well over the years. Previous world title winning boat. I just had a look on Race Live. If anyone is watching on Race Live, you'll have to go back into the main screen and they've created a new race for the race restart tracking. Still very calm up here at Gosford. There we go, former world champion Trudy Sout or Trudy Moray now. Cruising past, good to see. With a little baby there. Great to see so many people from around Australia and around the world that are just come here to support the event. That event put together by Mercury Marine. Thank you very much to Mercury Marine Australia and the, uh, the five Mercury Marine dealers. Water Sports Marine, Race Marine, Bay City Marine, TR Marine and Brisbane Marine. Thank you to those guys and all our other sponsors as well. All the boats are over in the start area mingling around. As we discussed pre previous, look over off the point, you'll see, you'll see them there. I run their ropes out. When the uh, boxing kangaroo flag goes down, 30 seconds to start. Run their ropes out, the Australian flag goes down, and off they go. Grid one, pole one, away they go. Don't think we're too far away, Troy. I can see a lot of the skiers meeting their boats out on the wharf there now. Here's another former world champion, the great Jack Houston there with his family and baby. Didn't even hear me. So the start seconds will be 15 minutes. We'll flags up in th with three minutes, three minutes to go. We've got Daniel Graziano just running past the commentary position. Just a little bit of extra bit of warm up he needs. Good luck, mate. Two legends of the sport just, just milling past. We've got Rob Energy all the way from the States. Noel Griffin from, from sunny Brisbane. Had the butt burn and blazing boats. Rob's got the California cushion and carpet boats over there in the, in the States. Very, very good supporter of ski racing.
whilst, whilst we're waiting for the boats and the, uh, the staff, he, he's, a, he's another, uh, it's almost like a world champion walk of fame here in front of us here. We've got Pat Long, daughters of previously won world championships. G'day, Pat. We've got our, our major sponsor here, built, built us this beautiful caravan walking, walking past. Jesse Burns. I want to know how much you ski, ski carriers get paid by your skiers. Hope you're on big bucks, it's pretty hot out there. Well, Mitch, how do you see this one panning out? Mate, I still think these two first grids are going to be hot. Um, 50 minutes plus a lap might change the game plan a bit. You know, 10 minutes is worth a lot in these races. It may be a bit different. They've been in the boats now for probably nearly an hour as well. So, um, yeah, things would have changed, obviously. Nervous energy, as we discussed earlier. Oh, yep. Um, there's a lot of other things that come into play, like um, everyone's tape, a lot of skiers tape their feet, their tape's a bit over an hour old now, whether they've changed it or kept it. Um, the wetsuits are wet, you've been full of water. If you're as unfit as me, you've already done three laps. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's definitely not cool out there, so like being in the, in the boats with, uh, you can only, there's only so much water as far as bottles of water that you can put in the boat. Oh yeah, it's getting hotter. It's it's not cooling down here either. The wind seems uh, seems to have stayed the same too, which is pretty good. Yeah, but uh, it did start to blow up a little bit. Darren Lindsell running out a hole shot up to the start line, stolen someone's bike. But Raiden Jamison holding a coke but no cigarette. That's an unusual sight. The great stump stumpmeister representing Cowra. Australia, the Bubbinator, good luck, mate. Nice fire suit. Looks like the star boat's moving into position. It's coming out of the, coming out of the bay. The boats that were mingling sort of up near the start line are now seem to be heading to back towards into the bay. second place in the open women's this morning walking past always smiling and uh, boat 33 heading out there now the big black atomic with the tall dark and handsome 300 r from mercury marine
down on the dock there, you can see the excitement starting to build. You've got plenty of people, all the boats with the skiers. Getting ready, 50 minutes plus one lap for the Open Men's and F2 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. <coughs> Thanks to Bay City Marine, TR Marine, Water, Water Sports Marine, Brisbane Marine and Race Marine for putting together the, the great package that they've put together. Also Gosford City Council, or sorry, Central Coast Council. I'll just mention something I mentioned before, Troy, that if anyone is at home watching on Race Live or anyone here watching on Race Live, if you go back out into the homepage of Race Live, there is a new uh, race on the Race Live for the reset. Also, obviously, our live stream on skiracing.com.au. Sorry that we're a little vague, but un unfortunately we don't have any contact with any officials. So we're, we're um, doing our best to find out when, um, when the race start is. Normally we'd have a radio in the central commentary position, but apparently the rules have changed. Not so today. We may work on it for uh, further in the week. <coughs> So the 15 minute hood has gone. I'm going to throw a dart and say we're about 13 minutes until the start. As I said, because it's a restart, the uh, two flags will go up with three minutes to go, not five minutes to go. The green flag will go down. The boxing kangaroo will go down 30 seconds. And then away we go with the Australian flag for grids one, two, three, and four of open men's and F2 men's. <coughs> Quickly run through those grids again there, Mitch. We've got grid one, pole one, strike force, Jerry Gully, Mike King, Mason Goldsmith from the USA. Jerry, a very accomplished driver, obviously drove for his son Ben to win multiple world championships. And then you've got grid one, pole two, team 50, F1, boat 50, Brent Wiseman, 11, Woolridge and Carter Robertson from Australia. Brent Wiseman has left no stone unturned and doesn't need any introduction. Obviously won this morning in the women's race and has won many, uh, many world championships. One, grid one, three, Axion, Bart Smets, David Dryson, Tim Lysons, representing Belgium. Very, very hot team from Belgium. Grid one, pole four, Snappy, Carl Johnson, Daniel Normandon, Racing Normandon, representing the USA. Grid one, pole five, Sapphire, Tim Pickford, Brian Griffin, Lachlan Nix representing Australia. Grid two, pole one, Diamond Bulls, Frank Nearsman. Sorry, no, and not in, sorry, my bad. Grid two, pole three, Superman Racing, Darren Maguire, Stephen Robertson, Daniel Graziano representing Australia. Grid two, pole four, Coldies F1, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Watt Boylan, Jack Coldrake in the wild card in the big blue Coldies G2. 
G1, two, good two pole five, strike F1, Dave McMillan. Braden Jamison, Brock McMillan, wild card, the, the big yellow strike boat, boat number 110. Then Formula 2, grid 3, pole 1, Lucifer, Stacey Mello, Paul Skipper, Max Duckworth representing New Zealand. They had a great start in that first one. Let's see how they go this time round. Grid 3, pole 2, Ice Ice Baby, Guido de Vos, Crystal Spiesens, Mike Monchant from Belgium. Grid 3, pole 3, Grow Up F2, Alex Hanley, Jason Cartledge, Cameron Nix representing Australia. Grid 3, pole 4, The Prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith, Nick Butler representing Great Britain. Grid 3, pole 5, boat number 73, Stevie Davis, Daryl Weatherford, Ty Cheshire representing United States of America. Grid 3, Pole 6, Cause and Glamour, Wayne Taylor, Shane Henderson, Kyle Taylor representing New Zealand. Grid 4, Pole 1, Revenge F2, Dylan Cuff, Jack Batty, Aidan Cuff representing Australia. Grid 4, Pole 2, Enough Said, Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, Rory Kirkland rep representing Great Britain. Grid 4, Pole 3, Snappy 377. Kyle Lankin, Todd Kelm, Jason Davison representing the US of A. Grid 4, Pole 4, Bernico Racing, Anthony McAnally, Gene Hollands, Mitchell Horan representing New Zealand. Grid 4, Pole 5, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey and Brendan Tidswell representing Australia. Grid 5, Pole 1, 373, Mike Hedges, Jeff Barris, Sean Davison representing USA. Grid 5, Pole 2, Speed Lab. Representing uh, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie representing Australia. Grid 5, 3, F2 Wild, Leonard Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs, Levi Frederick representing the US of A. Grid 5, Pole 4, Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Josh Reed, Jake Clancy, Wildcard. Grid 5, Pole 5, 1648 F2, Ca Cameron Monaghan, Brett Williamson, Liam Ford, Wildcard. And we're currently on around nine minutes to start. Nine minutes to start. As I said, the two flags will go up with the three minutes to start. So let's talk a bit, a little bit about these boats. Strike Force, F F21 Force, with the Mercury 1350 package and the number six drive. Then you've got Team 50 F1, a beautiful Nordic boat from the, uh, built in the United States with a uh, Mercury 1075 package. A little bit of difference between the 1350s and the 1075s. The 1075s have twin superchargers, whilst the 1350s have quad turbocharged. So if anybody out there... So the superchargers make power straight from the start. The turbos, in, in this case, the little turbos have to wind up to boost up the big turbos, and, and away they go. And um, the, some of the other boats, they, they run gearboxes. We've got Axon... Axion, the big orange Bernico, same deal. He'd be running a 1350 Mercury package. Snappy 177s, an F2 boat up in the uh, up with the big boys. You got Sapphire, the big F1 black force boat, running a 1350 Mercury package as well. Superman Racing, another big black, I oh know it's blue and white this one, big blue and white force boat. Darren Maguire with a 1350 Merc Mercury package, Mercruiser package. You got the leg, which is the, the black part that sticks out the back of the boat for those those that don't know when the motor sits inside the boat. Then you got Coldy's F1, Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boyle and Jack Coldrake. Again, 1350 Mercruiser package. Strike F1. Dave McMillan, Braden Jamison, Brock McMillan, the big yellow strike boat with the 1550 Mercury, Mercury package, Mercury Marine. When we're quoting those numbers, 1350, 1550, 1050, just for your information, that is the amount of horsepower those motors produce. The 1350s and the 1550s are pretty much the same engines. They, they just have a little, little bit of tickle up in the computer system, to give them a bit more fuel, a bit more air, and, uh, and away they go. Another small difference with these boats, Troy, is that some of them run six blades, some five. I have seen a four blade, I think, on Team 50 
once or twice, but yeah, the props are in excess of ten thousand dollars each as well. Yeah, they are. With um, a lot of the boat drivers and boat owners don't like don't like to say that out loud, Mitch. Otherwise, that ends up in diamond rings and things like that. Thanks to the Maritime that's uh, helping us out here this week, giving us a licence and uh, keeping us safe, keeping, making sure that uh, there's no errant spectators coming across the course. Thanks to obviously Drifters Wharf for accommodating us all week. What a great venue. I thought we might have seen more kids, some more little kids in there over in the <laughs> jumping castle over there, Mitch. It's just Darren Lindsell. Might have to go over to the water park there later, Troy. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Maybe maybe um, after final prize giving this afternoon, some of the um, boat drivers might go over there and let off some steam. The gladiator set up. Yeah. Still can't see the, the flags up over on the start boat, so we haven't hit the three minutes to start just as yet. Absolutely sensational day to be out in the maritime boat. Beats if it was blowing a gale and a southerly. Yeah, two flags up, three minutes to start. Three minutes to start. As I said, you'll see at 30 seconds, you'll see the boats pop their heads around the, uh, the little point there. In about two minutes, they'll run the ropes out. The green boxing kangaroo flag will come down, run their ropes out, 240 odd feet of rope. Grid one, pole one, st strike force, up and away they'll get. And um, they'll be away for the 50 minutes, plus one lap for the men's open and F2 men's of the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships, kindly brought to you by Mercury Marine and our Mercury dealers around the country, Brisbane Marine, Race Marine, Water Sports Marine, Bay City Marine and TR Marine. We are inside two minutes, Troy. Two minutes to start. I 
I don't know about you, Mitch, but I wouldn't mind sitting out on that uh, nice big white princess out on the finish line all day. Oh, yeah. Maybe I could, might be able to swindle a spot on there for the next couple of days and commu come, come and take from out there. Yep, I could go a beer too, that's for sure. Well, I know one of us has to do prize giving later, so the one, I guess that person won't be allowed to have one until then. <laughs> One minute to start, ladies and gentlemen. One minute to start. 30 seconds till the green boxing kangaroo flag will come down. And we will be away for the Open Men's F and F2 Men's 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. It has been a bit of a hold up to get here. But away we go in approximately 10 seconds till ropes will be running in here. You see the boats there for those of you overseas in the bay. All 20. Skiers are in the water. 24 of them. Skiers in the water now, running the ropes out. Up, up, and away we go. Okay, another good start from the Belgian boat. Five, four, Three, two, one. We are racing. Australian flag down. Great start there by Team 50. Team 50 out in front. A absolute great start. Carter Robinson. Then you've got down the inside strike force. Lockie Nicks again down the outside. Absolutely smoking along in Sapphire F1. Then you've got the big orange Bernico Axiom up the middle. And then the, the uh, boat 377 all the way from the United States. A little F2 boat, the 21 foot Nordic with the 300 horsepower. And we've got grid two now, we've got Superman on the inside with Daniel Graziano. Feels like this is about his 10th world championships to me. Then uh, Cold, young Coldy there in the big blue force boat representing Australia. Then Brock McMillan on the big big yellow boat on the outside. As we come up into top turn, Sapphire about two laps, uh, two rope lengths ahead, Strike Force in second, Team 50 in third. Axie on third and Snappy 377, bit far back in fifth. And now we've got the F2 boats in the water. Great start by the New Zealand boat there, right on the right on the start line. And grow up F2, they've absolutely nailed it again out of that start line. So they're up and up and away. Cameron Nix there, got a rope length out of the start line again. Then you've got the um, the New Zealanders on, on the inside. That's a great start for them as well, which they had in the last race. As we come out of top turn now, we've got Team 50 in first place. Sapphire not far out, slowly just behind. Axion sitting back in Team 50's wash once again. Grid, second grid of F2 away. Another good start on the inside there. They're up, up and away. That looks like the 373 boat from America getting a good start. The Team 50 coming down the front, the back straight away. Team 50 just a little bit in front of Sapphire. Another great start for Team 50. Brent Wisemantle with Carter Robertson out the back. That's a great start for them. Evan Wool Woolridge in the boat. The big Team 50, the big Nordic with the 1100 Mercruiser Mercru Mercru package. You got Lockie Nicks on the outside there. This just looks, looks like a carbon copy of the start of the last one. Troy, I've got these guys coming across the line at 100 mile an hour on the first lap. And we've got the big Axiom boat, the big orange Bernico, all, all the way from Belgium. And then Strike, representing the USA. Mason Goldfish, Goldsmith behind Strike. Second grid for uh, F1, we've got Superman out in front. Coldy's not far behind. A fair bit back is Strike F1. They've dropped back a fair bit there. So Superman F1 there, got uh, Daniel Graziano representing Australia. Coldy's a wild card for Australia. And we've got the, one of the Americans here, three, Snappy 177, racing Norman and doing the, doing the skiing. Brock McMillan coming through behind Strike F1. Coming down the front straight away. We've got, looks like we've got another ding-dong battle going on here as well between the F2 boats. You've got Grow Team up. Grow Up. 
Cameron Nix. In the outside pole, Lucifer, not far behind him, pole one. Bit far back in the same from the same grid, got Cause and Glamour, F2 Wild and The Prodigy. Lucifer representing New Zealand on the inside, ducking up the inside there again. That's a good move by the driver. Team grow up there, leaping out of the water from that start. Start sequence waves that are coming, starting to come across the course. There's Stevie Davis there representing America, doing the driving in the big red 373 boat in the middle. Sorry, that's boat 73. He normally boat, drives 373. Then all the way from England, we've got boat number 200. Rory Kirkland. Oh, no, 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 sorry. My bad. Nick Butler. Dylan Cuff and Brendan Tidswell having a good battle in the grid two, for grid two, pole two, grid two, F2. Ice Ice Baby coming through from Belgium. Bernie racing for New Zealand there. We got punching out the middle. Team uh, 50 already. And then all the way on the outside. So Brent Wiseman all using his smarts there, punching out the middle, using the F2 boats to push. Lockie Nix has the outside lane just coming across the line. He's in about pole six. We're six wide on this corner. You got Lockie Nix there, being Brent Wiseman being very, very smart there, pushing Lockie, using those outboards because he's got to go around, way around the outside. And that's uh, that's cost him a little bit of a little bit of time. Boat number 73. Coming through representing America there. Sorry, boat 373. Then you got strike. 31. Daniel Graziano leading the second grid boat, number 81 there. Superman, Darren Maguire doing the driving. Then you got uh, Coldy, wildcard with an, um, it looks like another F2 boat coming down the back straightaway there. That's F2 Wild. These guys from F2 Wild, uh, they bought this boat, F2 Wild, and stick it in American colors. They'll use it over here. Yep, yeah. Levi Frederick. So he's, if you can notice, he's skiing arms out in front, ladies and gentlemen, a, lot, a little bit different to how everyone else skis in the race. That, that is such hard work. Especially for an hour, I, I couldn't do that. No. No way. His arms would be 15 foot long by the time he's finished. Charging hard in the inside here, just coming across the line. We've got Grow Up F2 with Cameron Nix. Lucifer's dropped back a bit. Oh, I think that's from uh, Cameron's persistence. He's, he's a very strong skier. See, Lucifer, Lucifer's carrying on a bit of the boats up, down, copping all the waves from the corner, starting to churn up. Max Duckworth there representing New Zealand, Lucifer. Boat number 377 in Formula in Open Men's there, boat number 377. Brayson Norman. Norman, sorry, 177. All these 77s and 3s for the American boats are confusing me. That's definitely boat number 73, that one. That's Stevie Davis driving for Ty Cheshire. Dylan Cuff, second grid of F2 there leading behind the Pernico with um, Brennan Tidswell behind the Lab Sport GTR. They're having a great battle. When we get through the race, it looks like Carter Robbo has pulled out. He's having a good run. Sapphire's just pulled in his wash. That means Carter's uh, a good 100 metres in front. So great job there using the smarts, using the F2 boats, the slower boats, so they can get a, get around and uh, and pull away. Carter Robertson currently has a nine second lead on Lockie Nix. Boat number 97 there, Speed Lab coming through. Speed Lab towing Sam McKenzie from Australia, and you've got Axiom from Belgium, towing Tim Lysons, and then that is boat number, it's very hard for me that one, 1648 F2, Cameron Monaghan, Brent Williamson, Liam Ford, not very good with the mathematics. We've got um, Coldies. Coldy's coming through, a young Rory Kirkland also coming through there behind the big black Bernie, sorry, big black Atomic. 
Coldies has made a move on strike there. You just see he's just, just, uh, who's that, Brock? Yep. Coldies making a move on Brock McMillan. He was a bit behind just uh, before. It's Mason Goldsmith. Brock's behind here. Sorry. Two strike boats hurts. God. Sorry, Mitch. But uh, Mason Goldsmith, Coldy making a move on Mason Goldsmith. There's Brock coming past there now. Boat number 110. A lot more yellow, no purple. I'll do my best. Yeah, I know. It's hard, mate. Don't worry. Grow up, F2. Has, Robo, that's a big gap between. Past. That is a great gap. He's got that a, is a great gap. He's got a good 500 metres now. Grow up, F2. Cameron Nix. Absolutely impeccably set up. Way out in front. Bernico F2 boat. Max Duckworth coming in there at the moment there, second place behind Lucifer. On the screen, on the live screen here, what can we see? We can see Sapphire there coming along in the wash of Team 50. The 345 boat, Brendan, Brendan Tidswell. And then just on the inside, we've got um, Cuffy on the inside representing Australia. Cameron Nick's first place in F2, currently has a 20 second gap on second place. Got Team 50 punching through the middle again. Again, using the uh, the slower F2 boats. Stevie Davis in the big red boat 73. And Brett Wiseman, Team 50 punch coming around there. Then we've got 377 all the way from the United States again. And um, the big yellow and green boat out there, believe it or not, representing the United States. And we've got Lockie Nix coming around the outside. Carter Robbo's pulled a bit on, uh, on Lockie on that lap there. Okay, we'll just go down to Connell Insel, who's over at Drifters, with a quick interview for us. G'day, Connor. I'm at the best seat of the house here in Drifters. Um, we're watching the racing from the balcony over here. Beers are flowing. F1 and F2 men's just just upon, uh, 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 in front of the horizon here. Absolutely best seat in the house. Get yourself down here, grab a beer, and look who I've run into. Robbie Woods, the Bionic Kangaroo. How are you feeling today, man? Awesome. Awesome? That's good. Be better than today because look at what we're looking at. We're looking at the best in the world. They've all come from around the world. And you guys uh, got us on camera. Hello. Unreal. Well, Robbie is more than an achieved skier. One of the best. Can you just run us through some of your best accomplishments, please? Uh, look, I've raced all around the world. And my best times were in America. You know, it, they're nothing beats beating Americans, right? I've got really good friends over there, and um, you know what? They're all here, and we're all enjoying it. We're, we're like family, so that's what it counts. So winning Catalina is definitely one of, one up there. I, of course, you know I'm I'm the youngest person to win it, and the back then, you know, it was all all done by Americans, and I'm the first person to go under the hour, yeah. at um, and small boats. So it was good. Fantastic. Well, you've you've had your fair share of worlds racing. What what's what's your favourite part of it? What do you when you think worlds racing? What gets you know the fire in your belly? Oh, it's just like everybody here. We we all enjoy it. If you're an, if you're a ski racer, you're a family for life, right? And you look out there, and I know how hard they're doing it, right? So. You bring it together, and we stay together as a family. No matter what country you're in, this is ski racing. As you can see around here, it doesn't matter where you're from. If you're from America, you're from England, <laughs> Belgium, Australia, we're all having a beer here. We're all having a good time. We're all watching some great racing out there. As you can see, Carter Robson behind Team 50 just coming through. One of our top, top contenders there. Robson, big name, but look. It does not get any better than this. If you're not here, I don't know where you are. Get this down to Drifters. This is Crossford, man. This is the Central Coast, the best that Central Coast got to offer. This is Australia's finest, Australia's finest, and the world's finest out there. And we will see by the end of the week who is the best of the best. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's all from us, guys. We'll see you later.
Okay, we've got Axiom, Axiom from Belgium coming through. Lapping nicely. We've got, uh, I think, the second... Oh no, that's uh, the New Zealand boat there, boat number 124, Team Bernico boat, th boat number 97, Speed Lab. And then you've got the Gratz going Troy, through there behind Superman. Troy, our race leaders are creating a bigger and bigger gap. We've got Team 50 who has made a massive charge away from Lockie Nix and Sapphire. Grow up F2. I don't even know where second place is at the moment because he's, he's about to overtake the grid that was behind him. Yes, so he's absolutely flying. Then we've got the uh, 177 boat coming through there and also the 68 F2, 168 F2. Ice Ice Baby, the big green Bernico with the uh, white motor on the back. Then you've got 110 Brock McMillan coming through there. He's pulled some time out of uh, Mason Goldsmith there, Brock. He's gone past him. So there's uh, he's put the 30 seconds on him that he started behind and then also now gone past him. Then you've got the American boat, the, the Revolution, the big green and yellow machine. We're going to have the two strike boats next to each other soon, Troy. How are we going to do this one? No, uh, Brock's actually gone past, gone past him, Mitch. Brock's gone past Mason, so. And we've got um, the New Zealanders coming through there, second spot in, in Formula 2. We'll have to get a time and, and see on the second grid because it looks like they're catching. Looks like they are catching. You got young Cuffy there on the inside and then Brendan Tidswell on the outside. They've been going like this the whole race so far, ladies and gentlemen, for 15 minutes, having a great battle. We've just had a fall over the far side, that unlucky corner all weekend, just coming out of the, the start. G'day, Baz. Baz Robbo. And um, yeah, unfortunately, the New Zealand, young New Zealand has had a fall there. Carter Robertson still maintaining a 20 second gap between himself and uh, Lockie Nix. Tell you what, Troy, there is a close battle going between uh, second and third. Superman and um, what's it called? Lockie, Lockie Nix is, is about, you know, two, one or two seconds apart. OK, we've got the Strike F2 boat. Strike F1 coming around with Brock McMillan. Boat 200 representing Great Britain in the centre there. And we've got our current leader of Formula 2, Team Grow Up, in front there, Cameron Nix. So the Nix boys having a good run out there today. Boat number 377 rep representing the United States coming along on the outside. And then we've got the other Strike boat representing the United States as well. Ice Ice Baby on the outside there. On the inside, sorry. Ice Ice Baby, the big green Bernico. I believe they've come over here this weekend because it's uh, the driver's 65th birthday. So they've come over this week to celebrate his birthday and run, run at the World Championships, which is great to see. And it looks like Brandon Tidswell's making a move on Cuffy here on the outside. The big Lab Sport GDR and the uh, Bernico jumping out of the water there as they come past the finish line. It's very, very close. There's Carter 
Carter's Observer, Carter Robbo, leading the men's open men's, having an absolute crack. He's put a lot of distance on um, on Lockie Nix. Obviously, Lockie's uh, decided he's going to settle in for second for today. Although there is still over 25 minutes of 35 minutes of racing to go. Lockie Nix still maintaining a 20 second gap between himself and Carter. We've just had a fall from Axiom straight down just before the finish. Unfortunate. Yes, unfortunate, and he did uh, did look to uh, maybe impede. Good work to uh, to that boat that went on the inside of the course to to avoid any action or any any drama. Congratulate, well done to them. And um, the team Axiom just going back to their ski now. Let's hope everything's okay. Currently got a 15 to 16 second gap between Superman and Jack Coldy. Is it? Let's hope everything is a-okay down there with those two boats that are in the water at the moment. But let's just concentrate on what's happening on the water. Just coming past the start-finish boat now. Got Mason Goldsmith there behind the strike F1. Nick Butler from Great Britain on the outside. Team 50, looks like uh, Cuffy's kicked back on Brendan Tidswell there. They're having a ding-dong battle. For the second in third in the Formula 2 class. Stumpy's just dropped back just a little bit. He was up there before. That's a great race. It'll be great racing out there. Carter, if, if you're part of the teams. Carter Robo's moved out to 25 seconds ahead of Lockie Nix. Representing America, boat, boat 377 coming along there. Snappy 377. Jason Davison doing the skiing. We've got Superman on the outside, the big Gratz. Daniel Graziano from Australia. And on the inside, we've got the, uh, the big P7 Velocity. Coldy, boat number 65 coming through, Coldy G1. Also a 20 second gap between Superman and Coldy's F1. Boat number 97 coming through there. Darren Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie doing the skiing, representing Australia. Darren's done plenty of laps around this course today. He'll be dizzy by the time he uh, by the time he finishes. He's also managed to come through with a second place and a first. Not bad. Yeah, boat number 373. Mike Hedges, Jeff Barris, and Sean Davison from the USA coming along there, having a good run in the Nordic 20 footer with the Mercury 300R pro, pro racing package. We've got... Big downs from Brock Millen just here you see on the screen here. Cameron Nix. It's obviously quite rough. The boat's jumping out of the water over there. Cameron Nix coming through, leading the Formula One. What's Stevie Davis driving boat number 73. 
Darren Weatherford and Ty Cheshire doing the skiing. Boat number one, two, four. Anthony McAnally with Mitchell Horan doing the skiing and Gene Holland's doing the observing there. We've got a gaggle of boats coming down here. You've got Carter Robertson in the front there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six boats. Carter Robertson coming around, boat number, team number 50, boat 50, the big Nordic boat with the 1100 or 1075 Mercury package, Mercury Marine. Just going past Mason Goldsmith there. What's happening with the F2 there? I, I think that's that was Stumpy. Have we lost, a, have we lost, uh, maybe? I'll, I'll save that until the next lap. Boat number 200. Boat number 200 coming through representing Great Britain. Nick Butler doing the skiing behind the Great Britain, Britain boat. Got Lockie Nicks coming through there now. Daniel Graziano coming through as well in, uh, in third place, arguably in men's F1. Very close on the water, might be five or six seconds in it. Then we've got Ice Ice Baby, Guido DeVos, Crystal Species and Mike Machant all the way from Belgium, punching through on the inside. Causing glamour. 25 second gap between... Kyle Taylor causing, gla causing glamour there. We've got a 25 second gap now between Supernova, uh, sorry, uh, Superman and Coldy's F1. Samuel McKenzie behind boat 97 on the outside there. On, on the inside, we have the agent. Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Josh Reed, Jake Clancy. Wildcard for Australia. You've got boat 373 there. We're just 377, over. 377, sorry. We're just over halfway, just ticked over 25 minutes. Snappy 377, Jason Davison from the USA. Team grow up there, coming through, leading the uh, the Formula Two. Cameron Nix doing the skiing, and what a great job they're doing. Yeah, I know. Strike F one, boat number one ten, Brock McMillan having a good clean run. Axiom is up and going again, I believe. No, he's not. Oh no, he's not. I don't know what he's doing. if you can do that. Stevie Davis. Carter Robertson. Carter Robertson there on the outside, representing Australia, currently leading open men's. Doing a great job. Cameron Nix currently with a four, 10 second, 12 second lead over uh, Cuffey in Revenge. No, Brendan Tidswell. Brendan, uh, Brendan's in front. Cuffy's there. Yeah, and Brendan's in front of him. <laughs> There's strike force coming through. Mason Gold, Goldsmith all the way from the United States. Then we've got Coldy coming through. Oh, no, sorry. Lockie Nix. Boat number 177. Raymond Norman rep representing the United States, causing glamour. Wayne Taylor, Shane Henderson, Kyle Taylor, all the way from the United States as well. We can just see here, Troy, Axiom has retired from the race. Axiom has retired, and have a look at the ballast he's pumping out. Got boat number 200 representing Great Britain going through there. Nick Butler doing the skiing. Coldy coming through, boat 65. We've got four more coming down the f back straight away here. Causing glamour. Speed lap right out of the water there. As is Agent 86 on the inside. It's a light boat, that one. No, 
Nice Ice Baby coming through the middle. We've got here Grow Up F2 coming down on their own. They're way out in front. Great driving and observing and skidding. Bit, bit loose from Cameron there. That's how he likes it, but. Checks his watch, 20 minutes to go. Have a look at Strike F1 coming down here. Boat number 110, have a look at the water it's pushing. Observer with his arm out. Obviously very rough there that we, we can't really see from here, but very, very rough just on that turn. F2 Wild, Leonard Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs and Levi Frederick doing the skiing all the way from America, hands out in front. There we got Carter Robbo going past, leading the race, 30, 30 minutes down, 20 plus a lap to go. And we do have, yes, that's confirmed, Stumpy is in front of, uh, of Cuffy there. So the two F2 boats, second and third, having a great battle. Got Mitch. Brad with me here from New Zealand again, coming into the commentary position. Welcome again, mate. Yeah, cheers, Troy. Good to uh, be back up here. Um, so, yeah, it looks like uh, boat 124, Team New Zealand, Mitch Horan coming through there. On the outside, we've got the American with uh, Strike F1, Mason Goldsmith. Um, there's Lockie Nix, and he's got uh, Daniel Graziano riding on his tail. Obviously, uh, Grat start, started on that second grid. So he's caught up uh, the 30 seconds on Lockie while well, he's within probably 10 seconds of him. So uh, he's actually in, in effect in second place in this race. Um, also look like we've got uh, uh, Jack Coldrake coming through as well. He's also closing in uh, on Lockie Nick. So a uh, few changes at the front end of town and, uh, and men's open. Yeah, and you've got uh, Darren Kirkland and a young fellow out the back skiing there. As we mentioned before, family sport. Two, two people representing Great Britain in the big black atomic. It seems that uh, first position in both classes here, Brad has sort of sewn up right at this point in time. I don't want to put the mocker on anybody, but coming forward, the uh, the second and third in both F2 and uh, and open men's is very wide open. Yeah, still up for grabs, that's for sure. As we see uh, Liam Ford come around behind the 1648. Um, also got down here the, the prodigy, that's uh, Nick Butler from the UK, Great Britain. Great to see those guys out there. And on the inside, uh, looks like Cause and Glamour with Kyle Taylor from New Zealand, uh, driven by his dad Wayne and Shane Henderson in the boat. Um, those guys are still have been circulating the whole race and, and doing a great job for Team New Zealand. Unfortunately, it looks like we've lost uh, Max Duckworth uh, on the back straight there. They seem to have stopped a few laps ago. Uh, and it seemed that they didn't actually have a fall, so I think it might be a mechanical because the boat actually hasn't moved at all. So uh, really unfortunate for Max. He was running early on in this race, was running up the pointy end with uh, Cam Nix. So we see the Ice Ice Baby coming through for Team Belgium. Yeah, and then we've got another one. This is Carter coming through again. I think Carter Robbo, boat number 50, Team 50, the Nordic <coughs> with the Mercury 1075 package. Doing a great job, Brent Wiseman, 11 Woolridge, and then you've got Brock McMillan around the outside, boat number 110, strike F1. Dave McMillan doing the driving there. So to do a bit of a recap, uh, it's Carter Robertson for Team 50. Oh, this is a good battle here for second and third in that uh, F2 men's. Um, the two Australian boys, looks like they swapped lanes from the last lap, or maybe a lap or two ago. And so, they swapped uh, positions too. Yeah, so Dragon uh, on the inside now, and uh, Aiden Cuff behind the Revenge out on the outside, but they're within a rope length of each other, so that battle's definitely not done with uh, 33 minutes coming up on the clock. And coming down the, the back straightaway here, have a look at this, you've got the three boats here, Strike F1 on the middle, they are going past Strike F1, Mason Goldsmith, but you've got... Lockie Nix, and then on the outside, the big Daniel Graziano, the big Superman, making a move on Lockie Nix. He's taken off that 30 seconds, and now he's going to, going to go past him. 
great effort from probably the oldest skier in the field. Yeah, I had a chat to Gratz earlier in the week and uh, he mentioned that he just did the selections for a bit of fun. Him and Cotto were going to ski a race each and Cotto couldn't do it so uh, he jumped in and did the whole lot, got third in the uh, first selection races and then uh, decided to give the other ones a go and then decided, well, I guess we're in the Australian team so we'll give it a crack. He said he hasn't done a whole heap of training compared to other uh, world champs that he's been to but he's obviously um, you know, a talented skier and and uh, you know, got loads of experience, so uh, um, doesn't surprise me at all that he's um, you know holding on to second spot in this race this afternoon. No, that's right, and you can't put no no price for experience at this world level. Absolutely, we saw Maddie Boyer this morning uh, take down the women's open, and and uh, you know Maddie I think has been to six or seven worlds, so uh, definitely helps uh, knowing how these races are run been able to do just enough to, to win the race rather than you know extending and pushing any boundaries you've got to do it within uh, the capabilities of the skier especially for the whole duration uh, in tr tricky conditions we've seen a few people come off today and and it um, you know you got to last the distance and this is only race one of four Cam Nix there, our F2 leader on the inside, Alex Handling peddling that uh, Bernico for all it's worth. He's doing a great job uh, with uh, Jason Cartledge in the boat. Obviously Jason's two kids uh, took out the junior classes earlier today. Um, as we see our race leader in men's open, Carter Robertson coming through. 35 minutes ticks over, so 15 to go. The boys will be uh, cheering him on. He looks really comfortable, and uh, he seems to be extending his lead in this race. Looks like Cuffy having a bit of a crack. He's pulled, pulled out on, uh, on Brandon Tintwell there. Maybe he's just getting a better ride down that outside. We talked about the outside the inside earlier, Brad. And uh, sometimes when you've got the same power goes, the inside helps with the rough water out on that, uh, on the inside there. Sometimes it doesn't help. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be copping... Um, He'll be copping a fair bit uh, for, um, you know, in that inside line. So uh, definitely doesn't help with, uh, you know, when the legs start getting tired and you're, you're running around uh, in that lane one, um, you're copping a fair bit of rough water and it, uh, it gets pretty tiresome. As we see uh, Graziano come through now, Superman. So he's done the, done the move, quite a big move in that last lap. He was probably 10 sec seconds behind. Now he's 10 seconds in front. So... Massive effort from Daniel Graziano into second place outright on the water, but he's also obviously got that 30 second uh, buffer and he's on the hard charge to chase down uh, young Carter Robertson. He's on the hard charge, He'll, he will have a hard task to do so. Carter, very accomplished, very, very fit young man and determined. Then you've got Coldy coming through there in, uh, in third, second or third place. Um, yeah, I reckon Coldy's obviously now probably within uh, 30 seconds of Lockie now as well, so. Uh, so yeah, probably dropping uh, the Sapphire team back to back to fourth, and, and uh, Jack Coldrake up to third. So uh, some big moves late in this race, uh, with uh, about 12 minutes, 13 minutes still to run, plus one lap. So still a lot can happen. As so we see the one, two, four for Team New Zealand go through. That's Mitch Horan on the inside, uh, Stevie Davis there in the 73 on the outside with Ty Cheshire from the US, and then the Speed Lab. Coming through for uh, Team Australia, that's Sam McKenzie. Um, and another American boat, I think, that's coming through down here now. Yeah, that's the 373 boat. Normally Stevie Dra Davis drives that. But Mike Hedge is doing that today for Sean Davis and all the way from the USA. Great to see a young, uh, big, you know, large uh, contingent from the US and, and a young team with some skiers that have never done world champs before. And hopefully we can keep seeing them come back year after year to the world champs to... Uh, you know, really uh, build that level of skiing and experience at this level. But, um, on the inside there, team grow up, leading our F2 class, and now here we have Carter coming back again. Geez, he's going very, very solidly. It seems like every time I turn around, he comes back to do another lap. Yeah, we'll put a try and put a stopwatch on him in this uh, next lap here to see what the gap is. Back to uh, back to Daniel Graziano, as we mentioned, he is on the hard charge. So. We'll see, uh, see what that gap is at this point in the race. And then we've got um, Cuffy coming through there behind the Bernico. He has cleared out on Brendan, Brendan Tidswell. Obviously, uh, 
broke the back of him, so to speak, and uh, now pulling away. So second and third there on the water in the F2 class. Those positions now starting to decide themselves as well. So let's see what we've got happening out on the water with the uh, big Superman boat and obviously Coldies and also the big black sapphire machine. Yeah, so Carter's still got a fairly comfortable lead. Uh, obviously, even once you take off the, the 30 second uh, grid start, um, it will be interesting in race two, obviously if they finish this way they'll start side by side on the grid because uh, the results determine the grids for the next race, so Daniel Graziano comes around now. So he's about 30 seconds down unofficially, um, on, uh, like he's about a minute on the water but at 30 seconds down on the race. And then Jack Coldrake is, uh, sorry no, Lockie Nix is sitting right in behind. Um, behind uh, Daniel Graziano but uh, as he's Jack well, yeah and Jack's right behind him his wash. so uh, they're all single file on the outside seems the open boats are, are really running down these yellow boys on the outside of the course trying to find the best water to keep up the speed for these uh, skiers and also obviously stay out of that F2 traffic that are sort of hogging those uh, inside lanes and if I reckon by the time we get back around the next next lap Jerry Gully will pull out into that, that lane as well if, if I know Jerry yeah. Coming through there, we've got Ice Ice Baby on the inside, all the way from Belgium. And then we've got the Americans, the young fellow there skiing with his hands out in front all the way. Absolutely phenomenal feet. He's in a little bit different stance to what he was at uh, lap one. So uh, the back's obviously taking a bit of a hammering and trying to stretch it out. As we see uh, Darren Hitchcock come through with the uh, Speed Lab, Toe and Sam McKenzie. On the inside, we've got Tony Rowe in the uh, Agent 86. Uh, pulling uh, Jake Clancy out of Victoria, Australia, uh, one of our wildcard teams. And then uh, it's the Bernico of, oh, there was a big splash there on the back straight. I think we've still got all our skiers up, so it just must have been a boat jumping off a wave. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Mitchell Horan behind the 124 going through there. Uh, and then again, our race leader in that F2 class, Cam Nix for Team Australia. Here he comes again, that man, Carter Robertson. As I said before, he just seems to be coming every every couple of minutes. Okay, so we're rocking up 40 minutes, 30 seconds. So uh, the, the boys in the boat, you see, you can see Observer really encouraging and pumping the fist, uh, willing him on to uh, get the job done. 10 minutes to go, plus one lap. So it's definitely not done, but he's uh, def he's got one hand uh, on this round one as we see uh, one of the boats come back. It looks like a Bernico coming back to pick up a skier in this bottom corner. Yeah, it looks like boat 124, the New Zealand, New Zealand boat, unfortunately. Try and get a, uh, a number on that as we see uh, 10, 12, Dragon come through. F2. And you've got Brock Millen coming through on the outside and the uh, big yellow strike F1, boat number 110. Causing glamour on the inside there, having a good run as well. And then on the outside here, in the, uh, in the open men's class, but running the F2 boat there, boat number 377, all the way from the United States. Interesting to see that Graziano's switched to the middle of the course again now, Brad. Yeah, they're trying to find uh, any time they can late in the race, they're definitely um, looking to make up ground. So we see them come in. Yeah, they had to go a little bit in for that fallen boat that's in the middle of the, or the exit of the corner there. Uh, we've got the uh, Liam Ford, Australian wildcard skier, coming through. He'll be pretty happy to see uh, the blue flag in 10 minutes or so. Um, big effort from some of these skiers. It's, it shouldn't be underestimated uh, what an accomplishment it is to ski the, this men's open race at a World Champs. It's uh, not easy at all. And um, you have to be a huge level of fitness, stamina and, uh, and strength to actually get through it and get the job done. Yeah, and then we've got uh, Jerry coming through with Mason Goldsmith again, doing having a great great run out the back. They have moved that outside lane as we predicted. Might come in, might, depending on what's going to happen there. Yeah, he's gone all the way around the outside. Good job. And uh, Darren Speed Lab, about 97 again.
24, you said. So he could be. He started in the second flight. I can't believe. Stevie Davis coming through. Boat number 73, the red boat there on the outside. Carter on the extreme outside. Now that's the boat, one, two, four. Yeah, there's one, two, four. I think we've got drama here, ladies and gentlemen, in this uh, F2 race. I'm pretty sure that boat on the bottom corner uh, was the grow up F2, which was our race leader in the Formula 2 category. I'm waiting to confirm and see it on the screen, but uh, I haven't seen that boat come around. So we might have a new race leader, which uh, I'd say is that man there, Aidan Cuff. That's right. Uh, from Team Victoria. Oh, sorry, Team Australia, skip from Victoria. Uh, as we see, um, we'll wait and confirm that. Um, but I can't see. Just looking on the uh, Race Live app to see uh, what's going on on our coverage. There's the dragon there, so uh, we've got uh, those guys who were in second and third um, still circulating. So if that is the case, if that is the uh, grow up boat, they will be our first and second boats on the water in the Formula 2. As we see uh, Daniel Graziano come around again, still, uh, still lapping at a pretty steady and strong pace. Coming down past the finish line. Coley. Then on the inside there, we've got Causing Glamour. Coley's gone past, um, past, past Lockie Nix as well. Yeah, Levi's doing a great job out there for, for Team America just, just to get around. Skiing arms out in front for. 45 minutes well, we, now. We're going to know very soon, Troy, because this boat that's uh, broken is uh, idling around this end of the course out in front of us. So we'll be able to identify who exactly it is. I'm guessing that it is the Grow Up team. So uh, we've got Liam Ford coming through there. All right, here we go. Boat it's on the screen. It definitely is the 101, which is... Uh, team Grow Up. Team Grow Up. Lockie, uh, sorry, Cam Nix from Victorious. Victoria Australia so a real shame for him he was our race leader um, I'm guessing by the fact uh, it may have been a fall I'm not sure but uh, they've uh, come back to the beach so there's obviously some issue in that team and they're unable to finish this race so that'll definitely make things wide uh, wide open Lockie uh, sorry Cam dominated the Formula 2 selection races here in Australia so uh, with him out of this race it's going to um, throw the door wide open for some of these other boys so we see Carter Robertson once more come through behind the Team 50. Great job by Carter there, just rounding up the Kirkland family on the inside. Got Darren Kirkland doing the driving. Jason Rockley and Rory Kirkland for Great Britain doing the skiing. Stevie Davis, boat 73 there for America. Ty Cheshire. And then you've got our friends from Belgium there on the inside, and then boat number one, two, four, representing New Zealand. And we've got our race leader there in uh, F2, Cuffy, all the way from Victoria. Yeah, Aiden Cuff doing a great job. Dylan Cuff driving. And those guys are really, um, I'm sure they'll be well aware of the fact that they're now uh, the uh, leaders in this race as we come up to 47 minute mark. So uh, probably two more laps until we see that blue flag for. Uh, for Carter Robertson, um, it's all on timing across the line as far as getting the uh, the 50 minutes plus one lap done. So as soon as uh, the leader completes that lap after the 50 minute mark, uh, we'll see a blue flag from our uh, finish boat there out in the middle of the course. As uh, the McMillan family boat uh, strike comes through with Brock McMillan, he's uh, he's lapped in a pretty impressive pace all afternoon, pretty consistent. And then we've got Jack Coldrake behind Coldy's F1, we, sit, we think sitting in, uh, in that third position, um, maybe fourth, we're just sort of uh, seeing where they're at relative to uh, Lockie Nix. Coming just down past the finish straight, we've got Lockie Nix in boat number one, Sapphire. Doing a great job, thanks to Mercury Marine for the sponsorship of the so there's Lockie there, so uh, um, 
Jack has actually passed him on the water, so uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, Jack up into third, Lockie into fourth. Lockie doesn't sort of seem to be enjoying uh, the conditions as much as some of the other boys today. So we see, uh, it's that the strike force boat coming through, driven by Jerry Gully for Team USA, lending the boat to uh, those guys, Mike King observing, and uh, Mason Goldsmith out the back. Still, again, he'll be up in the top five or six, I would say, in that uh, in that open class. Obviously, we've had a couple of withdrawals with the uh, two Belgian boats uh, uh, out of the race at this point, as we see. 50 coming through. I'd say they'll, they'll get the blue flag yeah, in the four, next lap. 48 minutes, 50 seconds. So uh, they'll definitely get that blue flag, which they'll be willing to see. And uh, they'll set sail on one more lap. So two laps to go for our leader out here this afternoon. And I'm pretty sure we'll have the uh, probably the green and pink green and pink flag come out first, which will um, be displayed to uh, our F2 leader to get him onto his last lap. Um, depending on when he comes across the line, is that them coming down the straight now? Maybe might be just too early. Yeah. Looks like a Bernico coming down there, so that's probably Aiden Cuff. Yeah, that is Aiden. Yeah, Cuff. it is, and he's just yeah. missed it. By 30 seconds, he's just missed it. So, so he's uh, got two more laps as well. Correct. So the F2 team was all do two more laps. Daniel Graziano coming through our second place in that men's open. Ty Cheshire for USA, it's driven by Stevie Davis. There's the 124 from New Zealand. Mitch Horan, doing a great job. Ice Ice Baby, our friends from Belgium there. And, and our great Britain, Britain fans of Kirklands. And then you've got Stumpy on the inside behind the big GTR Lab Sport. So Brennan Tidswell there, the Dragon. I tell you, the, uh, it's Coldy again, so Jack Coldrake. He's still circulating pretty steady as well, so great job by uh, Jack. Coldy's got a number of boats uh, running this weekend, or this week, sorry, um, out there, and uh, he's got all numbers. He's got a few, ring in a few of his mates to drive them all because he can only be in one boat at a time. So we see uh, Levi from the USA come through. So he looks pretty tired, just quietly. I think he's ready for to see that uh, checkered flag. I want to know how he puts his arms in the ice bath. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he's got very soft hands. What I've told by uh, Stevie Davis. You'd think that'd be, uh, you know, rough as and uh, <laughs> big gorilla arms. But uh, so we see uh, Lockie Nix come through. Brian Griffin, Tim Pickford looking after him in the boat. Doing a great job there. And we've got 97, Speed Lab, coming down, Cam McKenzie. Agent 86 on the inside, making a bit of a charge. There's the blue flag lap for our lead boat. Ladies and gentlemen, one lap to go. Carter Robinson behind Team 50 on the outside. Great effort by Carter. One lap to go. Brent. Two and a half minutes. Brent Wisemantle. Great crew. Yeah, Evan Woolridge in the boat there with him. And... Uh, They've had a pretty good day, just quietly picked up men's open, uh, sorry, women's open this morning with Matty Boyer in the showdown boat, jumping a uh, completely different boat and uh, and uh, dominated this afternoon in men's open. So a uh, great job by uh, by Brent Wisemanel and the Team 50 team for Team Australia. As we see uh, Nick Butler come through once again. I think someone mentioned he's over over 50 years old, so he's been doing this sport for a long time. So uh, D Daniel Graziano coming through. So I reckon he's probably pulled in a little bit on uh, Carter in those last couple of laps, but uh, still a solid second place. And then Aiden Cuff coming through. I believe our uh, F2 race leader, uh, Aiden Cuff, for Team Australia behind the Revenge. It's going to be hard for us to pick who's come third in the Formula 2, Brad. After yeah. There's been a, bit, a few falls and a few... Uh, be one of these boats just has circulated nicely. It hasn't had a fall. Yeah, staying out of trouble is a big thing in these uh, in these races. If you can keep your skier up, circulate consistently and, and not have any issues, it definitely, uh, definitely makes uh, for a top result. Coldy coming through around the outside there. 
driven by Jason Wormsley and Kevin, Kevin Boylan, yep. the legend himself, multiple world title holder, observing for Jack there. One, two, four for Team New Zealand, Mitch Horan, been circulating all day. And Brennan Tidswell, second place on the water in Formula Two as well. And we've got the Farrell family, all the way from Lowell, Portland. He went by with 200. Cat Eye, same, they're next door to each other. The uh, strike. F1 coming through there, driven by David McMillan, his son Brock out the back. Got second with his uh, daughter this morning in the uh, Open Women's, and uh, Brock skied very well this afternoon in this Open Men's. So, uh, great job by the McMillan family. Um, see, Mum Bobette's put in a fair bit of work into these world champs to make them all happen. So uh, great that the family's uh, getting the results on the water as we see Lockie Nicks come through again. And here's our race winner, ladies and gentlemen, for Team Australia. Carter Robertson doing the job here in race one for uh, Team 50 and Team Australia. Thousand points in the bag for him. An outstanding effort jumping up from uh, juniors at the uh, last World Champs and coming straight into uh, Men's Open and taking down his first Race win and a world title race. Well done to Carter and the team. Amazing effort by Carter. Let, let's not forget to mention that his father won a world championship back many years ago, as did his uncle. A great family. Yeah, pretty good breeding stock there from the uh, from the uh, Robertson family. As we see Daniel Graziano come across the line, and that's not going to be much points difference between those two teams. So Daniel Graziano, a great job coming back from a long way. Long way down, uh, Darren Maguire in driving the big Superman. Daniel Graziano has done a sensational job there for uh, what we believe is second place. But uh, that will be uh, tighter than probably what most people expect. We're, we're thinking it's about six seconds. Yeah. Okay. Very, very close. That's no points in it in, uh, in the scheme of things in a men's... Uh, There's Cuffy there finishing. Sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, you're right. Cuffy finishing in first place in there. F2, so great effort by them. Yeah, they'll be pretty pumped with that. So uh, Aidan Cuff uh, and Dylan Cuff driving, his br two, two brothers there teaming up to uh, get the job done there. So we see uh, the Prodigy come through for Great Britain, Nick Butler. Okay, we've got uh, Coldy coming through what, for what we believe is third place. Ty Cheshire for Team USA finishing. Stumpy finishing in second place, what we believe in uh, yeah, second the, place Formula 2. The Dragon there getting the job done. And Levi there finishing great effort, 56 minutes with her arms out in front. Absolutely phenomenal, great job. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how these results in the Formula 2 have uh, pan out. Uh, as we see uh, Mitch Horan there come across the line for Team New Zealand. Great consistent ski from Mitch. So uh, he'll be happy with Anthony McAnally driving. Gene Holland's observing uh, the strike. So that's uh, Brock McMillan coming across the line. Team Australia. He'll be in the top uh, five or six, I'd say. He's uh, skied, skied very consistent all day. Ice Ice Baby coming across there, finishing their race. Maybe a couple of laps down, but they've had a good experience, good fun, and uh, and certainly finished their race. So good job, Agent Agent 86, and also Speed Lab. Speed Lab, yeah. Cam, could, Cam could be a smoky for third place in um, in F2 out there. And then Lockie Nix there behind the Sapphire, coming across the line. So uh, I think that's all. I oh, know we might have one more, a couple more coming down the straight. So. Uh, Big effort from these guys. They've skied for uh, 57 odd minutes now, ticked over. So uh, great job from all our competitors, and uh, we're happy to see them all uh, home safe and moving on to round two. That's right. On Monday. Yeah, here he is. The, he'd be a very proud dad walking past. Yeah, give us a thumbs up, Cuffy. Cuffy Senior, two boys, big win. So big Trav will be happy there. It'll be, it'll be his round at the bar tonight. Well, I think it's always his round at the bar. So. Uh, Great to see uh, Cuffy uh, doing the job, Aiden there, our Formula 2, obviously unofficial at this point, but our Formula 2 race winner. 
we got uh, legend of the sport Mike Avila walking past the com central commentary position there. Obviously, the Americans over here to support. I know a big supporter of the Knicks boys. G'day, Uncle Mike. As we see, uh, that's the Great Britain team there finishing the team Kirkland. So Darren Kirkland driving. Now coming through for the finish, we've got causing causing glamour. That's a uh, Cole Taylor from Team New Zealand getting it done. So he'll be pretty happy to knock off the hour uh, or the 58 minute mark. And then uh, looks like our final boat there on course is the 1648 so that's Liam Ford a wild card for Team Australia getting that job done so well, well done to all teams that have, that have finished commiserations to those ones that may have had little hiccups yeah they'll all be back to uh, revenge themselves in round two on Monday so we're racing four rounds this week Monday uh, will be round two Wednesday for round three and then back here next Saturday for the uh, fourth and final round which will decide uh, these world titles. So uh, Gosford is the place to be this week um, for uh, all your ski racing action. Yep, and also obviously the, uh, the live stream on skiracing.com. Absolutely. Thanks, Troy. It's been a pleasure to be up here and hopefully we can uh, come give you a hand later on in the week as well. And. Uh, yeah, well done to all the competitors. Impressive racing today and uh, impressive win from uh, both uh, Carter Robertson and uh, Aidan Cuff in this men's Open and men's F2 race. Benny Hackett walking through there. Yeah, congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to everyone, really, that's finished out there today. They've made a great effort. World Championships, people from the other side of the world. It's great to see, Brad. Yeah, absolutely, and, and all the organisers for putting this thing on. It's, um, I've organised world titles back in, uh, in New Zealand and uh, it's no mean feat to actually you know, get a day's racing under the belt. Obviously, I'm sure it'll get easier as the week goes on. We've had a few dramas uh, today and, and obviously in the lead up to the event with the weather and things that have gone on, but uh, great to have a day's racing done and dusted now and move on to, uh, to round two. That's right, for all, all those that are thirsty, all the competitors out, not competitors, but uh, <laughs> spectators, uh, obviously the bar is open to drifters and I'm sure we'll be getting into the uh, prize giving for round one of the 2023 IWWF World Championships very soon so that all the athletes can get home to bed and, uh, and ice up, do whatever they need to do. Yeah, I'd say rest and uh, recovery is going to be a big thing this week. It's uh, some hard racing, so uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, hopefully have all our teams over at drifters for... Um, for the presentations later on, once we obviously deal with all the, you know, the the judge and jury matters, and uh, be straight into uh, that prize giving as soon as uh, they can get that happening. So, um, yeah, well done to all the competitors, and uh, I'll sign off for today. Thanks, Brad, and good luck to Team New Zealand for the rest of the week. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Okay, you can see the boats coming back in now after a big, long, hard race. Obviously, the, the bigger boats there, they, they'd have some drinks in the boat. The reason the skiers and the drivers still have their helmets on, they have to leave them on until they get back back to the pit area here. Um, now, when, now they're here, they can, uh, they can take them off, but that's one of the rules that's a, a little different to uh, world racing as opposed to racing just here in Australia. 
Ball back nice and safe. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next is Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Ricky T. Off the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one. Bang. I'm vanilla baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for those here on site at Gosford, unfortunately, due to time restraints and the uh, the little mishaps that have happened today, unfortunately, the international challenge races will not be held today. I, that's all I know at this point in time. I don't know anything further in relation to when they will, when they will be run instead. But the international challenge races will be not on today. Our apologies, but sometimes things can't be helped. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one. Bang. I'm vanilla baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is.
the Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. There we have the winning F2 boat coming out of the water. Congratulations to Aidan and Dylan Cuff there. Great job winning F2. So there, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the first round of the 2023 IWWF World Championships at beautiful Brisbane Waters, Gosford, Central Coast, Australia. What a great day it's been. Great day of racing, great day weather-wise. Congratulations to all that have taken part. We've got the boats mingling around to come out now. Lots of, uh, lots of checking to go on with the boats now, lots of checking, lots of uh, refuelling, checking propellers, all that sort of stuff, and then obviously checking racing gear. But first, firstly, thank you to Mercury Marine and all the Mercury Marine dealers from Australia, Race Marine, Bay City Marine, Brisbane Marine, Water Sports Marine, and TR Marine. Thank you very much to those guys for uh, supporting water ski racing in Australia and uh, getting it so we could get this race on these races on the water. Also, thanks to our other sponsors and obviously Drifters Wharf, Wharf for their hospitality for all the spectators and also where our prize giving and um, our closing ceremony will also be held later in the week. So three more rounds going forward, ladies and gentlemen, that those, are, those of you in Australia, we will see you back here in Gosford on Monday from 9am, the racing will start, 9am, 11am and 1am, 1pm. And then also Wednesday, same time, 9, 11 and 1. And then Saturday, 9, 11 and 1 as well. Closing ceremony at 1 p.m. on Sunday. And for those of you overseas or that can't make it up here in Australia, obviously jump online to skiracing.com.au and watch our Blendline TV live broadcast.
boat number 177 out there, the beautiful 20 foot Nordic with the 300 um, Mercury. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll just throw down to the pits to Connor or, or Mitch and see who they've got for us to talk to. Hi, guys. Um here at the ramp with our winner of F1 Men's today, Carter Robertson. How are you feeling after such a dominant win today? Yeah, good. Um, it's pretty good. Tough water. You know, Superman come home strong at the end, so it's always nice to get the win. Look, tough water, you say, if that's what water, would you like it? I know you probably tell in that sort of situation. Are you a fan of sloppy water? Or? Yeah, a little bit of fun, to be honest. This wind sort of died off in the second half, but... You know, you can't always help that. So. Exactly, you can't have what we all want. But look, that was unreal. You just took off, l sort of left the, the rest of them in the dust. But what was your, what were you thinking out there? What was, was there a point where you're like, all right, we're here. How am I going to, how am I just going to seal the deal in? Uh, yeah, it's took about 40 minutes in. It looked at me watching, it was 10 to go. And I saw, saw Superman coming. They're always a good team. They're experienced. They finish strong. So I thought... You know, you just got to stay up and stay in front and get the job done. Yeah, exactly. That, it was awesome to see, um, and especially after some, some tough circumstances to, you know, to begin with. But, look, you come away with it strong, and, look, we're all pretty, pretty proud of you here from Australia. Thanks, but the, thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Enjoy. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Connor and <clears throat> Coop. Carter, good job to the boys from Team 50. Uh, asserting their dominance in both men's and women's, women's today. So congratulations to Team 50. To see coming in, in the ramp there, both 37, the, the big strike, strike force, the 20, 21 foot of, of Jerry Gully there for the Amer Team America. Well, ladies and gentlemen from Gosford, Central Coast, Australia, thanks very much for listening in today. Thanks for being here in Gosford. Uh, uh, I'd like to wish you a farewell. You can jump on skiracing.com.au and watch everything that's gone on the water today between now and Monday. Please don't forget, Monday we will have racing again, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 1 a.m. And then Wednesday, same time, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and 1 a.m. And then next Saturday, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 1 a.m. My name's Troy Kennedy. Thanks very much for joining us today. On behalf of Blendline TV, Ski Racing Australia, IWWF and definitely Mercury Marine, have a great day. Have a great day tomorrow and we'll see you all again Monday. Thanks very much. Bit of a wrap up from today um, is a pretty successful day for Australia. Um, I can't remember who exactly who won what, but I know that it was um, pretty much Australia Queen Sweep. Yeah, look, we also had a couple good um, USA US of A guys, a um, couple third places there. It's good to see them in the mix as well. Um, not a great day if you're a Belgian, but look, I hope they come back strong on Monday. Look, it's a big week left. We're not done yet. Racing is just ramping up. We've, everyone's got their eye in today, and it's going to be some cracking races throughout the throughout the week. Oh. I'm excited. I'm also excited. <laughs> we said uh, we've seen a, a fair few falls in the juniors race, a fair few falls in the men's races. Um, I think, yep. I think it's it's a it's a lot to learn for them all for them all today. The course is not easy, and um, it's probably not going to get any easier. No, not at all. Look, they're really just got to focus on staying on top of the water. 
and look, they're probably it's probably going to be who stays on top of the water is going to win their world titles today. So that's we will find out who's the best of the best, and I'm excited to see it with you, Mitchell. Three days to go, three thousand points up for grabs for everyone. Um, we'll see you on Monday. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. The next Look at me, where she gonna be? Call me Vicky T. On the leash. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Three, two, one. Bang. I'm vanilla baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer baby. She's 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.